All right. Um, new campaign. Normal. Because the, for some reason, this uh, prologue has no difficulty restrictions besides normal. So <laughs> we're taking that advantage. Uh. Speed it up and let's go. Hell is the paella. I grabbed it out of the fridge during the last break. And then I hadn't opened the Tupperware, so it's good. Alright, for this mission, what we have to do is the Zerg kind of attack in a death line, and we're supposed to avoid them, but we have to kill like 30 of them as part of one of the achievements. And then we have to kill a bunch of Warping and Terran, which will make sense later. And that's it. There's only two achievements per mission on this one, I believe. So, that's pretty simple. Both of them are not hard. Why is that so tight, that jar? Pour that in there. I think I may have just mixed coffee and tea. That's going to be gross. Okay, there's only a little bit of tea in there. So I think it's okay. It's not ideal. But uh, I'm working with what I got. It's better to be hydrated than unhydrated. What am I doing? Why do I have so much gas? I don't need this many DTs. I need minerals. I, uh... This is a bad build. <laughs> Just get the minerals first. Then I'll get the gas for the DTs. The swarm gathers for an attack. Warriors, okay. Stay clear of the Zerg's path. So the Zerg aren't that scary. Do we wanna... That's nah, too late. If you're really cheeky, what you can do with the Blink Stalker is grab this entire Zerg Swarm and kite it over here to go attack the Terran for you. It's quite funny. Uh, it's also not, like, super reliable. It's kind of buggy, and the Zerg can just end up camping where you're supposed to go and sitting there AFK, and then you have to fight them. And it's just, it's this whole adventure, and I don't want to go on it right now. I need a mission or two that just goes nice and clean and smooth and doesn't make me want to rip my hair out. Karen got wrecked, what a loser. Actually, she's doing pretty good. Nice. Let's go to Dark Shrine. So we need five gates, we're going Zealot DT. Because that is like the fastest clearing composition we can come up with. And we're just gonna blitz through this mission once we get everything set up. If I, we would probably be fully saturated right now if I had not just decided to go for two really early gas geysers. I was actually partially thinking about the next mission, which is the mission with the gas geysers. <laughs> and as a result, I kind of made a mistake. But fortunately, it is on normal. It is not a problem. If you're going to make a mistake, the Legacy of the Void prologue is the place to do it. All right, we need one more guy. The Zerg are gathering. They will surely attack soon. Shirley is going to attack us soon. Don't do it, Shirley. It's too dangerous. Eliminate the central reactor. Uh, we got the Dark Shrine on the way. Good. And we're just going to wait patiently for them to go. And now it is time to strike. Let's clear. So I'm going to make DTs, and then with my spare minerals, I'm going to make a couple of gateways. I don't think we need anything besides this attack upgrade so we can clear faster. It'll take a long time to get anything else. We can just micro for taking damage or whatever. What an incredible ability. So, let, let's be honest. How many of you guys forget that these missions exist? Because I sure do. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you these missions' names. <laughs> it's, uh... I don't know, they just, like, popped out of nowhere, and then no one cared. Get a pile on over there. This room, I don't think is that bad. They might have a tank, I'm not sure. But we got a lot of guys. You know, I'll get the armor upgrade. The armor upgrade is fast, and we have chrono boost. I don't like chrono boosting gateways because it desyncs all of them. 
I know that's a really dumb reason, but I much prefer chrono boosting tech and upgrades because it's just easier to manage everything. Uh, I'm fine with it. I'm not fine with it when it's uh, the Legacy of the Void channeled version, but it's not as bad. Man, this uh, not a good opening. Is there a raven over here? There might be. Yeah, there is. But I don't think we're going to lose a guy. Even if DTs have, like, no HP. So we have to be pretty quick in this next area. There is an achievement to warp in, or to kill five warping in Terran. We only have two warp in points to do that during. So if we can get a couple of them right now, that would be ideal. We're going to just charge past all these medics and right on over here. Did we get it? Not quite. I think that we got four out of five or something like that. Honestly, it wasn't bad, though. And then we get the pile on for ourselves so we can keep reinforcing. And we go, go, go. The DTs are just ridiculous. They <laughs> cut through everything so fast. Oh, hello. Not the one Wraith, two Viking timing attack. That's Terran's third strongest move. Where'd we get these stalker? Oh, the pylon bonus objective, of course. Take the tank down. Disable the generator so we can walk across. Way I can bring some stalkers to deal with this powerful wraith threat that apparently is harassing me. Good thing it doesn't have cloak. Okay, slap them, slap them, and slap them. Here we go. I love this mission is bug. They never bothered to fix it. Just the random Protoss guys not being inside of their jail cell is very funny to me. So the one thing that I'm scared of on this mission is the warp in achievement. Because the next warp ins are actually in a pretty inconvenient location. And it would be pretty easy to not get any of them. So I'm going to try to pay a lot of attention there. And hopefully it works. Because if we didn't get as many as I think I did, then I'm in trouble. So you guys keep moving over here. Grab this Kasharuha. Uh, we don't have these guys ready yet, so we're just going to be chill. So it's right over there, and we have to go up here, down, and over, which it's just... As I said, an awkward angle to actually stop them from warping in. So we're going to take these guys down first. We're sending the DTs in first because they do so much damage. There we go. Yep, it was one more guy that we needed. As you do. So now we are going to clear our way to the end of the mission, but we're not going to actually win the mission yet. I'm not ready for that. Instead, what we have to do is get one guy to just chill over here. Can you just blink stalkers over the wall? Yes, if I knew for a fact that I had one more guy to do, then just blinking stalkers over the wall would be fine. However, I was concerned. Like, I was pretty sure it was one, but I didn't want to leave it to chance. And stalker DPS is really bad. So, if I had left it to chance, rolled the bones, and gotten tails, things could have been really terrible. Alright. This guy's gonna hold position here. Now, all the rest of my forces are gonna go back, and we have to go kill 30 Zerg units, which isn't too bad. I, I do not need these. So ideally, we can catch them when they're doing their next assault, and we'll be able to get them. So the plan here is that we're going to take all of these... Oh, they're very fast. We're a little bit behind schedule. 
So what we're planning on doing is waiting for them to pass. This is kind of my backup strat is they'll pass, they'll attack into Mobius, and then they'll start rebuilding stuff. And we're just going to morph all these into Archons. And as they're rebuilding, they're just going to kind of get funneled into us and we'll take the kills. They have jumpy banes, which is the scary bit. Yep. Not much we can do about that. Hey, we're fine. And hopefully we got 30 kills. There's no Zerglings here, which is a bit sketch, because Zerglings are obviously the best unit to get 30 kills on. They're very easy. There we go. A couple of them are being built. Roaches and stuff, particularly the heart of the swarm roaches with, like, slow. Not quite as easy, but we got it. So the next mission is the the gas vents that are in the sky. The mission that we're really gas-deprived, except we have unlimited gas. We're gonna make Void Race. I better remember both of them. I didn't actually check. Yeah. So this is a 16 minute mission. Because we have to, there's going to be gas eruptions from the ground. And we have to get 3,500 gas from those eruptions for one of the things, which means that it is a very specifically time-gated mission. Stormzarn, who is a mod of mine and a guy that helps me route things sometimes, came up with a really funny little thing at the beginning of this mission. I can show there are these bonus objective events that give a little trickle of gas. And what he found is that if you just hit this and then run away, then what's going to happen is these two sentries are going to reset. And then you could just attack the rock and they won't notice. So we can get a nice little trickle of gas at the very early stage of the mission when we're supposed to have nothing. And it's not much, but it is like half of Best Bean Geyser. Oh, is the, is the bot dead again? Uh, let me... Oh yeah, that's a lot of errors. Let me restart the bot. Alright. Someone give it a go. Uh, someone that's a mod. <laughs> thank you, by the way. Uh, yeah, can we get uh, mo people to say thank you to the mods? Like, first of all, they create a civil environment, but more importantly, they're the ones that control the bot to make sure that it's always on the right mission. That is not something that I can do while I'm focusing on all this stuff, and overall they've done a phenomenal job. I'm really, really, really happy with everything that has happened. It's made my life so much easier, and whenever you're doing runs like this, it's just keeping things simple and making there be less distractions is like the most important part and they're so good at that i think we just kill this guy and then we should be able to blast the rock yeah get wrecked we're gonna get some of these so we're going zealot plus uh Whatever this is called, Void Ray. The overpowered unit. I don't even know what this version of the Void Ray does. There's been so many of them. It is 610. Yeah, so this is the version that has like a reasonable low damage, but its charge up damage is way worse. It's still incredibly powerful. Ridiculous unit. Always a fan. We'll be using Void Rays throughout the later stages of Legacy of the Void as well, because, duh. <laughs> if I didn't, I would be a stupid person. Go, go, gadget. Void Ray. Okay, let's take these guys down. We don't really care what happens to the Zealots. They're just going to die. Eventually, we're going to be building a whole lot of Void Rays. We're not even going to bother to expand. We're just pumping out Void Rays. The one thing that would be kind of weird on this mission is that we're going to be stuck on very low attack upgrades throughout the entire thing, and they are going to be... Uh, constantly getting more and more. So we, if we can clear as much as we can in the early stages, it matters less because there'll be less people to fight with good upgrades. Also, this is on normal difficulty as opposed to everything else being on brutal, so they're not going to scale as quickly. Or I don't even know if they scale as far. But I do know that they can get like 3-3. Three, three. 
on brutal difficulty and you're stuck on 1-1 one, one, and it's just awful. It feels so difficult to fight. As I said before, I really don't care about anything that is not named Void Ray, so if it dies, it dies. If it lives, then good for it. Very proud. So the other thing besides getting this 3,500 eruption gas is that we have to kill all the Nexi on the map. Really easy. There's just a couple of them. This is one, there's another one up here, and then one in their main base. Then we just knock on the door. I think the normal AI doesn't even get upgrades. I think that it does. It's just slow. Compared to everything else. I have no idea, though. I could just be wrong. I've thought dumber things in the past. I've, uh... I've said this one before, but for an embarrassing long time, like, the amount of time... Like, at one point... In Nova Covert Ops, which uses the Liberator, I thought this when I had the world record for it. That's how embarrassingly long I thought this. That the I thought that the Liberators could fire into each other's circles. Like, sometimes we just think really dumb things and we have no idea how stuff works. But, I don't know, it just, it makes sense to me. Yeah, it was weird English, I was phrasing things very poorly, but... For a really long time, I thought that Liberators could fire into each other's circles for like... To the point that I had world records in runs that used the Liberator, and I just had no idea how it worked. I just sieged it up, and it worked. Oh, utterly shagged. Thank you. I appreciate it for the, uh... Oh, man. I have just lost the ability to English. That's what happens at hour 13. Still two campaigns to go. All right, that's the big money, though. Look at that. Two Void Rays at once, laddies. And then we can just punch up here and take this Nexus out. Yeah, English is not important. It's the spirit that has to remain unbroken. Blast this down. This is Nexus number two of three. I don't know if this place ever sends attack waves or anything, but I like to believe that it does, and we just saved many people from strife. Mostly me. I don't know if it gets rebuilt. Oh. Hmm. I don't like that. Let's see, get those in a nice little position over there. This is actually not a very good place for the Zealots, but whatever, it's fine. As long as the Void Rays get charged up. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna say strategically that was an F, but the fact that I didn't die makes it up to a D. This, this. And go over here. So, I, uh, I'm going to take, like, a couple days off after I do this, obviously, to recover my soul. And I should probably play a game while I do that. I don't actually play nearly enough games anymore. Does anyone have any suggestions on a good game that I should play? Preferably not an RTS, because that's my job. <laughs> like, I love RTS, I do. It's a good job to have, but... Sometimes you gotta force yourself into different genres. I kinda play, like, most genres to some extent. But I'm interested in, like, some new and interesting experience. That'd be cool. Not something that I've played before, which doesn't really help you guys, because you don't know what I've played before. <laughs> Fallout 3, Titanfall 2. I played Titanfall 2. Or maybe I played Titanfall. I played one of them. I think it was 2. But it was good. Inscription, Elden Ring, Diablo 4 is good. Is Diablo 4 actually good? I don't really trust games made by this Blizzard Entertainment anymore. They're kind of weird. Yakuza. Oh, I think I bought a Yakuza game at one point. 
Let me... Let me check. Steam? Listen, this mission has nothing to do, and as I said, we are time-gated. So... Let's open up Steam and see... If I bought a Yakuza game. Ninety-nine percent sure that I did. Oh, I got to sign in. Never mind. We're not doing this. I think I got uh, Yakuza Zero. Is that a game? I think that's a game. And if it is, then I bought it. Is it good? Should I play it? <laughs> I should probably know that before I buy a game. Uh, Zero is great. Uh, someone recommended Persona. I've heard the Persona games are really good, and I should play them at one point. But I don't... Are they available on the not PlayStation? Because I know they were available on the PlayStation for a really long time. And I don't really own a console. Particularly a PlayStation. Okay, I can play it on something else. That's cool. Yeah, this, is, this has been productive. I'll give something a try. Head up here. Man. Everybody else in the RTS scene is playing some game right now, and it, uh... I don't get to. It's very sad. Not because I'm not it, but because I'm pre preparing for this, and it's very sad. I can't talk more. But, like, all my... <laughs> All my friends are busy doing other stuff, and I'm like, no, oh, I got practice for the 24 hour stream, so I've been feeling lonely, gamey wise. I'll play some cool stuff. Monster Hunter World. I, play, I think I bought a Monster Hunter game, and the combat just didn't do it for me. I couldn't really figure out what I was doing, but it wasn't like getting me all hot and bothered like I thought it would. By the way, um, if anyone's wondering what we're doing, we're making Void Race and A moving through things because there's nothing else to do. We gotta take out this final Nexus and then these little guys are gonna do their poof poofs. Oh, or we're just gonna send these guys into the meat grinder. That's not really a healthy thing to do. Okay. We're gonna take all these guys down. This one, that one, zappy, zappy, zoo. There should be a nexus right here, and that should be an achievement. There we go. Average mission. Not my favorite. We're still not done, though, because we just have to wait. Whoa! Uh, Vikram S., thank you for the, the thingy things. Void race seems strong. I yeah, they're pretty good. Oh, we don't have a guy over here yet. Uh, you, money, 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 and then you. This should give me the achievement. Hopefully, there we go. Gassed up. Blow up. One more prologue mission, and then we're on to Legacy of the Void proper. What currency was that? I don't actually know. <laughs> oh, rupees. But like 15 different people use rupees. Indian rupees. Nice. Do this. So for this mission, we need to stab a bunch of people with Zeratul's little spinny stab. And then we have to not lose any stalkers during the first section here. Which is pretty simple to do. We're just going to blink. Hopefully I can blink better than I was microing Ultralisks, which the fact that that was a concern is still really scary to me. I don't know why Ultralisks just became this really difficult problem. But you know, Stalkers are so much more bulky and powerful. There you go. I should get my, like, spin-to-win stabby sword soon, and I think it's 15 guys we gotta kill with it. Immortal, a single shadow strike should 
Yeah, yeah, Shadow Strike. There we go. And then we just spam the shield ability on everybody to make them really healthy. So for this area, we're going to send Zeratul on his own to get the bonus objective. The Taldarine have constructed anti-air cannons on the temple ramparts. Destroy because he's way more powerful than everything else. This version of Zeratul is actually a monster. If you've never played Prologue Zeratul, this is his peak form. I don't know why he is so good here, but he is... Like, he one-shots everything. He has an AoE shield for 100 for everybody on a 10-second cooldown. And he has Blink. It's ridiculous. Like, he could probably 1v1 Amon right now. Which I guess wouldn't be that hard. Though Amon does kind of rock. Take that down. I hope we're getting our Shadow Strike kills well. I don't want to sit around farming it. If I can avoid it. So we're just going to poke over here. Perfect. And then... Uh, yeah. Alright, I'm going to spend this time to uh, self-shill, I guess. That is what we can do here. Did you know that if you become a channel member on Giant Grant Games YouTube, then you get nothing? It's really good value. Usually you have to pay to get nothing. Wait, this is still paying. Usually you don't have to pay to get nothing, but this time you can pay to get nothing. What a unique experience. If you, uh, if you become a patron, then in theory, I can give you a part in the credits in your video, in my videos, but sometimes I'm really, really tired and I forget to put the credits in the video so you don't show up. How about that for an offer? <laughs> Seems pretty good, huh? <laughs> Subscribe now at patreon.com slash giant grant games. Oh. And there are Patreon perks. However, there's also a $1 million tier on Patreon. And the only perk that it gives is that you lose all the perks. It's great. Have you ever considered... <laughs> Have you ever considered that? It's good value. Someday. Someday. My goal, my retirement plan actually, is that a crypto billionaire misclicks on my Patreon and he's so fabulously wealthy that he doesn't bother to fix it. That's uh... <laughs> Who needs, like, Vanguard or Schwab to ma handle their investments when you can have a future-proof plan like that? Uh, so we haven't lost any Stalkers yet. Obviously, the achievement being don't lose any Stalkers means that that's fairly important. Moderately. I do have to be very, very, very uh, careful here. Alright, so I'm just going to admit that I'm actually kind of an idiot. Let's, uh... If you look at the membership page, like, every single tier is some variation of the word big. Like, there's big, there's large, there's colossal, there's giant. And I want to say thank you to the people that I just saw become channel members. I have no idea what channel rank you did, because they're all the same to me, and I don't remember setting them up. But I'm sure... Someone was just very generous, and someone was even more generous. No idea who you are or how generous you were, but I really appreciate you. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay. Thank you, Talus. It's a shame that you're a racist and you're gonna die. Because you're really good at sending me reinforcements. I appreciate that part of your personality. But we'll see you in co-op with Phoenix. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a Shadow Strike kill right here. <laughs> okay, so we're getting to the point where I have to get these Shadow Strike kills for the achievement, and I'm getting kind of nervous about the fact that I don't have it yet. Uh, I don't know. 
seeing. I think that we're at the point where we just have to sit here hitting things with Shadow Strike until I get the achievements. I'm not gonna risk it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry that took so long. Why is it always... Why is it always the final one? It was that way for the Apocalypse achievement, just constantly like one or two away. Oh, that has been the day, huh? This is my favorite part, because look at how slow these projectiles move for no reason. I don't know why this one building is so weird, but it is absolutely bizarre. And projectiles just, I don't know, don't follow temporal regulations. Alright, let's do this. We have to escape because uh, the world is exploding and all of my friends are dead except for these three guys. Four guys. Really makes you wonder why Talos didn't help before this. Oh, I think she said there's actually like an in-lore reason for it. She's like helping defend the outside of the temple so that we don't get Taldoreamed. Which, honestly, fairly reasonable. I'm not going to fault her for that. Just fault her for being racist. We're going to blink across here. I don't think that there's an achievement here. I really hope there's not, because if there is, I don't remember what it is. It better not be keeping these stalkers alive, because that's not going to happen. I mean, I guess I can try. I'm just kind of on autopilot at this point. Oh, oh. On autopilot at this point. No, because there's only two achievements on this, right? Yeah, there's only two. For all of these prologue missions. Not three. I keep trying to think of what the third achievement could possibly be, but it just doesn't exist. Why was she racist? Uh, she was mean about Terrans, and then she was mean about Zerg. I don't know, she just, like, thinks everyone that's not Protoss is really stupid. Also, she thinks all the... Actually, she thinks all the Taldorim are stupid, too. Yeah, she just hates everybody that's not her team group. She's very rude. Okay. Evil Awoken, done. Let me... So that is... Yeah, we got 100% of the achievements right here. Legacy of the Void main story is going to start. We're going to watch the cinematic, and I am going to go get some more tea. So, new campaign. Brutal. I'll see you guys in 3 minutes and 20 seconds. The swarm brought ruin to our world. Our proud people became refugees. And yet, they could not shatter our unity. For we are bound by the Kala, the sacred union of our every thought and emotion.
with it. Our legacy. Legacy of the Void. Remember why I said Heart of the Swarm is really easy? And that I struggled at the end? Legacy of the Void is really easy. Or really hard. So I'm looking forward to struggling at the end. And the beginning. And the middle. So. Um. The first mission is really hard. And we gotta get stuff going really quickly. So grab everybody. And we have to start blasting. So we have... How much time is it? 10 minutes? I'm pretty sure it's 10 minutes in order to beat this mission. Or 11. I don't remember. We also have to get 100 kills with Colossus, and we have to not lose 100 units. And these do not really work well with each other, but we're going to try our best, and it's going to be done with a bunch of multi-pronged harassment. Okay. So, the easiest way to control these units, in my opinion, is to get the Immortals on their own hotkey and kind of A-move most of the stuff while the Immortals target down the priority units like the Ultralisks. Very powerful way to do it at the beginning. What we're going to have to do is have a very clean balance between units lost and speed. So, because we are unable to lose more than 100 units, otherwise we lose the achievement, and we have a time cap. Both of these are... They're in contention with each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to split off these zealots who are going to start working on this objective while we use this, like... I always like to think of the Protoss composition like this as kind of a pole arm. Because you can always hit the opponent, you just back up, you never let them in range, you just constantly are hitting them from farther away than they can hit you. And you can make some pretty quick progress as a result because you're just shaving away your opponent as you go. Zelts don't really work with that composition anyway, so it's pretty nice that they have something they can do. We're gonna start working on this. Can you tell that I'm a Protoss player at heart? Like, as soon as we start with the Protoss stuff, it's like, this is how this composition works and why I'm planning on using. And the Zerka, I'm like, I like Ultralisks. <laughs> I, hit, I hit them with my, with my Ultralisks and they die. All right. <laughs> Warp down reinforcements. As you so we're going to do uh, something that is cruel and probably deserving of being court-martialed, which is we are going to take this heroic stalker and we are going to blink him right into these banlings. I don't want to deal with them. We're probably going to do it again because I'm a bad person. One man sniped. Let's see if we can get... There we go. Three banes for a stalker is a really good rate. Move this way. Take this out. Take all that down. Now the Zelts are going to move over and do that bonus objective while these guys come on over and take this out. Now these Zelts are going to go help with this. One of the things we have to do is we have to kill every enemy on the map, right? And that is a little bit spooky because there are some queens, and if you knock the queens into the air, you, like, cause them to run away, then they will never come back, and you just can't get the achievement. It's very silly, so we gotta be careful. Also, we have a bit of a... Way to tell, uh, 42 units basically. By the end of this mission, if we have 42 things alive, then we did not lose too many forces. So we're kind of going to try to modulate around that because I would like to lose a lot of forces if that means that I can go faster. Okay, I'm very afraid of this queen. She's one of the ones that can just run off the map. But we got her. Now we're going to rejoin all of our forces together, and we're going to start A-moving across things. I'm at 75 forces right now. Let's get up here. 
Why do I need to kill every unit? Is that not one of the objectives? Maybe I'm going insane. It's not a listed achievement. Oh, I wonder. Is it a 10th anniversary achievement? What am I talking about? It must be the 10th anniversary achievement. Well, I don't care about the queens then. Alright, pull these back. Go, 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 go. It could be a mastery. No, the masteries are designated with the M. There we go. So we can lose about 50 more units here because we're going to get a group of guys on this side. I think nine minutes is the timer. Let's look. Ten minutes. Oh, ten minutes is a long time. We're making such fast speed. We have three whole minutes to win this. Man, I was like scared for time. Don't be a coward. Crushed it. So, 72 units, 84 units. That means that we can lose 42 guys during this fight, which I'm hoping doesn't happen. But if it happens, then that is exactly what we can lose. So it's okay. Take down the Nidus Worms first. The hybrid. I want to fight the hybrid without the Zerg. Fungal growth. Right down to 60. I'm going to pull these zealots back for a moment so that we can retain our forces. Ooh. I'm not liking my force size right now. Take down these hybrid without losing too much. Okay. Hopefully that is it. What was what was that last achievement at the end? Was that the mastery? Mr. Royals are gonna listen to him. Okay, I'll take it. Oh, no, 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 no. We did great. We did good. Don't restart, Grant. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna get it going. So this mission is one that at the very beginning we're gonna have to have a lot of tempo for. And then we're gonna be able to chillax. So, the way that it works is the mastery achievement here is that we have to destroy the first Zerg hatchery within six minutes of getting our base. So we're just gonna be very cautious here, slow and steady, don't lose these stalkers. And then as soon as we get our base, we have to blitz, go crazy, crazy turbo speed and start clearing as much as we can. Just waited for blink there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna blink on over here, grab our base. Now, this is about the one minute mark, so that means I have until seven minutes. Ooh, bot not working? I will. Try to get him to respawn. What is Spear of a Dune Shadow? What? <laughs> um... Something is going wrong because that is not the name of a mission. <laughs> Spear of a Dune Shadow. I mean, it is very large. Oh, that's a that's a new one. But I don't have time to like focus on that right now because what we have to do is we have to take all of these guys down, kill this hatchery. I'm gonna try to just lose nothing. I mean, obviously. But like, it's more important than normal. You're always trying to lose nothing. That's not true. Sometimes you're tactically sacrificing in order for speed. There we go. Blink. Oh, 
pull back. Okay. Everyone is pretty injured at this point, which I'm not a big fan of. We can make this clearing a little bit tougher than normal. Legacy of the Void AI is pretty good at sniping low HP targets, which makes life in these circumstances way worse. Because we have to be very careful with these stalkers. But I'm also pretty confident with stalkers, so we'll be okay. Keep it going. Did we hit him? Oh. Underground. Oh, that is not a depot. What am I doing? So what's going to happen here is that we are actually at the enemy base now. This spine is a little bit annoying because it's well positioned. How dare they? Very offensive. Just try to get the guys with shields being the ones actually taking the hits. And see if we can dodge some of those shots if we can. There's going to be a Zerg attack at some point, and I have to be very cognizant of that as well. Not really happy with that. This is a really bad position. This guy back. Pull this guy back, and we have about a minute and a half to kill that hatchery at this point. I've been super supply blocked, and I have no gas, and I just was trying to build stalkers the entire time. I've been very focused on my micro and completely let the macro slide. That was horrible. But we can still do it. We can still do it. Because we basically dealt with everything. And then once we deal with this, it's fine, because the other, uh, the other achievement is find all the mineral and gas pickups. <laughs> It's like, oh, what, what an incredibly difficult achievement compared to destroying this hatchery in an incredibly fast amount of time. <sighs> Basically the same difficulty. So what I was doing there was trying to blink at the same time that the projectile from the dude was in the air so that we would just dodge it. I didn't do it perfectly, but I did dodge a couple of shots. And now we're just going to build a lot of zelts, we're going to build a lot of stalkers, and we're going to finish this mission. The ending is actually kind of spooky. There's quite a number of guys that I... You can kind of take a lot of damage from them. It doesn't matter how well the fight goes, but we obviously don't want to lose it and have to rebuild a big old army because it takes forever. That was kind of the TLDR with Protoss, is like, if you lose your army, it just takes so long to get it back again that... It just, it's so bad compared to Terran or compared to Zerg, where they can actually rebuild. So this mission is not that bad from now on. The next mission is another one of those super big difficulty spikes that I am not looking forward to. Oh, this is bad. I ran right into them at the same time as a Zerg attack wave. Let's see if we can blink. Uh, decent, decent. <laughs> we made something happen there. Please kill this guy. There we go. There should be a little bit more money on the floor over here. Very, very careful. This ultra needs to be played around. I have no idea what that achievement is. Oh, it's like warp in 20 units or something. It's the other... Yeah, all the basic achievements are really, really simple here. The only one that was actually difficult is the really time-sensitive one. Shields, my visitor. Over here. 
No, no, no. I don't like you. Go away. Go away. Get nerfed. Does anyone else think it's really weird that these void pylons spawn on this mission and for some reason you can- I guess you don't have warp gates yet so you can't use them, but like, I don't know, it, it, it's so odd that there's like these third party pylons that give you stuff that warps in but then you can't use it to warp your own stuff in. I don't know, Legacy of the Void is weird sometimes. Like, were they scared of giving you warp in here? I guess because they didn't have the tutorial on warp in, right? Like, the next mission gives you that tutorial where Carax is like, Hyderarch, you need to warp in with your warp in strategy. And then you're like, okay, I understand this. Thank you, Carax. I've been watching people do this for three campaigns. I even saw Terran do it in the prologue. I get it. Pull these back. Try to snipe the immortals. I'm possibly going to lose this fight. That immortal did a lot of damage. Uh, if we can take the carrier down, we'll be fine at least. Pull back for a sec. It's just scouts and zealots left, so we'll we'll win the fight eventually. They're not that menacing. Wow, okay, scouts are a lot worse than I even thought they were. Oh, they have 160 HP in this game. Does anyone know off the top of their head what a scout has in StarCraft 1? Because in StarCraft 1, they're actually quite bulky, but 160 HP is nothing. Hmm. I feel like it's 200 and something in StarCraft 2. It's, uh, 150, 100. Yeah, so... It's 160 versus 250. Massive reduction in the scout's power. Because it really needed a nerf, right? Don't have time for this one, sorry. Great cutscene. A lot of fun. Uh, very sad. Oh my gosh, that is so spicy. What is that? Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay, I got something real spicy there on the back of my throat. This is a... This is one of those missions I need to take super, super seriously. Supposedly, spice is good for awareness. Well, right now, I am very, very aware <laughs> that my mouth hurts. Or rather, the back of my throat hurts. So, yeah. I think you're right. So, what we have to do on this mission, there are two uber bases, and you are just not supposed to bust them. Like, straight up, it's just not what you're supposed to do. And we have to bust them. The aim is going to yell at us a lot. And you're really, really not supposed to do that on brutal difficulty. You're supposed to do it on hard, and it's really hard on hard. But we have to do it on brutal. So, that'll be, that'll be fun. Just be... Nice little activity for all of us. And then the other one is that we got to speed run the mission. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a setup where we can save, kill all the bases, reload, and then do the speed run thing. Because I'm, I don't want to say it's actually impossible to do the speed run. I'm, maybe someone will figure it out. It'd be really cool to see if someone could do it. But I do kind of legitimately believe that it is not possible to both get the achievement for killing all the bases and get the achievement for winning the mission in under 15 minutes. I just don't think that the Protoss have all the tools required to do it at this point in the campaign. Like, there's too much HP that needs to be killed, and our damage output is too low. But if someone manages it, uh, send me a DM on Discord with the video, and I will... I don't know. I'll just surrender my account to you because that's amazing. It would be so hard. And of course it has to be on Brutal. Because uh, that's what we're doing here, not on hard. People said Jay did it? 
I I don't think that's true. Like, no offense to Jay. But I don't think he is, uh... On Brutal? Yeah, that doesn't seem... That doesn't seem right. <laughs> he is not a bad player, but this is like... 400 APM Giga Gamer stuff. Ooh, losing that Zealot's not ideal. So you just have to take these down. Now, oh my gosh, I have a lot of notes. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of notes. And my eyes are like starting to tear up. Not really in the whole reading mood anymore. I know that we have to clear stuff. I know that we have to hold deploy pile on. So I have to talk about achievements in this one because this is where it gets really complicated. The Kerrigan ability achievements, like we had one that was kind of annoying, right? There are so many annoying Spear of Adun achievements that take forever to do. And they're going to constantly be interrupting everything that we're doing and making life annoying. Just absolutely, completely terrible. Like, we have to do 25 deploy pylons throughout the campaign, and that doesn't sound that bad. Until you realize that it takes like two or two and a half minutes to get all the energy you need to deploy a pylon. So if you want to do 25 of them, that's like over an hour of banking energy just for deploy pylon. And then we have to do the same thing for warp in reinforcements, which is basically fancy deploy pylon. It is... It's so frustrating because we're uh, a lot of this run is like, oh, hey, we have to do this really hard mastery, this really hard mastery, th uh, this annoying achievement and beat a hard mission all at the same time while we're using a meme ability. So, yeah, uh, looking forward to it. It's going to go well. We have we're doing well on time. That is what I will say. Probably not by the end of this. I would like to have this campaign done, I guess not including the epilogue, it would be nice to have this campaign done around 20, uh, 21 hours, or not including the epilogue 20 hours, including the epilogue 21 hours, which means we're, we're going to have to go fast because there's a lot of missions. Do you have to get all the achievements on a single attempt, or you can going back on hard? I mean, you can. if I have time, I can go back on hard, but there's not enough time to play missions double almost ever. Alright, so what we're going to do right now is we're just going to blink micro our little hearts out, try to lose effectively nothing. Don't take this down. I, oh. Do we go? Oh gosh, I can't even read this anymore. My eyes are like crossed. Okay. I go. Yeah, I go because I need to get the bonus. And then what I need to do is clear the middle. So the final bonus is going to give me the achievement for warping in five units at a time. Because I'll have five warp gates. It's a really easy one. And we need the bonus as part of the complete all objectives thing. We have like a minute and some change to get over there, so don't lose anything as we get over to it. That's the most important part. Because this is one of those missions where if you start losing stuff early, you will never stop losing stuff. But if you have a lot of stuff early, then you're probably okay. It's all stalkers, though. <laughs> stuff is just the fancy word for stalker. Okay, and now we have about 45 seconds to get into the middle of the map and have that controlled because there's going to be an attack wave fairly soon that we need to we need to take out. I've kind of stopped using my notes, so I'm just working from memory now. Because my notes are too small. Yes, so we have a couple seconds. This is good. We're just going to chill right here for this Zergling wave. We got the Warp Tour up. Uh, achievement. Good. I'm just try not to die to this Baneling. Now, I'm going to give this area a save. This is a really nice position to be in. And then we're going to hit over here. Start pulling some guys out. 
and hopefully don't lose anything in this fight. Ooh, that immortal hit hard. So that alert for the Zerglings is the Zerglings and Banelings that we killed. It's the fake alert at this point. Oh, goodness. Uh, I'm blinking. <laughs> Trying. Yeah, I think we didn't lose very much right there. So, oh, not reforged. So oh, Blizzard, not again. Oh, lost a bit here. But I have this area secure now. Okay. So now what we have to do is just chill for a bit. We're going to wait for the enemy to send a really big attack wave in a couple of minutes. I don't know. Actually, this is probably a good save time. Uh, save. Real save. Yeah, I like that. And just keep getting these guys. We're going to warp in pylons as much as we can. I also need to grab a couple of cannons over here, because we are going to be hit by air units during all of this. But there is a, just a super scary base right up this ramp, and we have to kill it. And we have to kill it pretty quick. And we need to not destroy this constriction. <laughs> Got a lot of stuff to do. Like, see the void real save. We haven't actually had to do that many, like, super serious saves. This is not the attack wave I was talking about. This is also not the attack. Where is he going? Come on, bud. I think that I'm doing great here. I think that my blink micro was more than enough, and as long as I don't lose a lot to the big attack, that I promise is going to... This is also not the big attack. I promise this attack exists. What if I'm going crazy again? Oh no. I'm just waiting here for nothing. <gasps> big attack! Yeah! Love to see ya. How you doing, gamers? Oh, we lost a little bit. Not too bad. Now, don't activate that, because we will be attacked by a bunch of warp prisms that'll constantly... I don't know what I just killed right there. So we're being super aggressive right now. Oh, they're killing my pylon. No. I built the cannons for those guys, but they got stuck on that guy instead. It's okay. Because we took this base down really quick, and that is the important part. Uh, we can just do a nice little warp in over here to keep things safe. stop them from producing. So we have to kill every building on the map for the mastery, which means we next have to go into the Zerg base, which is arguably scarier. I really don't like the Zerg base, which is why we're saving it for last. And still, don't activate this thing. Oh, make sure we kill this. There's a couple other buildings on the map that we get to ignore for now because I want to come this way. Keep it going. So 1635. Wow. Whoa. Um, I'm really far ahead. So I usually want to be done with this base at about the 16 minute mark and uh, we were done at like the 15 minute mark. That's awesome. I'm really, really happy about that. We just, we blitzed it. No, don't, don't take too much damage right now. So 1635, that is what my notes say. There's an attack timing that comes out of this base. And we're going to utilize that attack timing in order to have them be a little bit more open to dying. Just, uh, gonna casually suggest it in conversation. Hey, have you 
we considered not having a base anymore. I'm more in my element as a Protoss player. I would definitely say yeah. I'm uh, I'm pretty in my element as Terran too. I definitely, when I'm Zerg, I'm not necessarily in my element when things start going wrong. Because like everything you learn when you play Heart of the Swarm is how to Kerrigan. And then you don't actually get like as good of fundamentals with the units because Kerrigan. So when things go wrong and Kerrigan stops being the answer, then it's really easy to fall apart. Protoss, on the other hand, is mostly about the units with a supplement of the Spear of a Dune, so you can just get those fundamentals. Uh, hi. I'm gonna have to pull you over there, sir. I appreciate you uh, appearing on such short notice, but we're gonna have to cannon you. Boom. This went really well. I can't believe people are telling me that Jay Verino got this base and the other base down by the 15 minute mark and eliminated all these buildings over here and all of this and all of that. The people have to be mistaken. I, I can't believe it. That would be insane. That would be incredible. On Brutal. What a masterclass that would be. So one thing I'm afraid of is that there are like attack waves that spawn from this stupid corridor. Yeah, like this. Actually, in pretty good position for it. Just don't get overwhelmed. We got it. Why? No, you're fine. So we have to kill all these buildings, then we have to kill these buildings, which are not too bad, but there are a decent number of defenders over there. And then we have to kill all the buildings around the two bases, then we have to reload the save and beat the mission. Like normal. But under 15 minutes. Easy. Things are just going... They're going nice. I was legitimately very worried about this, and it seems to just be fine. Uh, move this way. Oh, hi. I mean, hey, if you wanna, if you wanna fight over here, let's just move away from this constriction so I don't die. But yeah, I'm totally fine finding this attack wave. Oh, what I should have done is set up my save right before I had to deploy pylon so I could get an extra one. That would have been a true 24-hour stream move. Oh wait, did I, did I turn this on? No, I didn't turn it on. It's fine. It kind of sounded like, I, I don't know the voice lines very well. But that one sounds like the, oh sir, you've, uh, you've bopped the Amon's forces and now he's sending his warp prism at you. That sort of thing. Now up here, I remember there's an infester who makes your life annoying because he just really likes fungal growth and then the ultralisk comes. But we have enough guys that it doesn't matter. Okay. Just don't let him attack things. It's so funny blinking. I don't know if it looks as funny as it feels, but whenever you're just out microing an Ultralisk with blink, it just... It feels like one of those big excited dogs that just does not quite understand how to move in the way that it wants to and I kind of feel bad for it it's like when you're playing keep away with it and he's like having a great time he's a little derpy but he's never gonna get the toy this immortal is really annoying do not like him that down this down so remember, we are here just to kill buildings. I don't actually care about beating this mission right now. 
That's for the reload. Just bam like this. Yeah, get another pylon. It is kind of nice that this one takes forever because we do get a lot of uses of uh, deploy pylon. And we need that. Is this it? Final one? There we go. So that is the final building. Let me just make sure that, that is the achievement I'm thinking it is. Yep, destroy all enemy structures. Perfect. Now we go load. We go real sable. Take a drink. Okay. Now we have to win in 15 minutes. Where is this? This is 11 minutes? That's fine. Do not finish that off. Try not to lose these. And keep warping in some guys over here. Uh, we need a couple more pylons. And we just have to fight through this all over again. In three minutes. Three minutes seems fine. Yeah, I don't see a problem with that. Except the Ultras. The Ultras might be a problem with that. Finish it off. You are going down here, sir. You guys are coming over here. We don't need to build the defenses against the Flyers this time, because we're going to end before the Flyers end me. Oh, no! Oops. Uh... Uh oh. The second power cell is active. Oh. Uh, I guess we gotta go. Do not deny your destiny, Artemis. You oh, target that down. That was that was a mistake. I did not want to activate that yet. I meant to put him on hold position. Warp prisms approaching our nexus point. Take this down. Stalkers, eliminate those warp prisms. Right. We're gonna be a little bit weird here. Here, blink these guys into that, and then over here, target it down. Easy, not a problem. We got it. <laughs> it please ignore this. <laughs> please avert your eyes from the main base. It is, it is not a problem. Also, please avert your eyes from my army. Ooh, can we warp in here? Yes. <laughs> Useful. Okay. Click the TV. <laughs> yeah, we gotta see what Donnie has to say about this. We're going to Core Hall first. Now, Core Hall is one of the missions we're gonna have to do twice. Once one hard, once on this because we need DTs for the mastery achievement just straight up like we need DTs for all the mastery achievements on every single angle so we had to pick one to sacrifice uh, centurion is great stalker is great now we have the ones that regenerate energy talk to Rojo cracks let's go so what we're gonna do here is focus on the achievement of not letting it go under four minutes because the other two achievements are activate two of them within 120 seconds and then activate three of them within 80 seconds. So both of those are two sides of the same coin. Well, not two sides. They're actually just two coin. <laughs> they're the same coin. <laughs> so we're just gonna... We're gonna get those at the same time in the archives after we finish Salvation. Before we start the epilogue. And that is a very fast one because we will have DTs and we'll have Solar Lance, so we're just going to walk through it. Two coins of the same side, I love it. Brilliant. Who are you who is such an intelligent scholar? You have such a way with words. So yeah, the objective here is do not let the... Do not let it go under four minutes. And we're good. 
The secondary objective is Orbital Strike. Needs to get its objective done, if at all possible. I don't want to be Orbital Striking after this mission, if I can avoid it. Because the more open Solarite I have for Solar Lance, the better. Solar Lance is just better. Okay, so we're going to get Orbital Strike very soon, I believe. There's a little bit of money over here. We can get this guy as well, and we're just going pure Stalker right here because we only have two units available to us, and one of them is not the Stalker. Orbital Strikes can now be fired from the Spear of Adun's command panel, Hierarch. So what we're going to do here is we're going to very aggressively move forward. And after we do that, we're going... Uh, basically, as soon as we get this one down, we're good on time, and we'll be fine. I just need to, in three minutes, finish off that. So we're not going to do the bonus objective yet. We just gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. And what we're gonna do to make the mission easier over time is we're gonna have an orbital strike and then we're going to use that orbital strike after we deal with the objective. So there's a little quirk on this mission that every time a new set of reinforcements comes to the various stabilizers, we get a scan. The scan tells us all the nearby dudes, which is really useful, and we can utilize that to start bombarding them before the fight even starts, before we even get close to getting over there. Uh, we're probably going to need two of them. So we have two minutes over here. We need to make sure that we use our first orbital strike volley with over a minute remaining. So we can start burning these bunkers. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. An orbital strike would help weaken their defenses. Then we're gonna just kill this Viking with uh, their own missiles. So because we dealt with these bunkers, we are just kind of waiting on the orbital strike cooldown. And with that, we will be able to hit tanks mostly. Tanks are the important one. Everything else is kind of meh. We do have to try to hit, like, lots of stuff, though, for the Orbital Strike achievement, because it's, like, 5,000 damage, and if you're just hitting single bunkers, then you gotta hit with, like, 50 shots, and that's a lot of shots. Gotta be careful. So we have one minute to clear all this out before we lose the achievement. That's fine. This is the last mission that we're going Mass Stalkers, by the way. They kind of fall off after this. Revising durability estimates. Nice work. Got a repair crew inbound. So if you're looking for a bit of variety. Heads up. All right. Looks like Mobius Core is starting to reinforce the stabilizers. Expect some heavier resistance. Uh, am I lost? No, I'm fine. Perfect. I hope I did a lot of damage there. I'm not sure that I killed anything. I may have completely whiffed in this area. Which would be a little bit embarrassing. So now we have four minutes to finish things off. Mobius Corps is mobilizing an attack against our Nexus point. Rally our defenses. Okay, keep going, keep clearing. These guys are easy. Pull everything back. Oh, we really need these to finish. I'm like super excited because I know for a fact at some point soon I'm going to have to get my second wind because I'm really tapering out. <laughs> it's, this is a protagonist story, right? So it's got to happen. I'm a hero. <laughs> this is my heroism of playing Legacy of the Void at like 2 in the morning. 2.15 in the morning. These solar light reactors can be used to improve the solar core's energy output. Oh gosh, these guys are like all out of shields because I didn't if wait possible, long enough. You should seek them out. I lost way too much there. I have two minutes and some change to take these guys down. 
Let's keep going. Try to pull the ones that are low back. We have extra time. This is good. So we're going to one, two, three. One, two. And then just retreat. Shield upgrades, that is nice. I uh, didn't get the objective over here yet. I'm going to do that in a bit. I just, I was scared on time. I think that I had enough time to do it. It wouldn't have been an issue, but I just, I became a coward. So we're going to end up taking a little bit longer as a result. Okay, the missile turret is the only person that's alive over here, so... We can destroy that when we need. We can head back over to this bonus objective and finish it off now. Ooh. I'm excited to be done with blinking, honestly. It's, uh, it's mentally taxing. Having a hard time explaining what I'm doing while doing it. Oh, hello. Oh, do not go over there, sir. It's not where you live. It's not where your people are. Okay, you can finish this. Oh, did we just clear that whole area? Okay, we can just walk past. It's fine. No, 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 wait, no, um. Please kill this. You got 20 seconds, you're fine. Let's not, let's not make a big mistake like that and just lose the achievement. Dragoons are better than stalkers, my dude. Where did you buy the drugs? I have to ask. Because that is, uh... That's some impressive stuff if you're believing that. Okay, this is just to try to get more experience on the bar. Like, we need the Orbital Strike XP. I hit one guy. Oh, man. I thought there was more over there. Man, those Dragoons just path their way right into your heart. That's amazing. I'm glad that you're so in love with them. Someone has to be, right? It's only fair. Let's keep going. Get these out. Do we have another good blasty blast? I think what I want to do is orbital strike a bunch of these guys. As I said, it's just achievement progress at this point. We have a lot of time to work with. I'm feeling confident. I might have to use it again on another mission. I don't know which mission that would even be. But I'll think on it. And this is the tough part of this campaign, is just, there's so much, like, reactive planning when you do and don't get achievements. Oh, I thought they were gonna go farther, or return back. That was a mistake. What is exploding there? Yeah, double missile that guy. Thank you. Hmm... I'm going to try to get one more or... Oh. Hold on. Durability calculations updated. I mean... Only one stabilizer still I can try to get a good hands. shot on these guys. Yeah, that actually seems great. Maybe we'll get the achievement with just a good blast on these losers. Nope. <laughs> Man, I really was hoping that it was gonna pop up right there and it was gonna be it was gonna feel cool. Uh not this time. Well, we're good with the four minute achievement. Strong showing. Okay. We got this, we got that. We didn't get the mastery, of course, I think. Uh yeah, not even close. Let's go. Ugh. That's a hell of a thing your boys did. Next mission is a little bit spooky, but like it'll be okay because we're getting immortals. Immortals can a move. I need deploy. Pi yeah, we're gonna be working on the deploy pylon achievement. 
Which is, it's just so epic. Temporal field? Nah, I think we're gonna try to get a little bit more orbital strike as well. Um, ba bum. Yeah, that's good. Dr. Rohana. And let's go, Hana. I'm not really hungry, I just feel like I should. To keep my energy up, you know? But... I also shouldn't, like, bloat. I haven't eaten very much. I've just kind of been shoveling, like, one spoonful every hour, maybe two. And micromanage it. Alright, so the way that we gotta do this mission is... The mastery achievement, once again, is the spooky one. And that requires us to... Destroy like 55 enemy buildings during the stun. During a single stun. And the entire build order is going to be warped 100% around that. It is not easy. What we're going to have to do is max out on Immortals really quick. And then we're going to have to utilize their firepower split into a bunch of different rows to blast through the enemy. And, uh,. Destroy all 55 by attacking Already three different points at once. Besides that, we just have to defend against the hybrid, which aren't that bad. Uh, our allies will probably be okay, and we have to accrue more deploy pylon progress. I don't think we're going to like get the achievement here, and we will be able to deploy pylon in the epilogue. However, this is kind of the last time that we're going to have any energy to start spamming deploy pylon. A silly ability. Okay, we need to make sure that we're getting immortals, though. It takes at least four immortals, preferably five, for the first disruption. Otherwise, we're pretty much guaranteed to lose something. I don't want to build anything besides immortals. We're going, like, pure immortal because they have the highest DPS against buildings. Being able to punch through the buildings for the mastery achievement is what we're here for. And if we... If we don't bring that DPS to the table, we are absolutely doomed. I tried doing it with, like, stalkers at one point. I don't want to mi micro-stalkers anyway, obviously. <laughs> I've been doing that for, like, an hour. But, uh, I tried doing it, and the stalker just doesn't hit hard enough for it. The keystone is reaching full power, Hierarch. Excuse me. We will need to uh, the... Allies from the hybrid once more. Why'd I put a pylon there? This pylon is definitely going to be found and killed. <laughs> it's, uh... Work on our mineral income. All about the minerals early game. Immortals are pretty cheap. They also build pretty fast. We're going to max out before the third disruption web, which is really fast. It's just immortals take up a lot of supply, but they're also not very expensive and they're really powerful. They're just a good unit if you don't have an air enemy, which we don't. Uh, there are air units on this mission and we're just gonna pretend that there aren't. That's my strategy. If you ever have issues in life, just pretend they don't exist and then shoot people with your phase disruptor. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Is this a phase disruptor? Yeah, phase disruptor. Your phase is gonna get so disrupted, bro. Uh, do we need a forge? We probably need a forge, but I'm not ready to build it yet. That kind of commitment. It's not for me. We shall serve forever. I'm really hoping I can get away without using the top bar here. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh golly. No, 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 no. This is horrible. Uh, we lost one immortal. I'll take it. That uh, definitely could have ended up, like, falling apart, and it ended up <laughs> not so bad. One guy down. Forgot about Spear of Doom achievement. Yeah, it's all about Spear of Doom achievements, my dude. That is what we are here for. I love Deploy Pylon so much. Look at that. Free money, $100 right in the bank every time you press that button. 
It's basically the Bitcoin of Protoss. Annihilators are lovely. They really are. Unfortunately, we will never get to use the Annihilator or any other type of mortal throughout this run. Besides, I guess, one Vanguard that we get for free at the beginning of the mission. So this is the first part in my I, <laughs> my uh, philosophy of just ignoring life problems. If you don't deal with the air unit there, it just leaves when everyone else is dead. Which, I mean, <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay. I mean, you dealt with the ground stuff, what am I going to do? I don't have an attack. Put these guys back. There we go. SCVs can repair mortal. Uh, yes, but I don't really care. It's too much work. Over here. Oh man, Nova Covert Ops is going to be an experience, isn't it? It's going to be a fever dream. <laughs> uh, the Raven is still a prototype. Listen, if the Raven is still a prototype, like... The time between Wings of Liberty and this is like multiple years, right? So that's like the early access thing where, no, it's not in early, it's it's a released game. You just claim that it's in prototype so you can pretend. There have been like hundreds of these deployed throughout the war and they're monstrously effective. You're not a prototype. A significant energy spike. I expect the Keystone will emit another disruption Nova soon. So we are just playing really heavy defense here. Make sure that our allies don't get bruised or battered. Because they are not allowed to lose five buildings. That is, uh, one of the ones I just forgot to mention. Cannot lose five buildings really does not come up. Uh, there is one way that it can come up, and that is if you clear really far, and then you, like, go to do a bonus or something, and they try to build a bunch of buildings and a new outpost. Then that can actually be really bad. And you, they can lose a bunch of buildings. But for the most part, as long as you just defend against the hybrid thing, it is impossible for them to lose buildings. You have to actively, like, let the hybrid just eat them. Okay, get these guys back over here. And... They're gonna keep coming. Another wave. Just get the guys with the shields. Right on up. Come get me, bro. What you gonna do? So, this one's actually easier than the first wave because it folds in the melee hybrid, and the melee hybrid do insane damage, but they're also bad. They're like really, really bad because they just die before they hit. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. Then I guess we can use Deploy Pylon for the other bits. We're going to get hit again, and then after we get attacked, we're going to have to split all of our stuff up and prepare for the big push. Not the StarCraft 1 big push. General Edmund Duke is not going to fly down in his battle cruiser and save us. Though that would be the plot twist that I'm looking for. I don't care about the Jim Rayner and Kerrigan romance. I care about Dookie Boy. We shall so what I'm hoping is that I max out here in these next two minutes. It's kind of looking like it's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm 50 supply down. Not entirely sure what I messed up besides my macro. So how do I want to split this up? I probably want to go like 15, 15, 5. Yeah, that seems good. And are we going to be able to afford another deploy pylon? Because I do need orbital strike for this. That's yeah, not going to be a good fight for you, son. Send your science vessel home. So we have about... 100 seconds before we have to go. I don't know what the rate of Spear of Dune energy is, but it's not great. So I probably have to just work with this. Got 10, 
13, 14, 15. Yeah, 15 over here. 15 over here. And then we're going to send some guys up here. And just save the orbital strikes for the hybrid wave because we do need a little bit of punching power on the side with the hybrid. I think they hit the bottom. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't write it down. Need a couple more guys. Are they going to pop out in time? So I'm going to save this because this is a... It's not easy. And I need to make sure that it works on the first try. Or the second try. What? I guess I don't need to make sure it works the first try because I'm saving. But we're going to have to micro on three sides at the same time. This is fine. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. We're gonna attack this way. You guys are gonna move forward. Take that down. No hybrid on that side yet. That is good to see. This is not the hybrid attack wave. Alright, we dealt with the hybrid over there. And let's get some of that orbital strike achievement. Next time. <laughs> At some point, we will get that achievement, I promise. Really need it. Okay, keep going this way. That is not the 50 buildings achievement. That is the kill 15 enemies during the effect. Which is not nearly as important. We have 47 seconds to finish all this off. These guys are going to have to go in here, start knocking down these buildings. Keep it going. That's all the hybrid. We have 27 seconds. Can we get all these buildings down, please? I really need it because, yeah, there we go. Yeah, this achievement has to be during one disruption event and it's very easy to not do that properly. Now we have to pull back a little bit, grab these bonus objectives that I have been delaying. Good thing you've got our backs. Let's get some bunkers out there. Oh gosh, there's like battle cruisers and stuff everywhere. Cool. I'm not even slowing down or getting tired. My dude, I am like in such autopilot mode, I cannot even begin to explain. Like, there is no processing that is happening between what is coming out of my mouth and what I'm thinking. It's just like pure direct mail straight uh, yeah oh can you come this way oh okay oh it would have been nice if you came that way oh my goodness we're getting tanked if only these immortals had their good barrier ability instead of the average one come this way take you down you down and start pushing for the victory we're gonna have to grab this research facility and we're gonna have to shoot at the thing and I'm really just hoping that it gives me that achievement establish a fortification line here like please with a cherry on top we're like really close to being out of money by the way oh no we're not we're doing great I don't know why I thought I was in danger how many shots is that? Three? One, two, three. Let's go find someone else to shoot and get some achievement progress. Four, five. Get wrecked, loser. Thank you for your help. Our last science vessels are on their way to the front line. All right, let's finish this off. We have secured all of the threatened facilities. My friend Jimbo Rayner is busy blasting this, people. Hierarch. I just activated my shield for Marines, everybody, even though I shouldn't have. Forward. Gonna make things worse. Okay, big final fight. Not bad. It's just gonna hurt. But we have infinite stuff at this point, like Jim is gonna spawn stuff forever. We just need to make sure that we don't lose some buildings. Yeah, we're good, we're good. 
Oh, you know what? We need, uh, fire that off. No! Oh, I could have gotten more achievement progress. I really messed up. Uh, how close am I? How close am I? Uh, Spear of a Dune. Oh, we would have gotten it. If I had fired it right there, we would have gotten it. That is a mistake, and I will have to figure out where to get one of those. So we're going to Amon's Reach. Oh, no, we do orbital on this one. We're going to do a couple orbitals. Yeah, we're good. We're good. You here, we have no time for anything fancy. So Amon's Reach is actually a really interesting mission that I am probably well, going to mess up really badly. So what we have to do, it feels like initially the way that it's set up is you have to play it multiple times. And the reason is the achievements are, number one, you cannot kill any of the Void Thrashers. The Void Thrashers fire a siege gun at the, at the, at the warp conduit that they're trying to escape from. So we also cannot let the final Void Thrasher spawn, so we have to go really fast, but also we cannot let the Void Thrashers reduce the conduit to half HP, which means there's a whole lot of stuff that's like, hey, you can't deal with these guys, but they're going to reduce it, but then you can just go really, really, really fast. So as long as we can beat this mission in six minutes or less, we're actually fine. And instead of it being a set of things that's like, well, you can't kill any of them, and they're going to kill the thing, but you can't let it do that. Instead, it's just go turbo mode. And I like that. It's kind of neat. Because it feels like, at first glance, one of those sets that's like, you have to go do it multiple times. And then the actual answers just get good. We're going to see if I got good. Odds are low. Okay, this guy is going to go over here. And try to get the bonus objective with him. This guy is right here. We got a lot of stuff we're doing at once, so we're going to destroy this void uh, con or launch bay. The gunk on the launch bay. Be careful. The spore crawlers and overseers ahead can okay. detect our dark templars. These go over here. Slay them first. We're gonna make sure that we get a couple more friends. The first launch bay has been cleared. Continue evacuating. And hopefully this guy is going to be able to get on the point without dying. He's going to take a lot of damage right now. And yeah, that's a bonus objective. Perfect. Now these two guys dealt with the launch bay, so they're going to waddle their way back home. We're going to join them up with some of their friends. Because we want as many DTs as we can get for this final bit. It looks like we're going to have the energy for one deploy pylon, but I'm going to wait until the very end of the mission to give it a go. What's going to happen right here is some spores are going to appear, and we cannot fight the spores because we're going fast, and that means that we are now locked. No one is going to be able to make it past this. Alright. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Am I just supposed to blast out five times? I think so. We can get this guy right there. Oh, whoa, 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 ow. That was bad. That was actually terrible, but we got this guy in here, so this is the third void constriction. Now we're going to have to run this way. Uh, how do I want to approach this? I think that I need to do one more orbital strike after this, so two orbital strikes total. We're going to fire one here to take this down. It takes three because it does 100 damage and he has 200 life, which... uh. If you played against Zerg, you understand. They always have that one natural regeneration in between the shots. So unfortunately, out of the fire... We we have another Overseer we need to kill later as well. And that means that it takes a total of six shots in order to take them down. So we're almost done. We're going to move from one of the shortest missions in this entire run to one of the longest. And I'm not looking forward to it. the infestation. Only one launch bay remains disabled. We just sit right here. How you doing? Now, there's gonna be a bunch of guys running in circles, doing crazy stuff. It's gonna be absolutely wacky and wild over here. Oh gosh, these the spore crawler just like sat on oh no. What? A second Uh under assault. Okay, so there's usually an event over there. What? Oh, 442. Oh, no. 
this autosave is in a terrible position. Uh, usually it reveals that area and the spore goes and sits down, but like the spore was for some reason just sat down and it didn't reveal the area to me. Oh my goodness, we may have just died. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what just happened there. I haven't seen that before. That was really bad. Yeah, why are these guys just sitting here? Usually they walk forward and burrow, right? Well, what we can do is we can try to run past like this. We got all three of them up. Now there's going to be a little bit of a dance we have to do. So we're going to go. Stop that guy. Finish it off. We're fine. Yeah, it looks like I there's two separate triggers. I didn't actually know this, but it looks like there are two different triggers. One for the spore crawlers to move forward and root. And then another for the vision. And they're not in the same place. That wasn't too bad. Now we're going to do the worst mission. And I really don't want it to go wrong. I need Chrono Surge and I need Solar Lance. Okay, Chrono Surge. Need to get... All this, and we will start with construction time. No, starting supply? Yeah, construction time. It's fine. For the War Council, we need to get the Nerezim Dark Templar. They're very important. And then we will head into this mission. So, we have to get to 2.2 billion Zerg. And that is awful. It's so long. It's like 45 in-game minutes, which is like 30 out-of-game minutes. It's... A really, really long mission. The other thing that we have to do is make sure that all of these rocks are destroyed by the... I don't know when these have to go down. Ten minutes? Yeah, the ten minute mark. That'll be okay. Uh, unless I mess up and lose them. But in the end, it won't be bad because that's one of those achievements that if you mess up, you can just go back into the archives and do it on casual and just blitz through it in 35 seconds. Pull the probes and everything. As it is so the way that we're going to fight these Zenith Stones is just by using the Shadow Fury ability and then holding position until it's off cooldown. Because that keeps them really far away, and these start, like, emitting volatile energy and whatever. Also, there's detectors nearby, and I don't want to deal with them. Dark Templar are really good at that sort of thing. The Shadow Fury ability is one of the best once you start doing this on various groups. Because they always return to where they started using their ability. So if they were out of detection when they started, then they're going to be out of detection when they finish, unless the detector is, like, moving. Okay. This little attack wave is on the way. We're going to try to use these stalkers. This is where I'm, like, rallying as much energy as I can. Because this mission matters. And if I mess this mission up, it is an enormous time loss. It's like an unforgivable time loss that's basically going to end everything. So, if there's any one specific time that I need to get it right, it's right here. Which is good, because I love time defense missions. I'm famous for my love of time defense missions, if you've ever watched me stream. They're just... Oh, they make me so excited and happy. We're going to get a couple pylons around here. We're going to use Chrono Surge to saturate very quickly. We have to Chrono Surge out like 50 units during the campaign. I'm going to try to get the first Chrono Surge right here. And then at the end of this mission, if I'm not dead, like barely surviving, then what I'm going to try to do is get some later Chrono Surges just for Chrono Surge value. But we'll see how that goes. Because that's not as important. Keep crawling guys out. Another brood of Zerg is preparing to attack from a hive to the northwest. Uh, we're not really prepared to deal with those guys. Okay, we got a good chrono. We didn't supply block ourselves or anything. We're gonna go up to 30 workers on both sides, because why not? It shall be as you say. It's just good to have. I, I am the voice of the Normally I wouldn't recommend it, but you need so many minerals on this mission that it's worth it. So once this starts discharging, it's actually going to blow up all the banelings and stuff. Which is good. Makes life easier. 
Let's see, this area is pretty fine, so we're going to build our first defensive nexus. Which is just what we do here. Giant nexus games. And we got to keep doing this. If I forget about this, it gets really bad really fast. Uh, we're going to just pop on over here, actually. Help out with this. Because it's a little bit too spooky with what's going on. Uh, we can use the big gun over there. I don't want a solar lance just yet. I'll save that for the next attack wave. It looks bad. And keep building. Oh, I felt it right there. Like, I just stopped macroing for a little bit. It's one of those, like, oh, we're fatiguing. It's when you're really, like, up and ready, you know, it's super easy to just keep building over and over and over again. But when you're losing it, when you're tired, then uh, you just get these mental lulls where your brain just turns off for a little bit. It's not like the emo lull, but you know what I mean. Well, got him. Okay, we got one more. Gotta take it out before the 10 minute mark. I have to be very vigilant about that, and then I can kind of be a little bit more chillaxed throughout this mission. Things won't be so bad after that. Okay, they're coming in from the bottom. And I think that I need to start getting some shield batteries over here. Shield battery and Kaidaran monolith is kind of the name of the game in this area. One, two, three. One, two, three. We're gonna be making a lot of use of Nexi, by the way. If you've never, if you've never Nexisted it on this mission, it's actually really good. That is the the word of Tunexus. He's over here. I don't like that. Yeah, it's gonna be locked. Zerg are moving to assault oh, both sides of the temple. Oh, I forgot to use my abilities for a sec. Oh, please don't die. Please don't die. We're going to have to bust down these guys at the front pretty soon. But we have the Nexus Overcharge, so they're going to provide a nice bit of tanking and damage. We're just going to provide one swipe over here, one swipe over here, and... Put a little bit more damage on this objective so I can get it before that 10 minute mark because, as I said, I am full of fear. I don't like the position of that, so I'm just going to blast it. Okay, two more of those, and then we will be good on that end. I'm going to start walling this area off. I'm not going to get this one just yet. So what we're going to do is have one wall or one layer of cannons, then a layer of shield batteries, and then a lot of Kaidaran monoliths, because the Kaidaran monolith is really good on this mission. Like, legitimately awesome. Cool. Rush Hour is a fantastic achievement. I'm so happy we got that. Keep it going. It's a fantastic achievement, is that what I said? I hate this mission. It's not. It's a bad achievement, it's very boring. <laughs> It's not interesting at all. I lied to you. I Playing you like a fiddle. It's not fantastic. It never has been and it never will be. What am I talking about? I hate this mission. <laughs> Just so mentally checked out. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, hello. You know what? We needed some renovating done over here anyway, so. Do this. Do that. And we're going to go here go here and actually perfect just like that I get the cannons are these done yeah, it's one nexus I mean, it's not really a defense oh gosh that's probably just gonna die right here cool we got the nexus overcharge achievement that's actually pretty nice Start getting some of these batteries. We have a lot of money in the bank because I have not been building up properly. Oh, 
I hear all these ultras, and we just don't have the cannons to support everything yet. Once we get the cannons behind, then the ultras fall very quick. DT's in back. They are transporting ground forces. Destroy the overlords quickly. Try to grab a guy over here, and then we gotta get a lot of cannons over. This is the greatest mission of all time. Honestly, if you don't like this mission, then you probably are the type of person that doesn't like ice cream. It's just so good. You wouldn't want to hate ice cream. You don't want to make ice cream sad, do you? Yeah, I didn't think so. That's why you didn't answer. How do we do this? This area in the back is always just awful to keep everything alive on. Because they send so many guardians that just siege everything. And then they disable all of your stuff with the stupid hybrid. The really ugly men. Who Artanis is honestly very rude. And he's like, I've never seen something so catastrophically ugly in my life. And honestly, it's like, the dude didn't mean to be born that way. Okay? Like, you can attack the fact that he is trying to destroy the world, take over a home world, destroy the galaxy or whatever, but like, I don't know. Don't be mean about the fact that the hybrid is ugly, Artanis. Don't hybrid shame. Couple more of these. Oh, uh, those. Honestly, oh, wow, this uh, has nothing on it. <laughs> I was going to say, honestly, things are looking pretty good for my defense. I just forgot to build any over here, and somehow I'm getting away with it. We're going to pretend that I had this all part of Keikaku. Translator note, Keikaku means I don't know what I'm doing. This seems good. Oh, can you even get through here? No, you're stuck back there forever. Perfect. I wonder when Vorazun's gonna learn that there's four sides on this temple. I mean, this area, like, I don't know, the bridge is out, but, like, that's never stopped anyone before. You're a sci-fi super race. You shouldn't be that confused by a bridge being out. Particularly when we've already seen them drop. Uh, where's the enemy? All three sides, huh? Alright. I mean, if that's how they want to do it. So we want to set this rally here, these rallies here, these rallies here. What we're actually going to do here, eventually, is pretty suave. I like it quite a bit. But I'm not going to tell you just yet. Because it's more exciting to keep it a secret, you know? We're going to make probes. Make a lot of them. But the reasoning is pretty cool. You'll see it, and you'll be like, wow. That's not that special. <laughs> but it's special to me. Build like 100 stack depends to take a nap for the rest of the hour. You cannot take a nap on this mission once you get... It's, uh... I don't remember if it's like 1.4 or 1.6 billion. There's something around there where it just becomes obscene. And you just cannot rest. You have to constantly be vigilant for everything that's attacking from every angle. And then you have to solar lance things properly, which is awful because the solar lance, uh... The Spear of Dune becomes really laggy. So you're just waiting for it to, like, zoom out all the time in really slow and laggy fashion. Yeah, this guy. Mr. Ugly. I remember him. I don't know. I don't think he's that ugly. I mean, he's not pretty, but, like, I feel like Artanis is a little bit of a drama queen there. You've definitely seen things that are uglier. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's being completely fine and reasonable here, but... I don't know. I still think he's hybrid shaming. Uh, 
is this enough? I probably need to move this cyber core somewhere. Like right there. And then just open up this area with lots of monoliths. I don't want that to die. Or do you have banelings? Nah, it's fine. So we still have a lot. Oh my gosh, I just, I keep forgetting to build stuff over here. What am I doing? <laughs> it's not hard. Okay. Well, there's literally nowhere else I can build stuff. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I've gotten away with this so much. I genuinely should be dead over here. But it's working out. Turns out, Northwest, defense is uh, optional. For the first bit. I'm gonna save. This threat is <laughs> because I'm make, making such good decisions. All we have to it. Yeah, lasered. This guy, and need some shield batteries over here. We're getting pretty close to having complete defense. Like, we're just not gonna need more stuff. And then it's going to be all about the probes. I think I can sneak in a Chrono Surge right now. I'm going to give it a go. Nah. No, no, no. I got to take this one respectfully and safely. If things go wrong, it's going to be so bad. Yeah, let's, uh... Let's be reasonable here. No Chrono Surge. I can't do this again. We're going to get a lot of monoliths behind here. We just want lines and lines of monoliths for when the guardians start guardianing me. Because the monolith is the only thing that can hit them naturally. I don't actually like the monolith that much because it takes a really long time to charge up its attacks, but sometimes you just have to work with the one tool that you have available to you that isn't garbage. I actually think that losing this won't be that bad, because then they'll all start coming this way, and there's just a big brick of them over there. I'm not sure if the big brick strategy will work, but... Not really a cannon, boy. This is looking a lot better than it was a bit ago. When I had nothing over here. We just need to keep building these emergency corridors so we can move our guys around. And then make lots of Kyderan monoliths in the back. Because the hybrid are the threat. That's not actually true. The hybrid aren't that scary. The banelings are the real threat, but we can't hit them with cannons in the back anyway. The hybrid are actually kind of mean. There we go. And here we go. The temple is realigning. It will be ready soon. We are almost at the point where we can be halfway done. If we can hold longer, I should be able to retrieve it. Yay. 2.2 billion, remember. Because the achievements on this one are just do it longer and do it longer. It was really uninspired. Just like the mission itself. All right. So now we're going to start Operation Probes. Uh, I don't like that that hit me right there. Operation Probes is really complicated. We're going to build probes. For what reason, you might ask? Probes. Keep them coming. Here they go. I don't like those guardians. So, you'll be able to see this in a moment when the probes start doing their thing. Or they're just going to die to banelings. That's another very reasonable potential. <laughs> but when they di when they don't die to banelings, they're actually quite good. There's just a lot of banelings. I promised you this is a strategy. Probes versus banelings, a classic matchup. <laughs> 
It's going really well for the probes right now. To be fair, just having the probes soak the banlings is actually a really good trade for me. But then, here's what happens... Oh, there's no melee hybrid there. Here's what happens with these hybrid. They just get confused and stuck. And they don't know what to do. <laughs> and every other wave is a hybrid. So every other wave is just, like, standing there, staring at the probes, being like, What is this little thing? How do I move past it? I have no idea. And that's a very powerful position to be in. A save. I don't... I don't really know why it works. If we can hold on just a while longer... So what we're going to start doing, or I guess we're going to save up for that 1.6 billion mark. I'm going to fire off a solar lance here, here, and here, and then start saving my energy. I like to believe that we killed some banelings there. So yeah, 1.6 billion is the scary part. I've declared it so. No, 1.4 billion according to my notes. 1.4 billion is a scary part. My notes have declared it so. How do we have 33 guys on? Whatever. Do not care. We just have to make sure that this goes well. I think this is gonna die. I think it's for the greater good. This seems like enough probes. We're gonna chill on probes for now. Because we don't want them to all get AoE'd down instantly, right? Like... Ideally, they live for a little bit in smaller groups while they're absorbing this fire. And we gotta just get them back in position so they can do this damage absorption. It's kind of a double deal because we can absorb a lot more Baneling hits when the probes do their thing. Uh, this is just Mass Ultra. Yeah. This is why we do it. They're just very confused. <laughs> 20 probes with 1 HP. I mean, yeah, 20 probes with 1 HP is pretty good. Better than 1 probes with 20 HP. Is this ever gonna die? I genuinely thought it was doomed many years ago. But I guess I'll try to keep it alive if it's doing so well. I'm very proud of it. Alright, we're gonna get a couple more waves of probes, and I think that this is the last time that we fight against little wimpy baby baneling waves instead of the really big scary ones that we're saving Solar Lance for. Let's take a look at everything. We probably fit another monolith over here. One right there. Here for good measure. There's some shield battery. It does seem to be head to toe defenses now. No places to put anything. Units don't have any value, really. Besides these probes. Let's keep that guy in hold position. Okay, this is 1.4. So now it is going to alternate constantly forever between hybrid wave and baneling wave. Over and over. And they come at about a one minute cycle which also happens to be the cooldown of Solar Lance. So what we're gonna do is just try to Solar Lance the Banelings every single time. I don't know if we're gonna get them here. I can't see them. But basically the hybrid are non issue because we have the power of probes. Oh, that was a good one. Most of the uh, Banelings died over here as well. We're gonna lose a little every once in a while. Then we just kind of bring these guys back is like molding defense, a self-sealing defensive setup. And we're going to hope that the back goes really well and that we don't lose it. 1.5 billion. We need 0.7 billion more. 2.2. We're almost there. Oh, it's gone. I hardly knew it. I missed it already. So then this is going to be done right at about the time the Banelings are here, and they're going to get very slightly closer every single time. Which is... that's the danger zone. 
because they will eventually just start breaking our wall, but if we can live long enough, then we don't care. I don't know how many of these shots we have to do. I would like to be able to throw down another Chrono Surge near the end of this mission so that I can get a little bit more achievement progress on that end. I think I got about 20 units made here, so I probably need like two more Chronos. And there is another mission that we're going to Chrono on. It's uh, assuming we have to. If we can get away with not doing it, we obviously won't because it's an expensive ability that doesn't really provide that much benefit. But Temple of Unification is not bad for Chrono. Oh, we gotta stop producing for a sec. And here they are, right on time. I learned this strategy, or at least the Solo Lance part of this strategy, from a random guy with a guitar YouTube channel. Who, he's like, all of his videos are guitar videos, except he has one video where he gets like 3.3 billion on this, and then he goes back to the guitar stuff. And honestly, I think that's like the most lovely part of YouTube, you know? It's just all these cross sections of various people and communities and all the different stuff that they're interested in. And this guy just comes out and he's like, Hey, yeah, I'm uh, casually one of the best players in the world when it comes to this specific mission. Anyway, uh, this is my strategy. Uh, let's go play guitar. I'm like, that's amazing. That's so, like, wholesome in a great way. As opposed to wholesome in a bad way. restart the game after this mission? Why? Is something bad happening, or are you just talking about the fact that, uh, it takes a long time to move the thing up? Because it always takes a long time to move the thing up on this mission. It's just awful. It's, uh... The game is not built to deal with as many enemies as it sends at you. Okay, global swarming, 1.8. Almost 2.2. We still haven't even lost a Nexus. Oh, we lost a Nexus. We still haven't even lost four Nexus. Hmm. Oh, there he is. Mr. Baneling. Oh, this mission is so funny. Oh, it just gets worse and worse. I don't know why it's so bad. There's no other mission in the game that, uh, the Spear of a Dune just works so poorly on, and there's not actually that many enemies on this mission. That's the part that I find very fascinating. So what exactly is it that makes the Spear of a Dune so jank here? It's gotta be some weird coding thing. Next slide, please. <laughs> yeah, I know how you feel. I think this brick is going to hold for a really long time. I think I'm going to be able to get away with one more solar, probably two more solar lances, and then I can try to get the Chrono Surge out. I'm really just, if I can get rid of stuff like the Chrono Surge achievement, it makes life so much more simple. And I really need things to be simple right now because I am playing, I'm down to about 30% mental capacity. <laughs> Uh, oh, there goes another one. We're good on that end. You know what? Chrono. Let's do it. Is this hybrid? This is hybrid, so we have time. Let's keep it going. I might even be able to get one more out. Okay, Chrono Surge is done. Now I'm afraid I'm getting too risky. There's like a lot of banelings. But we don't need to have a good base. We just have to live. Yeah. Oh gosh. I just don't want to do this targeting interface anymore. That is the real thing. This is the worst part. <laughs> so, uh, take these down the Guardians, so that we cannot get sniped. And... Try to rebuild. 
We always have one probe left on this side when he tries to do the rebuilding. I'm very proud of him. Probius is alive and well until the Baneling comes. So we're going to try to get to 75 energy again and fire off one more Chrono Surge. And then end the mission at 2.2 billion. Honestly, this went really well. This is another one of those ones that I was just afraid of. But not because it's super hard, more because it's super time lossy if it doesn't go right. So yeah, we're going to try to hold up to 25. There's a little bit of a failsafe here. The way that this mission works is that if you have... Um, if you have enough, like we got the achievement, and if the temple dies, then it automat automatically activates the thing. So we can we can be a little bit greedy here with trying to get this Chrono Surge off. And it won't be that bad. It's just 10 more energy. In fact, I'm filling it to the brim with probes ready to go. Make sure it's chronoing itself, it is. Five more. And then we'll hit overload. And then we're going to take a break because uh, Alone is the next cinematic and it's one of the best StarCraft cinematics and I need more tea. Alright, please give me the achievement right now. I have, I've I've been chronoing so much. That's not it. Nope, we didn't get it. Um, achievements, what, what are the odds that it's at 49 out of 50? I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> Living the dream. How are you guys? Alright, enjoy your cutscene. I'll be back in a couple minutes. I should be back before the cutscene is over. It has been that way all day, hasn't it? 48 out of 50. <sighs> Can we get some Fs in the chat for Shakuras? It'll never be the same. I can't believe that I'm too away from that achievement. I'm so salty. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright. Solar Core. Now we actually get to go back to the game. We need to grab uh, Solar Lance. That is correct. Uh, 
Orbital Assimilator is important here, starting supply. We're going to have to rush through this one. It is a speedrunning mission. So we got the Dark Templar, and we are ready to go. So we've got three different things that we have to do on Glacius. One, we have to beat the mission in less than some number of minutes. Uh, I think it's 11 minutes. Two, we have to kill six gateways on the map. Find them and take them down. And then three, we have to not lose anything to the laser beam, which is like the easiest achievement ever. <laughs> it's really, really simple. Just realized isn't blowing up plan a little bit of overkill to get rid of 2.2 billion zerg. Yeah. So StarCraft has always had an issue with numerical scale. Like, it is, it feels, particularly with the Zerg, they're always really inconsistent. Like, sometimes they basically use million, billion, and trillion interchangeably with each other. When the, uh, when the size difference between those numbers is titanic, right? It is enormous. But the game just doesn't really care. It just picks one and uses it at some point. It really, it should be trillions. Or it should probably, like, the whole point is we were trying to destroy it to take out a bunch of hybrid and deny them a staging operation, so maybe it should have been based on the number of hybrid instead. Killing a couple billion hybrid seems like it'd be really good. I don't even know if there are a billion hybrid. Well, not anymore. Let me activate them. They are quite effective at restoring shields to nearby warriors. I do know there are a billion blueberries in my mouth. And they're amazing. Oh, they're so good. Activate the shield. Protect our friends. Use the dank shrine. Only there can we create the dank memes that will destroy the tall rim. And there. There. These are now calibrated to warp them in as well. All right, so we got to get a move on because we have a lot of stuff to kill and not a whole lot of time to kill it. So first of all, we got to take down this cannon. Oh. <laughs> this. It reminds me of how, like, in the United States Air Force, the way that we deal with, or the way that, like, we're supposed to deal with anti-aircraft stuff is just by flying planes over it, getting them to shoot at us, and then blowing it up. When I see Dark Templar just killing photon cannons, I'm like, that is the same idea, and it is equally silly. Alright, so we're just gonna blast our way through these guys. I really love the shadow of the looming mothership on this mission. I think it's very neat. I like it quite a bit. Okay, then we're going to do the super skillful strategy of just opening the way to the end but we're not actually ready to go to the end yet we gotta chill out for a little bit take some stuff there is no reason to get these sentries but i guess i did it all i'm doing is you know causing pain and suffering to robots that was very rude of me oh hello yeah no we're gonna potentially wait for a solar lance yeah, you know what? We're, we're more than fine there. Shields up. Just try to keep these Centurions alive. 59. And... Lasery. So here's the first two gateways. And then the next two gateways are actually pretty closely nearby. And then the third two gateways are over here. And... With all of those found, we will have all the gateways. It's a weird little achievement. I like it because it's kind of like a scavenger hunt the first time. You got to actually find them and be cognizant of what you're looking at in the base. But it doesn't really matter here. Not in the slightest. There's probably a thing over here, right? A cannon. Got it. Here's two more gateways. And we are most of the way done with this mission, which is good because we are running out of time very rapidly. Fortunately, the Dark Templar is very fast at getting everything up and running. Uh, we do have to not die to the displacement beam. Remember, we cannot lose a unit to it. 
Let's be a little bit careful on our way around. And let's start heading to the end of the mission. Okay. Just gonna make sure that we have all of our shield batteries and stuff up so we don't get crushed by the might of the Taldorim or whatever. The Death Fleet doesn't descend upon us. I don't know the lore. And we just try to use the Shadow Dance to blow people up without them attacking us back, because we are cowards. As is the Dark Templar way. Okay, these two guys are gonna come over here. Oh! Nice, they just all decide to stack right next to me. That is wonderful, I really appreciate that. That's a really cool thing that they decided to do. I'm feeling good enough that I can drop a Deploy Pylon, just get a little bit more in... That achievement's progress. Then we still just have to sit here for a bit as we slowly pick the enemy away. We couldn't really put a pylon over there, unfortunately. Because the enemy sends attack waves to your buildings, and I want them going to my base. I don't want them... Oh gosh, ow, ow, ow. I don't want them going anywhere weird. Because it messes up timings. Uh, huh. What? Who's... Okay. I'm just gonna pretend that made sense. Okay, there's bonus objective up here, and once we have enough energy, we will be going for the win. This is a very quick mission. And we're gonna find Phoenix in a box. So we need 10 more energy before we go, because it's going to be a death sprint. There's really, once it starts, there's no stop in this crazy train. And I'm hoping I can get away with using a single solar lance here, because that's all I have. Probably would be better to have two, but sometimes you just can't have what you want. Let's give this a save, and we're going to run to the end. I'm detecting movement from the Taldorine fleet. Multiple transport signatures inbound on the facility. Oh, no, don't do that, sir. That is a waste of your resources. Oh, no. We have acquired all the right samples. You know what? That's fine. That's fine. Took a little bit of a hit there, but that's okay. So, what we're using right here is a shadow dance in order to make ourselves invulnerable for a moment. And then our 7 HP Dark Templar just gets to the end. It's that easy. Acquiring access. Work quickly, that was... <laughs> that was worse than it should have been. It should have been clean, and it wasn't. <laughs> uh, it's because I got greedy with the pylon as I wasn't supposed to. Okay, we're gonna hold, or we're gonna hold. We're gonna go to Olnar. Olnar is scary. Chrono Surge if needed. Yep, okay. Have that in my notes. I guess we need it. I love Chrono Surge. Okay, Orbital Gas, Nerazim DT, Stalker, and Sentinel. I don't really need the Stalker for this, but I do need the Sentinel. That is a new guy. We have acquired new robotic support technology. And Energizer. Many of my dark Templars so, volunteer. this mission is another one of those really, really tough ones. What's gonna happen is... Uh, it's one of those ones that there's like a bunch of bases on the side of the map that are really, really scary and we have to destroy. But this one has a nice little twist to it. Uh, let me eat my blueberries first. I just spray blueberry juice everywhere. Oh my goodness. That's a juicy bloob. <laughs> okay. So. What we have to do is there's a titanic warp prism that has about infinity million billion HP over on the other side of the map. That is a bonus objective. We have to kill it before the nine minute mark. But at the same time, there is a... Or maybe it's a ten minute mark. One sec, let me look. Ten minute mark. We have to kill it before the ten minute mark. But also, there's an objective that we have to ta uh, take one of these locks and hold it for the duration of the game. We have to take it before the five minute mark, I believe. 
And then there's these giant bases on the sides of the map, and we have to destroy all of them. None of those achievements, like, in their own, is really hard. However, doing all of them, where we have to... The enemy is really aggressive at retaking the locks. So we have to take a lock really quickly, hold it for the entire duration of the game, while we are setting up a timing attack to take down the Titanic Warp Prism, which then we have to take that army and pivot it into an army that can attack the bases. This doesn't really work well because the Titanic Warp Prism is designed to be killed by the Phoenix, and the Phoenix is not really good at killing bases. So it is a complex little venture that we're going to have going on here. And I hope it goes well. We're going to chrono boost out a couple probes so that we can <laughs> get that chrono surge achievement. I can't wait to make all two of them. <sighs> so all in all, it's one of those like we're being pulled in a bunch of different directions. It would be easiest to do it in multiple sets, but we just don't have the time. Not even close. So... We have to do them all at once, and it's going to be a little bit frightening because our composition is going to be weird. We're going for Sentinel Dark Templar Phoenix Energizer. <laughs> just like, it's just a kind of when you just check the checkbox of, yeah, I want an army. I want a little bit of everything. Okay, they're going to hit us. And then after this, we're going to have to head right on over to the middle to take control of it. Teleport successful. Oh, I am. I am the voice. I'm ready for this one. The next mission is also kind of hard, and then the mission after that and the mission after that are both really easy. So we'll have a little bit of a break. A tiny little reprieve. Oh gosh, uh, why did... Why did we not kill anything there? Would've been better if I killed something. Let's get some workers. Hey, we got the Chrono Surge achievement. I'm so happy. I worked really hard for this one. I want to thank my grandma for it. Thanks, Gram Gram. I don't call my grandma Gram Gram. But I just, I'm, I'm so pleased. So we have to take the lock. Now we have to hold this lock forever. The way that we're going to hold this lock forever is with a bunch of phoenixes as we continually build up. We can Solar Lance everything that has ever lived because we cannot really afford any other Spear of Dune abilities. You guys can come over here. That is full saturation. We're going to get some Stargates. Now what we're going to do about the Titanic Warp Prism is that we're going to constantly Solar Lance all of its bodyguard escorts. So that when we actually move to engage it, it's basically a naked guy. And I can punch a naked guy. That is within my job description. It's way easier than dealing with a bunch of carriers. We also have to get these attack upgrades, so we're going to chrono that. We're going to chrono you. And I'm hoping that I can eke out plus two attack before we have to deal with all of that. That's a... So now they're going to come and try to seal this area. At the same time that they're trying to seal this area, we're going to try to watch out for a good moment to fire off a solar lance over into the Titanic Warp Prism to disrupt it. Take down as many of its escorts as it can. I'm thinking it's going to turn. It's got... There we go. Oh yeah, that's the turn. That's the turn, baby. Oh, that was a good one. That's what we're looking for. Now we gotta try to lose as little as we can here. Because the Titanic Warp Prism is not easy, no matter how many things. It just, it takes forever to kill. So we get these going. This attack is going well. We need to grab a forge so we can get some defenses as we are moving along. I'm hoping I just don't have to build static defense here. If it comes down to it, I will. However, if I can get away with not doing it, I will get away with not doing it. So we need to move out at the 8 minute and 40 second mark in order to engage. No, move to intercept the prism at 840. Oh, the way that I wrote that is really bad. 
I don't know if I'm supposed to move to intercept the prism at 840 or move to intercept the prism at 840. Like, do I need to move out at 840 or do I need to be there at 840? Those are two very different, very different strategies. And I'm not sure which one I was intending to do. Well, live and learn, I guess. I think we can get that. Maybe the Triangle of Pain. Triangle of Pain seems good. And then we're going to have to do this hard transition really soon, so... We get a second forge. For these upgrades. Alright. I mean... Let's move to intercept at 840 and see how this goes. I am eager to strike. So we have one minute to kill this. Oh, there's one guy left. We can pick this up. I think that we're okay here. Yeah, we just lift all of this. It's all going to die. Is it out of warpins? I think that it's out of warpins. Here we go. And then we have to deal with the fact that they're sending an attack wave at the same time. Two attack waves at the same time. Casual stuff. Uh, let's... I'm actually gonna wait just a moment. Okay, now I'm going to fire this blast and that blast and that blast. So I need to hold everything. Take these guys down. We have that achievement. It is done. I am warping Not bad. Cargo aboard for further study. Now we need to start transitioning completely into a different army composition. <laughs> Good thing I have these gateways. Probably need a bunch more. So we dealt with part of the tough part. Now we have to level up our infrastructure quite a bit. Get a lot of these guys. Yeah, Chrono Boost here, Chrono Boost here. We got four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's probably enough. Uh, actually, we can probably get away with nine. I don't want to go up to ten. Now we have to max out and get 2-2 two, two on these guys so that we can attack the bases. And the timing attack that I have set up is hold at 16 minutes. So we have 5 minutes to get 100 supply. Which seems pretty doable, given that I have a pretty good economy and I'm going for cheaper units now. I have the Dark Shrine. Yes, I do. And then we're going to have to manage these attacks really well. At the same time, we're going to have to make sure that we don't ever lose this. So we can't really use Solar Lance when we're attacking the enemy. Instead, we have to use Solar Lance when we are defending during the attack. Which is rough because the enemy is going through a really, really big... Uh, or we're going through a really big enemy base. It'd be better just not have to deal with a lot of the units inside of it. But you got to play D, you got to play D. Oh, look at this, Gus. Yeah. Feeling better now. And just keep getting Sentinels. Sentinels are really good because they respawn when they're killed, and that just means they tank a lot longer for the DTs. The DTs just need people to tank for them. That's really it. They're not that needy. Or rather, they are needy, but it's in one specific simple way. Oh, dude, we cannot let them capture that. Missile? No, no. Oh, we just got missiled. Oh, that's, uh... That missile... I don't want to say it's awful. But it just really hit us where it hurt. That is a lot of damage on all of my Dark Templar. Hmm. What's up? Uh, ba 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 Oh, I'm feeling terrible now. That one Seeker Missile may have changed the entire game. Because these DTs are only going to be able to recover a little bit. There's not even that many of them right now. Hmm. We may have taken a lot of damage, and actually busting the enemy at this point is going to be so hard as a result. Seeker Missiles to the pain of existence? Absolutely, man. They are... Any lag in thought 
and they just destroy you. And I am I am lagging in thought. So once again, the 16 minute mark is when we are supposed to get attacked, and then we hold it off and we go counter punch. That's what my notes say. And I believe my notes. They've not lied to me very much yet today. <laughs> In 16 hours, they've only said like five things that are just objectively wrong. <laughs> and honestly, that's pretty good. Alright, we're maxed. I'm going to grab some extra gateways just so that I can remax quicker when I eventually start losing stuff because these bases are tough. And let's get shield upgrade. Uh, is this the attack? Ah, this must be it. Okay, I understand how it's going. We dodged the missile. We're really good supply. Now we have to go to the Protoss base first and just kick it in the kidneys. As we're doing that, I'm going to grab more armor upgrades and be ready to go. Lift them up. Take all this down. Uh, this is the part that I'm afraid of, because if they take this area, I am... Oh, I lose the, the achievement. I really need it. You guys come this way. Just keep blasting. I'm... I'm going to take the bold approach and fire one of these off, because there's just so much in here. And I feel like we need to soften them a bit. Pull these back. Target down the carrier. Target down the carrier. We've lost a good 25 supply already. We refueled some of it at home. Most of the Phoenixes are doing well, which is good. They're very expensive. The Zelts are probably going to die in larger numbers very soon. However, I think that that Thermal Lance, we're going to get away with it. It's going to be recharged. And it was absolutely worth it. Uh, is that an enemy? No, that's just a missile turret. So this was the easier of the two bases, by a significant margin. The Terran base is much more difficult, and we're going to have to run into that very soon. Please don't take my little thing. I need this area. Alright, feeling good. I'm not going to capture any of these points yet. Instead, I'm just going to take these two auto gases and leave it to the opponent because I have another big base to kill. Let's go. Hey, good timing. What? Let's just not deal with it. Oh, I knew there was going to be a raven. There's always a raven. They hide it in the back, just so that you're a little bit more sad when you finally see it. Well, this is the time to go, then. We can charge into that enemy base. They lost a lot of stuff right there. They shouldn't have too much. We can take down these defenders. And let's go. Now, this place is horrifying. Like, just look at the way that we have to go up here. There's like siege tanks on top of this ridge into this insane choke point. Fortunately, we do have the power of the phoenixes to lift everything. And there's hellbats at the front too, just to stop the zealots. It is a really well-made defensive position. But the phoenix lift is really our crux right now. I'm afraid of these battle cruisers. I don't want a solar lance unless there's multiple pieces. Yeah, look at that. That's like five BCs. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Let's try to finish these off. Because we're actually almost out of... Phoenixes. Yep. I've run out of anti-air here. Oh, no, 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 sir. You don't want to be over there. I am out of money. I am out of anti-air. They have 67 Banshees. Let's uh, retreat everything that we have. 
They can't build anything anymore, so that's good at least. We need to figure out how to deal with these air units. This is going okay. We're just broke. One, two, three. So I think that we can just take our time to win now. Let's get some energizers, get some of these zealots, and we'll get some stalkers and stuff too, so we have anti-air. I do have to be careful because they will pull units from around the map to try to seal these places, and as I said, we can't lose a single one of them, otherwise we don't get the achievements. Yeah, look at that. Good try there, buckaroo. Oh, ow. Good. Lift everything. Just lots of sunlight. And stalkers. Now we're kind of on the A move track. As long as we don't lose all of our phoenixes. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of air units, huh? Let's move away from here. Two battle cruisers with three two upgrades. Uh, Phoenixes are not very good against battle cruisers. There we go. Whew. All right, let's take a drink. That was a good one. We're making it work. We're making it work. You are absolutely correct. There's two missile turrets inside this Terran base. We do not have this achievement yet. That is a really good catch. I got so distracted by the huge amount of air stuff that uh, I would have, I would have not gotten the achievement for killing this base. And we worked hard for this one. It only took our entire army. There we go. Well, let's finish this off. We're going stalkers because they hit everything. We're going to hit this area first, and then we're going to hit the top. We don't need Chrono anymore. We got that achievement. Okay. The lift. That's a lot of Protoss. This mission is kind of... I actually think that it's unreasonably hard. Like, it is way harder than anything that comes before or after it is just this absolute monster spike in difficulty. It's very weird. You would think that the final mission in the story chain would be the hard one. Usually that's how it is. For the rest of the planets it is. But the first one on Olnar is just... It's a lot. Put down the Archon. Lift everyone up. And now we get to play with Artanis and Kerrigan. I'm glad we did that one on the first try. I'm really, really glad. Uh, we got this, we got that. Yes, 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 yes. Ooh, I'm feeling good. <sighs> Don't be afraid, Karax. Oh gosh, we have to do this one. This one actually requires like some decent tacticaling. I'm going to try my best here, but we may have to redo it on a lower difficulty to get the speedrun achievement. So what do we have to do here? We have to do a bunch of damage with Artanis' dash. We have to kill a bunch of things with Kerrigan's Banelings. And we have to beat the mission in less than 12 minutes. I've come this and the 12 minutes on Brutal is... It's a very tight time. It seems the temple has got so... I guess technically we don't have to beat the mission, but we have to beat the final boss in 12 minutes, which sounds weird, but the mission doesn't actually end until this random siege tank after the final boss dies, because there's always a random siege tank after the final boss. Now what I'm going to do is some pretty fancy stuff, because I am going to make some bad decisions in life right now. So I'm going to do some fancy stuff in order to save time in the early game, so that I can hopefully... So I can hopefully be a little bit slower when it gets to the scary end part. 
What I'm going to do tactically is just rely on the fact that the hybrid on this mission and the Zelnaga on this mission are actually not allies. So, for example, right here, instead of killing the hybrid and then going to the construct, we are going to kill the hybrid, or rather, we're just going to pull them over to each other so they get in a battle royale. And then we're going to kind of try to control whichever faction is winning the fight so that we can make things a little bit easier. So that's a nice little time save right there. Now we can lightning dash over, and we can lightning dash back. And we are intentionally standing on this side because there's going to be another hybrid that spawns, and he's going to help me over here. You have my attention. As Kerrigan no runs in circles. So the thing that gets out of control are these little dudes. They uh, they do a lot of damage, and if you can control them, how much do they do? They do eight damage. That doesn't. <laughs> it feels like they do way more than eight damage. I guess there's just so many of them, right? If 10 of them spawn, that's 80 DPS, and that is a lot. So keeping control of them is the most important thing we can do. Let's spawn these guys. Now, every dropship we're going to try to kinetic blast, if at all possible, just so they don't drop things. It's not going to be possible to get all of them, but, you know, whatever. It's important to remember that Artanis does have a Resurrect ability, however, the Resurrect ability requires him to be stunned for a little bit, which means it is a pretty major DPS loss, and I don't want to use it if I can avoid it. Ah, we just used it. That wasn't great. Ah, kill Wrathwalkers. Whoa, whoa! Okay, this is getting bad. Oh, Artanis, don't die. Oh, Artanis died. Yep, okay. Uh, we're we're going to try that again. I didn't kill the dropships fast enough. I just kind of let things pile on top of me. You got to be a little bit quicker here. It's not that hard. I just was not threat assessing properly. If you can have everything dead by the time that the Wrathwalkers spawn, or the Colossus, then you're fine. Oh, the game was crashing there for a second. It's fine. Fate is with us. The shrine still functions. So what happened, as I was saying, Artanis got knocked out. And as a result, he had, like, no DPS, which meant that everything... There was too much stuff remaining. He really needs to be alive so we can get all this damage done. That was a much better shot for him. His charge ability is a stun. And just like it's a damage loss to be stunned, it is a damage loss when they're stunned for them. So it's effectively healing. It's really strong. See, much easier this time because we properly dealt with all of those threats. That's how it's supposed to be. And that means that the Colossus are going to die. I'm going to try to get Kerrigan attacking one of these guys. Artanis doesn't want to tank all of them. He can't quite outheal it. But if Kerrigan is dealing with one of them, it is fine enough. And then we can get him on the shrine. Oh, we already did the shrine. Okay, part two. We're going to kill the prisms, and then we're going to run and snipe the next group of prisms. This is a place that we can save a lot of time if we do it well. It's all about managing the war bins. So these hybrid are here. There's going to be a big battle over here with everyone fighting each other. And once again, we're just going to try to utilize their hostility to each other to our advantage. In order to kill multiple birds in one stone so we can save a little bit of time. But there's a lot of these little dudes now. So, the hybrid over here are the ones that are just getting absolutely annihilated. We have to kill that guy to start the unlocking process on the door. And then all the hybrid are dead. Nice. Now, there is a, like, couple frame window that we can do a really cool snipe on a medevac with a Thor in it. I'm going to hope that we get it. Got it. 
it's a uh, okay it's not a couple frames it's like a quarter of a second that you have but we got it and that's all that matters feeling cool hybrid your queen this is down stun stun so there's going to be a bunch of guys right over here. And we're going to have to AoE them down. Easiest way to do this part is just be like, Oh no, they're so powerful. What are we going to do? Oh. Didn't see the Thor. Alright, I have to be a little bit careful here. I'm going to toss a save down because Artanis' resurgence is on cooldown. I'm gonna try to take down the construct because that starts the unlocking process on the door, and we can get in here. So this part's not that bad. I actually think it's easier than the defense in the first part because the laser beams just like melt through people. But there's like some hybrid and stuff later on that can be pretty spooky. We have Resurgence off of cooldown for Artanis, which is very strong right now. So he can afford to die. Once again, it's a DPS loss, and we are on a speed mission. So dying is not optimal, or ideal, or any of those words, but it is potentially not the end. Because his heal is an AoE, Kerrigan taking damage is nice. Let's patch it off. Explain so I want the fade in to be at about 9.10. That is the ideal time. Not ideal, but like that is nice. So the fact that we are about 13 seconds ahead of where we want to be is fantastic. We're going to drop some of the Banelings and we are going to use my best friend in the entire world, Mr. Laser, to help us out today. He's a great guy. He's, uh, he's very strong. Because why would I kill enemies when Mr. Laser can do it for me? Oh, Artanis, you're not supposed to fall over here, sir. That's the Banelings. We run this way. Uh, they ran a little bit into it. And now we just chill out right here for a bit. And Mr. Laser will kill everybody for us. Thank you. What a good guy. Oh, there's a couple guys chasing after us, but virtually everybody. So we have 12 minutes to kill that boss. 12 minutes total, not from now. Let's get the thing. Yeah, uh, Laser absolutely earns play of the game in this one. He is, if you can get him in the right position, he is ridiculous. So we have one minute to kill everybody in here. Do our best. Our path is clear. This guy is the one that we have to kill for the achievement, Big Red. We must reach the shrine. Our destiny awaits us. For Zeratul, for Aya. Take this down. Here we got 40 seconds. Oh, we don't have a whole lot of DPS. Okay, she's charged up. That's good. We need to make sure that we're not being hit by the siege tank that's in the back. He's really annoying. Don't get stunned. Yeah. Got him. Okay. That's a speed achievement. We didn't get hit by this guy. Okay. That is everything. Do your shrine thing, Artanis. These gods of yours have a lot to answer for. For the most part on all these speed ones, we have not been having a hard time hitting the timings. It's really just other stuff that I've been <laughs> messing up terribly on. Alright, we're about to hit 16 hours. That is uh, two-thirds of the way, right? 8, 16, 24? Yeah. Math. Cool. Cool. Uh, Adept Corsair, Warp in Reinforcements, Solar Lance, and Mass Recall. There we go. Those are some bad abilities. 
The starfighters have arrived, and they await. Uh, definitely Corsair, and where's the adept? So we're never going back to the stalker at this point. But Rohana, do I need to talk to you? You're fine. It doesn't say that I need to talk to you, so you're probably okay. So, for Harbinger of Oblivion, Hamburger of Oblivion, we have to get 15 kills with Storm. And then we have to win the mission before about the 16 minute mark. That's uh, when Kerrigan's third hive dies. This path will meet your forces. Our spirit is in dominance. Theoretically, we could make it shorter if we killed the hive ourselves, but... I like having more time, a lot less. Storms, brothers. Let these so what we're going to do is just try to farm kills with the High Templar right now. Oh, and then the other thing we have to do is kill two of the Void Crystals without Kerrigan, which is going to be real easy. The Storm kills are important, though, so we're trying our best right now to get them, so I don't have to think about it later. If we can get a Storm kill on these guys, it'd be really nice. I'm not sure if we did. We got no Oh, we got like 12 kills there, actually. 12 out of 15. Looking really good. Pretty happy about that. And these guys at the start of the thing get all their energy back, so now we can just go. That is not the achievement we're looking for. There we go. The darkness is approaching my hive cluster, Artanis. That is 15 storm kills. Now what we have to do is build a Corsair, and this Corsair is going to head to the other side of the map, and we're going to Solar Lance this guy a bunch, because we don't actually want to deal with him. And then we're going to utilize Adepts to basically kill everything else, because Adepts are insane. And then we're also going to get the Mass Recall object or, uh, achievement right here because we don't want to use Mass Recall in any other mission if we can avoid it. It is a good day to die. Hmm. Let us honor through. All right, let's get him with the lettuce attack. The sky is my battlefield. I'm just gonna skim right through over here, get shot a little bit by everyone instead of dodging everything. Perfect. I am detecting several energy sources hidden across the temple. They appear uh, to be that's kind of annoying. Vessels, ancient power sources. There we go. We're fine. If we can locate them, I should be able to use their energy to free up additional solarite from the spear of a dune's core. Now all we got to do is make a bunch of adepts. I'm going to save up to 150 energy, and then I'm going to start blasting that top area. And the adepts really can just do whatever they want. We're only going to get a couple activations of the Warpin reinforcements here. We need 25 of them total for the achievement, which is it's going to take a long time to get. Like, far too long. A lot of the second half of this campaign is warping in reinforcements and then laughing at the fact that they are so useless. We're going to have them in a lot of weird positions, like I'm going to spam the ability on the carrier mission, for example, and they're just going to sit at home doing nothing. But right now we can only drop one or two of them because we have to kind of keep the tempo up for this mission. We can't wait because if this hive dies, we don't get the mastery achievement. Okay. Let's see. Get these adepts really soon. The cybernetics core is finishing up. And. Then we can go. Maybe we need like five. I'm not even sure. Okay. So the adept is stupid. It's like. Just a unit. The last of the vessels, Here we go. Oh man, if only they remembered to put now. defenses in the back Just of their base. Wow, oh, I'm so skilled. What an incredible strategy I have devised here. Alright, yeah, we don't want them to do that. Make an Archon, we're fine. And just more adepts because we're going adepting. I'm glad that the storm achievement is like 
so easy. It's 15 storm kills, which honestly, it can be really annoying depending on what you're trying to kill. Obviously, Protoss units are very tough to kill with storm. Hybrid are very tough. But if you can just make sure you get it on the guys at the beginning, it's super easy. And that's nice. Sensors are showing three more remain, Hierarch. Oh, forgot to do the laser. You gotta remember your laser. Oh, I'm welcome to join into the hunt. Thank you, Kerrigan. That's really nice of you to say. I mean, I'm probably gonna wait until you do something useful instead of sending two roaches, a hydralisk, and four zerglings. But thanks for the invitation to this little soiree that you're hosting. It is kind of funny. I wish, I wish AI allies were good. Like, I guess I gotta ask. I like taking people's opinions on stuff like this. Do people like, genuinely like having bad AI allies? Because it happens a lot. And I feel like the feedback they would have gotten was, hey, I wish my ally didn't suck, you know? But then they just do it again and again. It's like, what is this Kerrigan? Thanks for the four Zerglings at a time. Like, I, for the most part, I would prefer to not have an AI ally compared to having a bad one, personally. And, obviously, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. But, like, come on, why they gotta be so bad? So, eventually, Kerrigan is gonna attack, and Kerrigan is actually kind of useful. She will instantly die if you just let her do her own thing, but if you babysit her, she's okay. There we go. Two crystals destroyed. I suspect Amon's forces will not let us take right. the next two so easily. You guys want to see the coolest achievement of all time? It's so good. Oh, hello. Um, sorry, we got stuff to do. So that's why I press the button and everybody dies because uh, of a little combo between Psystorm and the Adept. I'll talk about it in a moment. Oh, we can use Warp and Reinforcements now. Perfect. Oh, wait, no, I messed up. Wasn't supposed to use that yet. So, uh, the way that the Adept Shade works is anybody that it touches takes five extra damage. It's just a flat five extra damage. And the way that Storm works is it hits for eight, ten times. So, no, um, it hits for ten, eight times. It hits for ten, eight times. Which means that it works, and Storm just does 50% bonus damage when you hit someone with Adept Shade and then Storm them. It's ridiculous. It's so good. And that's why everything just instantly died there as soon as I hit the Shade and then the Storm. Because you're doing 120 damage Storms, which is like Brood War level. And Brood War stuff is known as being fair. Now, it's not only for the Adept, it works for everything. It's actually really good with the Destroyer. The Destroyer is kind of a garbage unit. Because all of its beams bounce for one damage and they're reduced by armor down to one half of the damage. However, all the split beams with the Adept get increased to 5, at which point it actually does more DPS than the Void Ray. Like, it's not even close. It's insane if you get the combo going. It's very fun. Okay, Kerrigan, how are you doing? You have quite a bit of time. We have to go do the most impressive achievement of all time. Just set these guys over here. Warriors, intercept them. Let's bring everybody over here, and then, uh, this is probably enough. Now let's just wait for everyone to be here. I don't want to mess up. Incredible. <laughs> the achievement is just, like, recall X number of people. <laughs> so, so we got it. Now we don't have to lose recall anymore. Totally worth it. Is it insta-kill with vanguards? Yes, the plus five damage with vanguards is actually the stupidest thing ever. It turns the best unit in the campaign into the bestestest unit in the campaign. Uh, actually, the Void Ray might be best. But it's still, like, really, really high up there. It's insane. Okay, we got all of these. We got the warp and reinforcements done. We're going to poke this way. 
Uh, we are being attacked at home, which means it is time to end this mission. Because I was not prepared for this. And the Adept Shade is truly a marvel of Protoss engineering. Goodbye, objective. Oh, they killed my Nexus. I can't recall. <laughs> what a tactic. They got me. All right. Harbinger of Oblivion. Done. Now we get to go to the easy mission. Oh, we got the Vanguard, too. The Vanguard is the easy unit. So, speaking of Adept Vanguard, our composition for the next mission is Adept Vanguard Energizer. As it should be. I need to make sure I talk to everybody once at some point. I haven't talked to Phoenix, I don't think. Vanguard, Adept Energizer, uh, Darkon. We definitely don't want the Ascendant. I need Warp and Reinforcements. Okay, we're doing well on that. And then I have the... Did I get the Orbital Strike achievement? I did. So that means I can do Solar Lance. That's good. Makes things a little bit easier. And now we're going to have to get a bunch of progress on Warp and Reinforcements on Endion. I have made a decision. Many of you will not... Okay. Uh, wait. I need to talk to people. Hi? Nope. Phoenix? There we go. I knew I was missing someone. It's our little Robo Bro. Robro. <laughs> He's our Robro Brodics Brit Brit. Robotics Bay. <laughs> He's our Bay. Our Robotics Bay. Okay, there we go. I figured out what I wanted to say. I wasn't sure when I entered the sentence what was gonna come out, but he's our bay. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, why are people here? I'm like delirious. <laughs> okay, so for this mission, what we have to do is one, we have to destroy all the layers on the map before the megalith gets to the fourth of the stasis locks. That is going to be the hardest one. Two, we have to destroy all the buildings on the map before... I don't even know when. It's after the stasis lock thing, though, so it's fine. <laughs> Maybe it's at the same time, I'm not sure. And then three, we have to make sure that all of the roxes are collapsible, like, within 30 seconds of them existing or something like that. Just really fast. So we're just going to solo lance all the rocks. It's fine. The Colossus are not, like, fast killers, but they're they're consistent. They're reliable. Unfortunately, we're working with the nerfed version instead of the... 20 damage Wings of Liberty Colossus. That would be the beast mode. So. We're going to get Vanguards. The way that we're going to do this is it is an escort quest that doesn't care about the HP of the thing that you're escorting. And that is how we are going to manipulate the early stages here. We're basically going to let him escort himself at the beginning. And we're going to, like, watch him. You know when there's, like, a toddler? Or someone who's learning how to ride a bike. I think that might be a good one. Someone who's learning how to ride a bike and you finally, like, let them go. And they're, like, cruising around. And you're just kind of watching them, like, ready to save them at a moment's notice. That's what we're going to do with the Megalith. And hopefully, hopefully he doesn't run into a tree. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, what we're going to do, basically we're delaying the Megalith at the beginning so we can get all of our tech units out. And then we're going to explode forward really quickly because we have to clear the entire map before he gets to the fourth lock. So we're kind of doing like a spring action, if that makes sense. Where we start off really, really slowly. We're doing the compressing action as we delay him. And then we blast out into just destroying everything with Vanguard, Adept, Energizer, Colossus. Which is a uh, composition and a half. It's insane. So what I like to do here is kill the Zerglings on the uh, Megalith. Because the Zerglings do a lot of damage. The Roaches take forever for it to kill. And they don't do very much damage. So it's a great little fight that they have. It's so cool. It's epic. 
We're just cheering from the sidelines, being like, you can do it, Megalith. We believe in you. He's like, oh, thanks, guys. I've been, I've been working really hard on my extended thermal lamp. Oh, my incendiary beam. We're very proud of him. He's not very good at fighting, but someday. We definitely have to get some attack upgrades pretty quick, though. Because the Vanguard shoots, was it, 16 times? Yeah, so, uh... He gets the benefit from attack upgrades 16 times. And we are absolutely going to abuse that. Both from the Adept getting 16 additional sets of 5 damage, which is insane. And then from the attack upgrades giving bonus damage 16 times. It's... <laughs> I don't know who designed it. I don't know who signed off on it. But it's very, very good. Gotta keep him safe. A little friend. Hey, there we go. Let's see, this is three vanguards. I'm gonna get one more after this, and we're gonna grab all this money up here. And now we are on full gateway unit production to supplement all of the tech that we got early on. And it is time to attack fast. We have the benefit of the Energizer. The Energizer is a really cool unit in that it just deploys itself as a pylon and then I get supply blocked. Perfect. Let's just pretend that never happened. Ooh. We're okay. So we got four vanguards. That's probably enough. And their little mortars will kill everything. The mortars do anti-armor damage. So they combo really well with the Colossus that are very good against lighter units. They don't get bonus versus light, but they do just a big area of damage. So kind of works out that way. What we're going to try to do right now is blast through everything over here, and then there is actually a base to the left, and we need to kill this base before the Megalith is, like, in our face. I would advise you to make preparations for no, we cannot lose these vanguards, though. They're really expensive, and they have no defensive capabilities whatsoever. It is the downside for being so egregiously overpowered for all the offensive statistics. Which I will absolutely take. So what we are going to have to do here in a moment is... Probably start saving up for two solar lances that we're going to have to do later. Because what's going to hit us is something annoying. Right up here are these rocks. We have to close the rocks really quickly. The only way we have to close the rocks really quickly is with solar lance. I don't want to use solar lance because I need to be warping in reinforcements. However, I need to get the achievement as well. So it's this like balance between various achievements that I have to get. And unfortunately... It leaves me wishing that I had uh, more time, more energy to just constantly warp in reinforcements and get that darn achievement done. It's an annoying one, and the moment that this achievement is finished is going to be the greatest day in my life. Fortunately, this mission is pretty easy. I, the really important thing is just make sure that I don't miss any of the... I don't miss any of the uh, buildings, because if I miss one building, then congratulations. Ah, we can, we can fit one of these in. Just no more. Sound like an addict. Gateway unit addict. Uh, I don't have very many energizers. That's probably what I'm lacking the most. We're going to make sure that we keep being able to buff these guys. Grab the money on the ridge. Let's see, we do have to kill the tumors. Tumors are buildings. They absolutely count. It's silly, but if we don't get them all, we don't get the achievement. Okay, you're gonna pop out. Perfect. And there's some building up here. Perfect. I think. And now I need to save up all of my resources. I do not want to spend them. Even though it's really tempting to warp in a reinforcement round right now, I just need to constantly save my energy so that I can drop these silly 
solar lances on the rocks. And then we can go back to warping and reinforcements. And then we have one little extra trick up our sleeve at the very end of this mission. But we're not there yet. But it'll be pretty. It'll be cute. We gotta send the Void Ray over here. I wish they were Void Ray, man. Oh, they just fly on over. Oh, the Vanguard hits so hard. So once again, make sure these buildings are dead. I'm not seeing any creep tumors over here. There might be one over there that we'll have to deal with later. Be very, very cognizant about where all the buildings might be. Now we're going to have to start this assault. Here come the rocks. So we go one, two, three. And now we have to wait before we start the second fight, because obviously there's going to be more rocks, and I need to be able to blast them very quickly. So I don't have this off cooldown yet. Once I do, we'll be okay. And we just got to keep building up, because the final base is actually really sketch here. And we have to kill the final base without the Megalith. Is he in here? Oh gosh, he's in there already. Megalith is fast. I don't know who got Megalith like some new Nikes, but like, come on, dude. He's floating. This lock is almost destabilized. The Megalith will Okay, go, go, go. Shortly. And then we go one, two, and let's get a nice little attack on these guardians. So remember that we have to kill all of the layers before the Megalith gets into the final lock. Or, not the final lock, but this lock. This is the second to last lock. That's the achievement. So we just go this way. And then we're just not going to kill this layer. That is my plan. That's my strategy. What's going to happen is now the Megalith is just going to get stuck on it for a really long time. And it is the last thing that we have to kill. We have to kill all the layers, right? So we're using a delayer layer. And hopefully, hopefully it takes him so long to kill the Delayer layer that we can kill everybody in these bases. And it'll work <laughs> really well. Might not. I'm out of money. Oh, I got auto gas. Wow, that takes a long time to get that achievement. So now we have to just get on and make sure that we are not messing up any bad... Messing up any bad, oh man. The English language was once something that I had a little bit of control over. No longer is this the case. I think I have to use another solar lance. Yeah, we're gonna do one, two, three. Oh, that was a lucky shot, wasn't it? So we have to kill these layers before the Megalith manages to kill this layer, but he's very slow, and we're very fast. So I think we'll be okay. I lost a warp in reinforcements here. And I also messed one up, I think. I think I got three guys with this warp in reinforcements instead of four. And I actually lied about the way this works. You don't have to get four, or you don't have to use warp in reinforcements 25 times. You have to warp in 100 units. So I... I may have made a mistake, and I'm too afraid to check. So I'm gonna pretend that it's okay. And this guy is just gonna keep attacking this for a little bit. Okay. Oh, we gotta... Kill that. We're gonna go check over here, and we can send this guy to check over here for more structures. If we did it right, we should get both achievements right here for killing all structures on the map. And if we didn't do it right, then we're going to panic. I think that's it. I'm not seeing any more. Oh, these. Okay, we got those. 
this is fine. Oh, is this still creepy? This might still be creepy. Nope, this creep is gone. This creep is gone. This is gone, this is gone. Okay, we're gonna save and we're gonna hope. Please be it. That's Brood War. There we go, we got him. Both of them. Okay. So, we have to move to Purification next. Purification is gonna be a heck of a mission. It's uh, not an easy one. And we're gonna have to get some Deploy Phoenix achievement progress too. In fact, we have to just finish Deploy Phoenix. Oh, time to kill Steel from the Megalith. Uh, he's got 17 entire kills. That's pretty cool. I mean, compared to the 93 the Colossus has, he's doing his best. 94, 88, 59, 48. Man, they're so good. Zero? Wait. Zero? I built all four of these at the beginning of the mission, right? And they were all fighting the entire time? And this guy somehow got zero kills? Despite being a vanguard with plus two attack? Lock destabilization is what? Finished. The megalith will disembark soon. <laughs> How did that possibly happen? These guys were all built and started fighting at the same time as him. 40 kills, 48 kills, 59 kills. That is a almost 150 kills between them. And then this guy somehow got zero. I'm so confused. Is he a pacifist? Is he a changeling? <laughs> what a wild thing to discover. Okay, the only thing I can hope that happens right here is that we somehow generate enough energy to get one more. The optimal vanguard count is three. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Now your kill count will be forever zero. Loser. I can't believe that he just betrayed the Daylom like that. Like, you don't do that. You don't betray the Daylom. All right, guys, what do you think? Are we going to get 15 energy in the amount of time that it takes the Megalith to get up here? I'm really hoping. I want this warp in reinforcements. One more. It's, oh yeah, I think we're going to get it. I think we're going to be okay. Here we go. Man, I really wish that this was not an exciting part of the run for me. It was just pressing this stupid warp and reinforcements button every once in a while. <laughs> but we have to do what we have to do. <laughs> uh... Okay. Purification is... I think that in base heart of... Oh, gosh. Blueberries just went everywhere. I'm an idiot. Okay. I have a solution to that. So, I think that purification in the base campaign is one of the hardest missions. Like, straight up. I don't know if you guys agree with that. It can be really, really, really punishing. So, we need to go to the solar core. Grab this bad boy and see what we can do. We don't need warp and reinforcements. We just cannot justify it because we have to get Phoenix. Solar Lance to live. Starting supply, orbital assimilator. We're going to be doing DT stuff again at the beginning and the middle and the end. I apologize. It's Legacy of the Void. What are you going to do? Get the Fire Colossus. We're never going to use it. Get the Havoc. Er, we don't need the Havoc. We need the energy. Hey! What's up, big boy? How you doing? Okay. So we have to activate two purifier forces within 60 seconds of each other. That part's not that hard. We just have to remember to do it. The mastery is the confusing part. So basically, uh, how do I even begin to explain this stupid mission? Oh gosh, there's like a hair on the blueberry because I dropped it we should try to locate the onto my desk that had a hair delicious mm. okay 
So what we have to do is within, I believe it's 15 minutes, we have to destroy five hybrid dominators. The way that the mission works is that there's four sets of three null circuits. And whenever you activate three of them, a giant wave of purifiers come and attack one of the quadrants of the map, the top right, bottom left, etc., etc. Now, what happens is that in each of those quadrants, a hybrid behemoth is stationed. And then at the, I think it's 13 minute mark, a hybrid behemoth will attack you. And that's the fifth one. So what you have to do is for three of the quadrants, you have to activate the purifiers, get them to attack through, and kill all the hybrid behemoths in the area, the, the one hybrid behemoth. Then you have to defend against the guy that comes here, so that's four of them. But you can't have the purifiers go to the final location because the mission would end if you unlock that. So instead, you have to manually go into the Uber death base and assassinate the guy. That is what we have to do. So we're going to work on activating three of the sets of the locks really, really quickly, which are going to be this one, the ones up here, and then the ones down here. And that's going to limit things. It's, it's just a mess. This entire achievement is a complete mess, but it'll be okay. We'll get it. We need a lot of DTs first. And Solar Lance. So that's the only way that we're going to get through this really quickly. A Zerg force is preparing to move on it's, a, it's a really complicated mastery achievement that just... The game does not explain well how it works. And it took a lot of learning from my side to figure out what the heck was going on. Now, we have a really, really powerful tool to assassinate this hybrid. And he's going to be our secret weapon. Okay, Vanguard. You will not touch my van. So I apologize if the description that I gave there doesn't really make that much sense, because, as I said, it's a very tough mission, conceptually. And you kind of just have to watch it. I'll try to explain as I go. Probably need like five or so DTs before we really start doing anything. Okay, jeez, come on, Carax. You gotta leave me alone for a little bit, dude. I'm trying my best. You've never even done anything, Carax. You don't fight yet. And when you do fight, all you do is mass carriers, bro. Is that my decision when I'm controlling you? Yeah, absolutely, but you only mass carriers, bro. Okay, detect a purifier. Beginning on its own. Something is amiss. The AI has gone rogue. Its solarite memory lattice has grown irreversibly unstable. Alright, go beat some stuff up, Phoenix. So, for the Phoenix achievement, we have to get Phoenix to do 5,000 damage, and... Uh, I mean... He's just gonna go punch things. <laughs> we have no control over him. He does what he does. Yep. He's punching people. He's, he's not a sophisticated man. <laughs> or maybe he's just more sophisticated than me, so I don't get it. I like to believe that one. So 5,000 damage is a lot. We're going to have to use them multiple times here. Grab this. Hello, Overseer. It's kind of awkward just chilling here with you. They have begun guarding the null circuits. Are you not going to fight Baneling? Okay. Why not? I mean, if they don't want to fight, they don't want to fight. So first of all, what we're going to try to do is get the objective that is cure, or clear two of the sets of null circuits within 60 seconds of each other. That is going to be a pretty easy one. We're going to swing over here, take this down, swing up here, take this one down. That'll be two of the sets. And that achievement will just be out of the way. The well, we got solar lamps for that. To break and then we're going to do the bonus objective because we have to grab Mr. Mr. Sad Purifier. The with his corrupted memory lattice or whatever. 
Uh, yeah. All the rest of those are easy. One. Now we have 60 seconds, so we have to do it by 8.30, which shouldn't be too bad. That's a decent amount of time. Go, go, go. So this is, uh, once we do three of the locks, it spawns all of these guys, and we'll watch them in a moment so I can show off what they do. Okay, we have about 30 seconds. Oh gosh, uh, let's chill here. There we go. So that is two within 60 seconds. Easy peasy. These guys out of here. So as you can see, they're going on the warpath to the bottom left of the map. And inside of that is going to be a base with one of the five hybrid behemoths that has to die. We don't have to kill it, it just has to be dead. So purifiers will do it for us. Then this guy is just going to run away in circles. He doesn't have detection for whatever reason. I don't know, they just forgot to give detection to a lot of things in Legacy of the Void. These? So inside of here, this is the hybrid behemoth. That is one out of four. Now, these guys are going to do the same thing and kill two out of four. And then we're going to hit the bottom. And the bottom right is going to be three out of four. And then top right, we're going to have to destroy by ourselves. And then one is going to attack us. That's fine. Maybe. Uh, I'm about to get glooped. Got glooped. Stop looping me. There we go. They stopped glooping us. We're not going to take any of these bases or anything. Like, they're really out of the way and they're super easy to die and the creep takes forever to recede. I don't know. I think they're really bad. Okay, we're going to head this way. And hopefully Phoenix is racking up his damage right now. Oh, did you see that dodge? Almost everybody dodged that fungal growth. That was pretty cool. I'm really happy with that one. All right, it's down. The last grouping of null circuits is located here. And then there's going to be another infester, and this is going to send the purifiers down to the bottom right. So all we have to worry about is the top right now. Everywhere else is dealt with. It's clean. I mean, there might be an attack wave, like, right over here. Oh, the other objective that we have to do is not take any shield... Or, not take any hull damage onto the Purifier Core Matrix. So I'm trying to be very careful with my movements. I don't want to be caught off guard. Oh, that's a little bit spooky. Oh, wait. We have Dark Templar. Never mind. There we go. So... The way that we're going to deal with diving into the enemy base and killing the one hybrid behemoth that we have to actually physically fight is going to be uh, being a little bit cheesy because that's all that I do in my life. This is just 24 hours of me being cheesy. Let's, let's just be completely honest here. There is no integrity in the way that I play. So we're going to head on over. Get a shade. I would advise against attacking this hive cluster with our forces, Hierarch. And then, this where I the here you are. Boop. <laughs> Enjoy a phoenix. We Good luck, sir. No it will help us hey, we got the phoenix objective, and the hybrid are moving to strike the core matrix. We must tighten you got it. Defenses. There's Monster Hunter. So that is all five of the hybrid behemoths. I will comply. He is. The phoenix uh, on his top drop down bar thing, this one, he's actually immortal. He literally cannot die. He just instantly, forever, fully recharges his shields. It's uh, kind of silly. Uh, we can we can get a couple warping pylons here as we are clearing the remainder of this. A little bit of quest progress never hurt anybody. Or achievement progress. 
Now, what I'm going to do real quick here is there's only one left, so I'm just going to chill out for a little bit, get this extra warp in pylon deployment. Oh. 18 seconds, and then we'll be able to move on. Yeah, this is a very technical mission, and it seems really simple when you just do it and <laughs> you've figured out all the technical parts, but it's kind of hard to explain how figuring it out is the hard part. There we go. Mission done. That's it. Seals are fully unlocked. Yeah, the Phoenix cooldown is insane. It's ridiculously powerful, but it costs 100 Solarite, making it the most expensive non-ultimate in the entire game. So, you're paying for it. Okay, now we're going to do the carrier mission. So we need to get orbital gas, warp and reinforcements, and repair beam. This is where we're going to get the repair beam achievement. Got orbital gas. Uh, I don't like being without solar lance, but it is it is what it is. Get some starting supply, get some shield recharge, and I think this is good. Welcome back. Do we have to get anything here? No. Our army, I don't the care. Mirages are garbage. They're cool, but they're bad. Raven Scar. Let's do this. I think I'm having a little bit of a second wind, which is good. Because I think I asked for my second wind about eight hours ago. <laughs> so, you know, better late than never. This mission is going to be very silly. So what we have to do is we have to get like a million kills with carriers. That's one of the objectives. The other one is to only move the tablet four times. The tablet? Whatever this is called. The platform. Only move the platform four times. And then the final one is to just pick up a bunch of money around the map. The objectives are actually super, super easy. And as a result, I'm using this as a way to get a lot of progress on warp and reinforcements. Which means that we're going to end up with, like, a ton of ground units just chilling on this mission for really no good reason. They're just going to live their, their best life on the platform. And don't go ground units on this mission, it's bad, but... It's the only place that I could fit it in, and this mission's really easy. It's just slow. So we have a lot of time to warp in all these little dudes. Excuse me. Victory awaits. May I be of service? I and then the carriers, we have the repair beam upgrades, so we're going to get progress on repair beam. It should finish. The only way that it doesn't finish is if I take, like, no hole damage, and if I take no hole damage, then I'm the greatest micro god in the world, and... That's not the case. My micro is not bad, but I'm definitely... I'm no Maru. We have to be very careful here, though. Because we don't have Guardian Shell or anything. Those abilities that actually keep you alive. We do have... Uh... Oh, I, I wonder if we only got credit for three right there. That would be really sad. Because one of them died before they finished warp again. Well, if it happens, it happens. We have no control over it at this point. I don't like this achievement. These guys over here. And we're good. So now our boy has the ability to move the things. And we're just going to rally all the probes. So... This is actually really sad to me, because there is a really fun easter egg on this mission, that is if you input the Konami code, which is up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, start. Well, that's not the exact Konami code, but close enough on this mission. It uh, summons an easter egg Torin Marine with a uh, 10 armor and a really good gun, and he's just fun. However, unfortunately the mastery achievement is that we can only move four times which means we are not allowed to do it. We are 
Like, we just, we cannot get the mastery achievements if we do the fun Easter egg. And I think that's bad design. <laughs> like, objectively, I generally think when it comes to game design, there's a lot of, like, you know, oh, this is okay, this is interesting, or I understand why you had to make this, it was a hard choice. No, this one's bad. Don't put a really cool Easter egg in and then tell me I can't use it. That's, that's awful. How dare you? I don't know why I'm blaming you specifically. You had nothing to do with this. These guys are doing nothing. These warp and reinforcements are really trying to help the fight, but they just... They're not useful. They do pick up this money, though, without having to move the platform, which is just a little thing they do. A little bit of help. Pull this back, pull this back. And remember, hey, there we go. So repair beam, done. Never have to think about that again. And then grab all these and we have to get, it's like 40 or something different pickups we have to grab, maybe more, maybe less. You guys can actually see the number on the screen. So I don't know why I'm trying to tell you what it is when I have no idea and I don't care. We just go until we get them, right? It makes production easier anyway. So the plan is we're gonna blast this area down. Uh, maybe we go over here first. I'm a little bit concerned that we're gonna get blasted at this bonus objective. It's actually pretty tough. But we're in the neighborhood, so we might as well give it the old college try. My scan show two chambers nearby. They appear to run on Solarite. We could use uh, it more than ever. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, these Vikings hurt a lot. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Hey, that actually went okay. We lost one carrier, which is a lot of carrier. But it we definitely could have lost a lot more there. And those guys are now going to live on that island. <laughs> because I am a terrible banager. <laughs> Goodbye, people. Enjoy your home. So, I'm kind of coming back home. I'm just assuming that we're going to get attacked really soon. So I'm going to defend against the attack, then come over here, drop a deploy pylon after clearing it, grab all the money. And then we're going up, right, down. And that's going to be our four movements that we are allowed for the mastery achievement. And that has a nice little base to mine from. It's also pretty safe. Done. Let's go. We need a lot of carriers to actually finish this mission. Most of the other fights are really easy. But there is the final fight. And the final fight has just like infinity guys. So we have to be careful. And theoretically, you can, like, try to target fire the objective, but usually that's when you have good Spear of Adun abilities. And all of my Spear of Adun abilities are really bad. So. I guess we have Orbital Strike, which is okay. It's just Solar Lance at home. Hey, there we go. So that is achievement number two. Now, that is it for the actual achievements on this mission. Now we just have to actually beat the mission and get all the bonuses and stuff. Now oh, those are out. I love how this strategy just ends up with a bunch of stupid people everywhere on the map. Uh, let's go start clearing. You guys can rally on over here. We'll open this up so that I can actually start mining. Platform up. It's all about gas. And by that I mean I'm just broke. So that's two. This is movement number three. And then we will use our fourth in just a moment. Careful with the Vikings. That's a carrier kill achievement. There we go. I forgot about that one, actually. Now we're done with achievements. 
on this mission. Carriers just feel good to micro because they don't die very fast. The power core is destroyed. Mobius core energy reserves dropping to 66%. Excellent. Oh, 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 hello. Um. <laughs> never mind. Thought I was supposed to be afraid for a moment. And then I saw who the perpetrator was. Johnny Raythington. This man has been Raythin for 300 years. Alright, we're gonna get the bonus down here, then we're gonna move up, grab the power cell, and just keep warping and reinforcements as we go. I'm gonna check my warp and reinforcements progress real quick. That is a pretty important part about what's going on. Oh, we're not even close. Ah. Oh. That's unfortunate. That made me kind of depressed. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm gonna get more warp and reinforcements. I just need to figure out where to slot it in all these missions. You just have to cast it for most of the campaign. We'll figure it out. I do have like a super emergency backup strategy with it where we get 75 energy and then save the game and then just reload the game over and over <laughs> until we have it. It's dumb, but it will work. However, it's slow. That's the problem is we're not making any progress as we're doing it. So for example, in this mission, we're not wasting time doing warp and reinforcements because we are actually making progress as we are using warp and reinforcements. The cheese strat is worse than not doing it in a lot of ways. Let's see. Just grab the money over here. We should be ready to finish things off very soon. I kind of want to just defend and attack first, though. I don't feel super good about the idea of this base because we can't run the base away. There we go. That's the type of thing we're looking for. Yeah, because the base doesn't have the ability to move anymore, otherwise we'll lose the objective. Good. Or we have to be safe. Okay. I apologize, by the way, that a lot of these fights are like me not even looking at the enemy because the carrier fleet is really big and I have to be able to pull things backwards properly. So it is correct from my perspective to do that. I understand it's not visually that interesting to look at because it's just red HP carriers being pulled back. But right now... I'm trying my best to not mess up on a mission that could take a long time if you mess up. What's that guy? The greatest one-liner in the history of cinema. Take him down. The platform's power grid is nearly offline. Now we're gonna try to win. There is only one more core. Well done, Carax. The attacks on the ship have Theoretically, if we're getting eliminated, we could just warp in reinforcements like everywhere. <laughs> okay, so we're going to Slain next, and the first Slain mission is gonna be weird. Like, it's gonna be one of the weirdest missions that we've done. It's cool, though. I like the strategy. Interceptors out. I want to try to keep these interceptors out if I can and just constantly attack stuff as we move. So what I'm doing here is I'm alternating between attack commands and move commands and that means as long as there's stuff in range for the most part the interceptors will just keep attacking various things as we move forward. Clearing out the enemies, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to target this. Good. Yeah, no problem. Yes, I believe I have. It is no matter. We will not be deterred. Okay. So that is. We got five more missions in Legacy of the Void. I guess there is. <laughs> there's a stupid epilogue. Everybody loves the epilogue. 
Oh, this is the wrong button. Here we go. Solar Corp. You, let's check my list of things that I need here. Warp and reinforcements is okay. Guardian shell, shield overcharge. Wait. Time stop. Reinforcements auto get. Oh, yeah. And get rid of those. That's how we get time stop. Time stop is a completely fair ability, and unfortunately, we can't use it on every mission because we have to get the Spear of Adun achievements for the other ones. Uh, Tempest. Tempest is my preference. I'm the only person that likes the Tempest, but it's very good on this mission. I will say. The worst part currently, 17 hours in, is that my butt is very sore. <laughs> it's, uh, not comfortable. Let's go. So what we're going to do is spam warp and reinforcements once again, because we just got to do it. Go, go, go. One, two... That's gas, and then we're going to grab a fleet beacon really quickly. So, the three things that we have to do here is, one, we have to beat the mission without killing any Taldorim units. Two, we have to beat the mission including killing the Taldorim motherships, which are Taldorim units, because that's how... Uh, because there's a meta achievement to get all the bonuses and stuff, so... You know, there's a little bit of a conflict right there. But we have an answer. And then two, we have to destroy one of the things during the fog. And three, we have to win before the third fog. So we're going to be able to do all of those with a branching little save. It'll go okay. This is why we have the Tempest. It's uh, going to allow us to do things that would be otherwise a little bit unnatural. Not sure why I phrased it like that. Yes. We're just gonna shoot things from a really long distance. <laughs> I forgot to get my gas. Get I don't really need this gas, that. but might as well get it. Okay. How am I feeling about the 24 hour time limit? Pretty good right now, actually. I uh I don't have benchmarks, so I actually in my practice, or when I was designing the document and stuff, I had a whole bunch of like timestamps for how far I was supposed to be at what time, and then I ended up just deleting them all because I didn't want to know. <laughs> like I just figured I would do my I would do my darndest, and hopefully that would be enough. Like a good little boy scout, and so I don't really know how I'm doing pacing wise. I do know that I want to be done with Legacy of the Void at the 20 hour mark, and we have. Five or we want uh, done with Legacy of the Void, not the epilogue, just salvation, and that means that we have three hours to do five missions, which is yeah, that's pretty good. That's a lot of time. I don't know how Nova Covert Ops is gonna go though, because that campaign is like legitimately hard at times. <laughs> There's some crazy things that can happen, and the achievements are not easy. Alright. This guy's gonna go up here. We need to get is we, we need four Tempests. Is it four? Four Tempests into voids. Yeah, here we go. How exciting. So this guy is gonna go up here. And then we're going to start disintegrating this first objective. Have you come to bear I've come to disintegrate your face, bro. Not to bear witness to the end. Then we just keep on warping in reinforcements, because I, I love reinforcements. I was able to scan the Taldorim motherships in this region. So we're not going to use the time stop ability just yet. Not ready for it. Liberated them. We're actually going to hold on to it for quite a long time. So these guys do not count as Taldorim, obviously, because they're the objective. And if the objective was to kill these without killing a Taldorim and they were Taldorim, that would be very silly. 
So we're fine on that count. You guys are going to move down. We're not going to kill this until the fog arrives because we have to kill one of them during the fog. That is the easiest part to forget. I'm going to save because I'm feeling pretty good about this position. There we go. Need lots of void rays. So there's bonus objectives over there. We can't get them yet. Wish we could. Like them. You guys hold. You guys kind of skirt the bottom. Try not to take damage. The really scary thing is Tempests have a very long range. And if they start shooting someone and kill it, then we don't get the achievement for being a pacifist. So I gotta be careful. Start disintegrating. This guy. So the re one of the reasons that we have to end this very soon is uh, at the beginning of, or rather at the end of the next fog, we get attacked by a big Protoss wave. And we are not allowed to kill anything in it by the objective. So we have to like have a base race. <laughs> we just have to have a setup that's ready to win at that point. It's silly. It's difficult. But we'll do it. Gonna send these guys up on their adventure. These guys over here and try to get some more warp and reinforcements done. I sure love these reinforcements. There, disintegrate. That'll be done. Still have not killed anything. Perfect. Oh, whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. That is the achievement for taking out an enemy inside of, or during the mist. Use the Adept Shade to increase the damage taken by the targets. There's a lot of siege up tanks over there, huh? Take extra damage, but they still hurt. Uh, ground units are gonna die, it's fine. It just means we're getting free pylons. We have these. Oh, there's a lot to manage right here. 34 seconds to survive. So first we're going to have to do the pacifist achievements. And I think that's going to be okay. Almost ready for it. Oh, I got some of these guys over here. Completely forgot about that. That's gone. Because we got two of them. Uh, the painlings are in the base. Yeah, this is, this is okay. Now we save. So, pacifist first. We're gonna move to attack. Move to attack. When the first person gets shot, we time stop. Deactivate, disintegrate. And then we have these queued to leave if they can. I saved, right? Really hope I did. Uh, one sec, let me check my save. Yeah, 10 wait, we're fine. This is perfect. Then, these are shift queued to leave. What? Oh. Oh, no. Uh, for the pacifist thing, we're going to charge these guys in, and we're going to see exactly what we can do. That was... Did... Ah, oh, disintegrate may have not fired. Oh, there's just a million carriers here, too. That's part of the problem. Oh, we didn't even get close. Okay, I need to babysit that more. Um, We can do this. We can do this. It's... Yeah, I didn't... Dis I think I clicked Disintegrate, and then I unclicked it, and you could see it had 480-something, so the 500-point Disintegrate would have absolutely gotten it. Just a little bit of a mistake right there. Easy, easy fix. Just got to press button good. 
I don't think this is the save I wanted, game. <laughs> Everybody is dead. The Taldorim made that save for me. Uh, Malash is like, all right, we're going to get him with this one. Why did I turn off Disintegrate? I just accidentally, I clicked the ability, and then I just clicked to attack it instead of keeping the command on. Go, go, and make sure Disintegrate is queued. Disintegrate is queued. Oh, that activated Guardian Shell. I'm not happy about that. I still think we're going to be okay. So this is the pacifist one. It's the scarier of the two. Give me credit. Here, just shoot him. I don't care. I just need to make sure I don't kill anybody. We absolutely disintegrated him at the end. Game? Are you serious? What's happening? That was weird. Could have sworn that we killed this with a disintegrate. It's got six HP? Okay. All right, that is... Oh, wait, did we... Did we get the mastery? No, we didn't get the mastery. Wait. I'm so confused. Wait, wait, wait. Destroy, kill one. Why didn't we get it? Why didn't we get it? Did... Oh, no. That was really weird. Um... We gotta... We gotta load up the save. Yeah, I think the attack wave came. Like, weird stuff happened, the attack wave came, and it, uh, killed someone at the very last second. So, we can... Oh, this is one that I did not expect to be a little... Oh, actually, I did expect this one to be a little bit weird. It's a very simple thing that we have to do. We just have to make sure... I can't believe 6 HP. That was very odd, because I could have sworn that, that Disintegrate would have gotten it. At far less than 500, but it just was weird. Okay, you guys up here. You guys over here. I'm gonna do shields first. Let's see if that makes it a little bit cleaner. Uh, I was just trying to get the super soaker achievement, don't worry. Ships are heading towards our nexus. Oh, this guy's. Bring them down. This guy is just getting smoked. No, we fire. I definitely got the 500 damage disintegrate on that. It should just die. Like, I know basic math. Please destroy it. I'm a little concerned that what's happening is like there's weird dialogue stuff and for some reason it's not dying during the dialogue like it's supposed to. Because it, it most definitely, I've checked and it had less than 500 and things are being weird and I've never seen something like that before. We just need to let them do their thing over here. Yeah, look at that. It's just, for some reason, Disintegrate is not winning the mission on the final. Okay. We're almost there. We're almost there. Now what we have to do is just the same exact thing. Except for kill the Taldor and motherships at the same time. This has been a weird one. Things have been very, very sketch, you know? So, did not expect this to be such a big stop mission. I mean, this is a tough one. These, this is one of the more convoluted mastery achievements, straight up, because it requires you to play in such a different way. Valor, we have full power. Salute, we 
Alright, you. You. Time stop. Taldarim ships are heading towards our nexus, Hierarch. Bring them down. And this time, I don't care if we accidentally kill random stuff. We can just go full force. Okay, T mothership down, mothership down. You guys do what you gotta do. Only one remains. You should have everything now, Facemate. Thank you, Hierarch. I shudder to think of Did it, uh, did it break again? I hope not. It's gonna be really sad. Uh, let's make an adept. <laughs> yeah. All right. So it definitely there's no 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 actually. Let's get corsairs. So we got the don't kill anything achievement. We can just get these guys over there. Hit it with a uh, orbital strike. What a weird little uh, quirk, where disintegrate cannot actually finish this mission. For whatever reason. Like, we very reliably have proven this at this point. However, we can just walk to the end with this, fire a couple orbital strikes, and that should win. You think it's a vision thing? Hmm. Might be. Oh no. <laughs> Game! Just let me win. Oh my goodness. Uh, I have to not get a limit. Hey, we got warping reinforcements. There we go. That's the achievement we were looking for. I just have to tap this once. That's it. Don't eliminate me. Literally everyone just charge for one tap. Are they gonna... They're gonna get stuck there. Perfect. It's going to be at, like, 2 HP. This is so silly. Yep, 6 HP again. So you need vision for that final tick. Ridiculous. And that is everything. And now we have all the solarite from it from the bonus objective. <laughs> Let's keep it up. So, uh, we're gonna go for the big guns on this one. This is a pretty complicated one. Let me just check. Talk to everybody for achievement. It's good to see. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. Uh, and then... I didn't get an achievement, so I assume that we need a Larak. Game? I will make the Taldor... How uh, the I'm going to choose to believe that I have the achievement already then. That may have been like a last, a last ditch one. Uh, sure. So for this, we need solar bombardment, we need the mothership, and I would like to have... Do I replace... Uh... Matrix Overload with Solar Lance. Yeah. That seems good. Because I have this achievement now. So we don't need to think about it. Mothership. We need Mothership, Energizer, Adept. You're not a Mothership. Get out of here. There we go. Got the Rohana one. So, for this one, what we have to do is destroy all the Nexi on the map, and then... Oh, what is the other one? Uh, the one that's really, really bad is that we have to not let Alarak get pushed back at all, a single space, and the feedback mechanism for it is not very good. So, it's really hard to tell whether you failed or not. So, I'm going to be really, really, really... Really rigid with the way that I'm playing this, so that there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Zero question on whether he has been pushed back. Because this is one of those things that could absolutely catastrophically fail. And you get through the entire mission, you realize that he's been pushed back like a quarter of an inch. Use trigger break? We can't. 
uh, because I have to get the achievements for Solar Bombardment and Purifier Beam, which are require being used. And in order to trigger bake, you have to remove your uh, ultimate abilities and Solar Lance from the top bar, right? So we can't actually trigger break in this run. Closest we can get is uh, using the Time Stop ultimate. Can chat inform me? Um, I've tried to have chat inform me before, and it does not work. <laughs> there are many qualified people in chat. That doesn't mean that all of chat is qualified. <laughs> and people get confused. Like, it just very legitimately confused. Not like maliciously or stupidly. It's just... The feedback mechanism is not good. That is not their fault. So instead, I'm just going to park a bunch of stuff over there, and we are going to rush for a Taldorim Mothership. And the Taldorim Mothership is literally just going to sit right here and be an unmovable bastion as we go do the rest of the mission. It seems really silly, but it just works. Because the Taldorim Mothership is basically unkillable. And that's what we're looking for. Unfortunately, it does mean that we have to rush for a Taldorim Mothership off one base. Which is like... Not good. <laughs> it's very slow. We're gonna get a guy over here. And then we're gonna get one more guy because I always have to have my supply even. Odd supply would just be odd. Oh, my depth died. Sucks. Miss you, buddy. All right, I have to be very careful with this guy. He's gonna, he's gonna be going on a great journey. Unfortunately, that great journey is one that he can get killed on very quickly because of these bonus objectives. Okay, he got around it. Doing great. I think it's best if we don't inform Alarak of this little diversion. Gonna forge, and we're gonna get some gateways. So my plan here is that we have to deal uh, with all the Nexi on the map, all the Nexuses. And I might as well get progress on the deal infinity billion damage with Solar Bombardment at the same time. So I'm just going to Solar Bombardment the Nexuses. It's an incredibly complicated scheme. It took great minds many years to come up with this one. It is almost as good as my strategy of Void Ray. Alright, so the Corsair... Oh! <laughs> Did not mean to de-web them, but whatever. We just get out of there. Nexus 1 is done. Oh, no! Ah, oh, this is the thing that I was scared of, is these bonus objectives. <laughs> Uh, my bad. Well, we have five minutes before we have to build a new one. Yeah, no. You're not attacking us directly, sir. This whole area is just going to be ridiculously well fortified, so I can actually deal with the other stuff. Plus, we have a lot more minerals than we have gas. Hybrid force, not bad. We have the mothership in production, so we can start getting attack upgrades. Join our struggle. Fight well, warriors, and you will also ascend into hybrid. Just take that extra five damage. It is almost admirable. And we're good. We need more shield batteries. Everything is more batter. Oh, we're stuck. Well, we got this guy. And we can start getting some gateways, because we're going to need some adepts. This is such a weird build order, but, I mean, this is a weird mission, so... I kind of like it. You just build everything in the middle of the map. Yeah, why not? It, it fits. So we probably need about 20 adepts before we actually go and blast things. We got one. That's a good start. 
We just need to do this uh, 20 more times. Uh, and then when this is done, we need to grab another Corsair so we can keep sniping all of the Nexuses. Because they're in some really inconvenient locations. And I'm... I guess we can get more Warp and Pylon credit right now. Given that I'm maxed out on energy and I need to do something with it. I think that... We're done. We got it. Ah! Leave Probius alone. Got him. We probably need one more gate. I don't know, five gate adept seems more sensible than four gate adept. Okay. Keep it going. And yeah, the mothership can basically just sit here on hold position and with all the shield batteries on top of it, completely unkillable. So Alarak is fine. Where is Corsair? Here he is. So now we're going to have to do the little dodge maneuver to get past all the stuff once again. Ow, 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 ow. Nope, nope, nope. It's all fine. No! Uh. Save him. Oh, gosh, a cannon. No, ah, Tempest! No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Did he make it? Yeah, he made it. He did it. He got all the way over here. Nexus, got it. Cool. Easy. <laughs> what a wild ride that man just went on. <laughs> we got the achievement. Nice. Uh... Enjoy your black hole. <laughs> it is not a good day for you to die, sir. We have to keep you alive. You're too important to the cause. Alright, I think we can take down this first bonus objective now. And we're going to be heading towards the end of the mission pretty soon. Hopefully. This mission can be pretty suspect if you go too long, so... Going fast is ideal. I don't have much gas, though. So what we're doing is keeping a couple of depths in the back to just hit the little egg things. And then the rest of the adepts just attack. Slain elemental. He's not slain yet. But he will be. Nice scouts. <laughs> Mothership just one-shots it. Well done, warriors. The first beast has been slain. All right, two more. The Adept is so nice because we can just circumvent a lot of the defenses, making this significantly smoother. Feeling good again? Gonna drop another pylon. Let me just take these down. We do want to hold up enough energy for a Solar Lance, at least. And not get too blasted. This is gonna be easy. And then, I think they're going to attack us from the right-hand side soon. So we got to keep that in mind. Watch, there's going to be like an attack wave right here. Ha! I knew it. It's just been that kind of day, you know? Like, every time I say it, it keeps happening. So I'm just betting on that being the case now. Bonus. Head on home. Now I have all of them. Perfect. My preliminary scans indicate that the solarite deposits are a byproduct of the beast's unusual digestion. And then we can start blasting the rest of this. Wait. Never mind. I do not wish to know. Here we go. Time to push. Now we got sheer determination, which is like support Alarak with a bunch of people. We can flush these guys down the toilet. Uh, yeah, let's just hit 
this with everything we got. Kind of took a lot of damage right there. But we're still looking pretty good. Got the mothership. We got a lot of adepts. And we can just keep crowd controlling everything. And Alarak is just not allowed to be pushed backwards by anything. We do have the shield regeneration that Alarak gives, which means that the pushing is a little bit easier. And we have not finished off all the nexuses yet. That is the one thing we have to just keep in mind. There's one more in the base. We can do that, though. Shield of a Shark seems fine. We have been one basing for 16 minutes and it feels bad. Uh, particularly because the base was just right there, but we can't reliably get it. Our confrontation draws to a close, Malash. Soon everyone will know the depth of your treachery. I'm going to see if I can get the funny voice line stacking. There's a thing that I've seen happen once, and I really want it to happen again. <sighs> but I'm not sure if it's going to work. So we need to target that. Go down, keep it going. Do not let him be pushed backwards at all. All these down. Then get them in. Flawless victory. There we go. Wait, why didn't we get the... Weird. Okay, so one time when I was doing this, there is a back and forth sometimes. there may, It may have been earlier, but there was a back and forth that goes... uh. Uh, what is it? Oh, you will lead our, our... Malash is like, you will lead our people to ruin Alarak. And then Alarak responds, you are, are, you're right about one thing. I will lead them. And uh, if you do it fast enough, and that voice line is playing, and then you get to the end, uh, one time I heard it say, uh, <laughs> Malash was like, you will lead our people to ruin Alarak. And then Alarak is like, you are right. And then the mission just ended, and it was really funny. I was hoping I could recreate that. Unfortunately, no. Okay, Templars return. Oh, goodness. Welcome to another one of those missions that is just going to cause me to so despair. Here we go. Let's do this. It's going to be brutal. So, the first bit on this is that we have to not use Vorazun, which sucks. I think this is the worst mastery achievement, like straight up. So, there's one achievement for each little section in this, and the first one is that Vorazun is not allowed to take any shield damage. It's not like, oh you know, whole damage or something. It's literally any damage whatsoever is an instant failure. And the reasonable way to do this is just not use her whenever possible. And I hate it. So we're going to go low and slow when it comes to this part. She does have to do these parts, though. But we can be very careful in them. It's really not that hard to make a mistake. <laughs> we just have to not go to places like this. Just blink right on past them. Oh, Warzone. Why, my friend? Why? Are you done yet, or do I need to keep slaughtering the Zerg? Then she's gonna hide in a corner, and Alarak is gonna go do the actual job. And the thing is, Alarak is like really squishy. It's super easy for him to randomly die. Because he has insane health regeneration, but he doesn't have insane health. So you can kind of fall apart when he doesn't have a friend. He really does need that friendship. So shall it be. 
but he's got to do everything on his own today. El Vorazun is just like that manager that watches over the shoulder and doesn't actually do anything. Gotta take the Nidus's down. And then we have to make sure all the Overseers are gone, because if the Overseers are back at any point, then it is a risk to Vorazun. It is pure babysitting. Yeah, okay. I don't like doing this part with just Alarak for that reason. So the way that Alarak's heal work is that every time he kills someone, he gets an orb, and that orb heals 20 health and shields. Which means the lower he is, like if he's missing both, he's healing twice as much. It is very good. It is still very spooky. I give this a save because things are going really nicely. This is the hardest part, straight up. So... We're probably going to die here once or twice. I don't expect a 17-hour perfect micro. And if you do, I appreciate the fact that you think so highly of me. We're just being real careful here. Oh, we're fine. Just keep hitting the Nidus's with these attacks. Yep, he's dead. I knew it. That's why you save. It's just so easy to get your neck snapped at the last minute. Because uh, one of the things is the orbs fly into the air, and then he has to catch them. And that takes forever. <laughs> that it's really easy for him to die with a bunch of phantom health just floating in the air. Yeah, this part's hard. Just try to charge this guy over and over until he's gone. Alarak agrees with this choice. There we go. That's good. We got one of them. See if we can get the final one. Perfect. We're not done yet, though. Alaric, Alaric. He's really not good against these individual big guys. Now I need to actually walk him down this way to make sure that there's no overseers or anything. So we can slowly escort Vorazun. Okay, we're good. Give it a save. And then she's going to have to make it through the little overlord thing. Okay. Go, go, go. This part's really not bad. Unless you mess up. And then it's like super hard and I can't believe that I did it on my first or second try. So I think that they moves in a second. Much Got a little bit of time. We're going to make it into this little cubby. It is my honor. Go this way. We're Your almost free. Julio. This isn't the hard part, though. Like, we did the hard part for Alarak, but we haven't Shikoris. done the hard part for Vorazun. Which is the final is boss the fight. Game. Because you're supposed to do this on hard, right? And on hard, there's one overseer that moves around. But we're on brutal, so there's two. And that means that there's, like, no room to actually move the way that you want to move. And it can make it really, really nasty. Okay, take this guy down. We're just going to have to do a lot of knockbacks. Because Vorazun is not helpful. Theoretically, she could help here, but, like... We all know there's a million things that could go wrong if that was tried. Careful. Careful with the HP, buddy. You have to hit that. Pull back. So we have to think about the way that Vorazun works in order to do this next segment. And that is 
She has the Shadow Dance, and then she has a Teleport that resets the cooldown on Shadow Dance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to constantly teleport outside. Like, there's going to be a circle, and I have to teleport to a place that is safe. Like, away from Alarak to use the Shadow Dance. It's weird. It's complicated. It's probably going to take a few tries, because this part is just really, really hard. Our future... I don't have a whole lot of practice in it. We stand with our allies. Yeah, we just want to teleport out to the sides, and we cannot physically enter these detection rings because the moment we do, we are doomed. Oh, he's gonna die. Yep, he's out of it. Goodbye. <laughs> it's so tough not being allowed to take a single point of damage. Uh, because it's just really tough to be able to kill everything fast enough. We were pretty close, and we didn't take any damage on Vorzun until he was already dead. try this without autocast on because the autocast was a little bit chaotic. There is much to be done. It is my honor. This always delivers you right to where you cast it, which is kind of the key. Our future is the for this rotation. We stand with our allies. Stay careful. Oh no, he's gonna die again. I'm trying. I don't think you understand how tough this is, Alarak. Three, two, one, please. Oh, we got it. What a what an achievement. Now this one is just about like finding a bunch of friendship. This one, it's like the easiest achievement. It's just like mind control a bunch of guys, and that's what you gotta do to win the mission anyway, so. It's basically just have a pulse. You gotta be careful with Phoenix, because this one is not immortal. This guy is. Trying to be very careful. I wanna get the sentries if I can. We should there we go. As many as possible before then we grab both of our friends, and we just have to create like a little glob of little glob of robot buddies. Yes, Hierarch. Purpose guides. I can reclaim the gateway and robotics facility in this area. We One guy here. Supplement our forces with the units of our oh. Save yourself. What may I your hey, don't sigh storm. <laughs> we need this robot. <sighs> Alright, pull everybody in here. This. And this. This is such a weird voice line. Because they really wanted to, like, dodge the idea that Karax could at any point just take control of Phoenix and there's nothing that Phoenix could do about it. I don't know if Karax himself was being nice or if Blizzard just, like, refused to admit the fact that Karax could just hijack this man. I will find the solution. We are united. But I kind of like the idea that Karax can just steal people. My sensors are showing a lot of reavers up ahead. Reclaiming them would be risky. All right, but so do you know what we're not going to do? We're not going to reclaim the reavers. <laughs> we're going to let them We're going to let them rest today. It's uh yeah, it's too much. I concur. They will die. And I'm not talking about the Reavers. Reavers aren't even that good against the hybrid. Like, it's just not worth it. It's much better to get sentries. I love sentries. Oh, this guy's gonna die. We don't need that many sentries. <laughs> Grab some of this money, and we are almost done with part number two. Shields up. Wait. 
Oh, he's being a jerk face. There we go. Safety. Uh, we just need to grab all this cash over here. And then there's going to be a couple Colossus in the next area. But I think there's like a, a weird man in the hallway. Hey, the sun's coming up. That's cool. The Psy Matrix will fall. Progress is made by the bolt. This guy goes here. Destroy our own cannon so that we can make more sentry friends. I will find the solution. And grab that guy. My expertise is yours. Let's see, there's an immortal here. I think the immortal is the most important one to grab because he does the most damage. Go. We got Master Control. Ooh. Grab these Colossus. Hey, uh, just stop. <laughs> and there we go. Double Colossus. Now we can grab this guy, bring him over here, and we're going to start producing a bunch of stuff and be ready for war. It really feels like just massing a bunch of immortals and sentries is the best way to do this. You get as many immortals as you can and then spend the rest of your money on sentries. It just works. I mean, I know that, like, Colossus and stuff are units, but why? When every single enemy that we have to fight is armored, then the anti-armor guy is definitely going to be king basically always, right? And plus, the money, the math works out perfectly if you don't go for this money over here, right? <laughs> so it gives me justification for not doing it, because the Reavers are scary. Alright, here we go. Carax in the front. I'm leaving Phoenix at home because he's bad. The way is open. There's like no reason to bring him. All he does is charge in the front against these guys and like we don't want people in the front. We just want to have a bunch of ranged stuff. The immortals are so good. None of these hybrid have abilities for some reason. They're just giant a move sticks they're normally they do just not here with the hybrid eliminated we can safely just go so the final achievement on this mission is to not lose anything to the blue goo which is basically the easiest achievement of all time i will channel the astral winds to heal your wounds artanis is insane anyway we will push through this so quickly. I think I lost one of my spin boys, though. That's sad. The blue goo? I mean, it's blue goo. What else is it? What do you want to call it? The, the aether mists or something stupid like that? That's probably what it's called. It's only counteracted by the astral winds. Which I still, to this day very aggressively believe is what Protoss refer to farting as when they're trying to be polite in company, he is channeling the astral winds. And you cannot prove me wrong. They're just trying to be polite. Okay. So if you try to go too fast right here, you die to the Nidus Worms. I learned that once, and I never have unlearned it. Is that Sleep Deprived Grant speaking? Yeah, that was Sleep Deprived Grant speaking. No, I've always believed this. I've said it before when I'm not Sleep Deprived. It's just, it's truth. It's like how Victorian women had all these different words for the fact that they had bodily functions and they refused to admit it. It's basically the Protoss version of that. Because every no everyone knows that Artanis is just a Victorian woman. So the blue goo is like super far behind. We're fine. As long as we just keep stunning stuff with Artanis, particularly the spines, it is really not an issue. 
You guys excited to make carriers? Because we're making carriers next mission. I hope you're a big fan of them. And carry me through the mission. Ooh, I missed my... It's my little thing. It's done. Alright, and then we get these DTs. Still need to blast through all of these. Go, go, go. So what we're going to do here is the Dark Templar are going to move forward and they're going to assassinate the Nidus Worms. While these guys just fight. One, two, three. Zartanus and co. can absolutely hold the ground without issue at all. And that's all of them. Yeah, the DTs just cleave through really, really fast. We keep it up. Oh, I messed up my hotkeys at the end. I'm not sure it's going to matter. I would like to get the Dark Templar over on this side. And destroy the rocks. There we go. Not too bad. Do I have no anti-air? There's just two mutalisks. Oh, we got a gold split. Okay. So. We gotta do... Uh, let me make sure I don't have to talk to anybody, because I hate socializing. Yeah, I don't think we gotta... Um, carrier. Carrier. We gotta get a uh, time stop because we have to start farming that upgrade. And we don't need any of these. This is basically the perfect setup for what we got right here. I don't think that I need anything else. Uh, I have most of the achievements. We've done really good at getting the Spear of Dune achievements, put a lot of work into that. Carrier go. Do I have a conversation with Vorzun? I feel like I do. It doesn't give me an achievement. Okay. I'm, like, really concerned I'm missing something. There's so many different Legacy of the Void achievements, I feel like I'm just absolutely making a terrible mistake here. Okay. This is the second to last Legacy of the Void mission, before the epilogue, which also exists for some reason. Let's go. So this is really the big open macro mission. What we have to do on this one is there's five board shards. We have to we have to finish the mission in 24 minutes. I think that's the mastery. We have to kill one of the void shards with the aid of an ally. I don't even know what the last one is. I don't remember. Doesn't really matter. Was it destroy two void shards within 150 seconds of each other? Right, and then we're going to be working on the time stop achievement, where we have to we have to kill 100 units with time stop, or while they're affected by time stop. However, that is it is a multi mission achievement, so we can get it here, and then we can get more progress on it in the epilogue. Let's uh, we're going for carriers asap. We're just rushing straight to them. So adepts work really well with carriers because the carriers attack fast. Adepts just work well with everything. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Let me check uh, the pylon status. Am I forgetting something? Uh, not this. Oh, no, no. We're getting that in the last mission. Yeah, we're fine. We need five more deploy pylons. We can easily get five more deploy pylons in the epilogue, so... I don't need to pay attention to the Spear of Dune at all. I can just take all the good stuff and then make sure that I get Purifier Beam next mission. That's the only thing that I gotta change. Purifier Beam is awesome. It's just really good on the mission because everyone it's like lanes that you have to defend, and if you put a giant beam of death down the lane, then everyone is dead. We serve with pride. So yeah, this is basically the first mission in the entire Legacy of the Void campaign where I have actually been able to pick the Spear of Dune abilities I want. 
instead of just doing some silly achievement. Compare that to Heart of the Swarm, where I was basically... I'd say about half of the time I was able to get what I wanted, and then half of the time I was leveling something weird. It's uh, a lot more strict of a campaign, but all in all, it's going quite well. This is your favorite mission for some reason. I like it quite a bit as well. It's just so open-ended. You're kind of allowed to do whatever you want, however you want. There's no actual time limit if you're not doing the achievements, so you can take it at your own pace. There's a lot of bases, so you can make whatever composition you want. It just gives player freedom. The void shards are really secondary to everything else, which is just, like, do your own thing, bro. Make this guy. All my little robot friends are dying. But they're back. Just gotta make sure they don't break down twice. So when we get our second carrier is when we are going to move out. Uh, that might not be a good timing. I don't know. We gotta start farming kills with time stop. That is the thing. We need to get a hundred of them over the span of two missions. It's not good, but it's also not easy. Oh my goodness, I am. Oh, I got coffee over here. Let me drink this. That's Our nice, Avon. <laughs> Doing your own thing there, buddy. On our nexus point. Hey, does anyone know Amon's uh, last name? Because we figured it out a while ago. It's, uh, it's Gus. His name is Amon Gus. We serve with pride. <laughs> there we go. Everyone started understanding it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it, it was, there was a little bit of a delay, and people were like, hmm, Gus? Gus. No! <laughs> uh, I love it. <laughs> Imposter is on higher. <laughs> I'll be honest, I have played that game exactly once in my life, and it was a very awkward experience. Uh, we're just gonna shield overcharge this, make sure that we take the entire area down. This Void Rift does decent damage, but remember that we have repairiers, which are carriers that repair. You know, incredible. So we're really gonna be fine as long as we can take this out. We're good. Now we never need to take another base. We have done it. So what I would like to do is now take Vorzoon's little house and become her friend. Make her attack people. And then when I have the next time stop, we're going to attack up here. The time stop after, attack over here. And then don't time stop, yes time stop. Because we only have four time stops worth of time on this mission. And then... Because it's five minutes per, we have 24 minutes to win it. So that means we're going to have, like, this four-minute little gap. A lot of guys. It's... Yeah, whatever. They're not super scary. We just dealt with an attack, so I'm going to go push up here. I don't know if that was a big attack or not. This mission kind of hits you from a lot of different angles, and it can be super... Sp yeah, oh, uh, this is what I was talking about. Can be very super spooky. Artanis, there are Destroy some of the scourges. Okay, that area is secure. Solar Lance is the greatest ability ever because it just means you don't have to leave stuff to defend, which is nice. You don't have to build all that static defense. And because we have Guardian Shell plus the repair ability on the carriers, we're effectively immortal once we get things up and running. It is so hard for the enemy to actually kill our units. So, play safe. 
get carriers win game. It's not super fast, but it is fast enough as a strategy that it's good. And it just, it keeps going and going. You never lose anything during the fights that actually matters. So. Oh, hello. Or we get stuck on this thing that apparently the carriers have no ability to fly over for some reason. I mean, why would the flying unit be able to do that? Your warriors have engaged the enemy. Oh, I thought I was going to get attacked there. I took the bold action of drinking liquid, which I have not been doing enough during this stream. The hydration checks have not been... There's not been nearly enough of them. Let's see. You come on over here. Boom, boom. And then down. One, two, three. And Vorzun is going to be my friend now. Good to see you, Vorzun. And I don't know if this is going to be a big enough push, but I'm going to try to push with her. Because I have this ability off cooldown. Oh, this is actually kind of bad. I bring this guy over here. Tracking multiple flying entities heading flying for entities. We got Solar Lancer for the flying stuff. I'm just going to try to push with Vorazoon because I got to try to get that achievement. And plus, this is a lot of carriers, right? It's not like a crazy number of carriers, but it's also not bad. So we're going to come to the side. Let's uh, set a rally over there and help defend. We can patch up Vorazoon stuff over here, except for this apparition that she has made a pet. And we're gonna try to get 100 kills during time stop. As I said, this is a big part of my strategy. Let's target this down and go one, two, three. Lots of those kills. I'm not sure we're gonna get this kill. Yeah, this isn't looking good. Hmm. Okay, we got three carriers over here. Four carriers over here. That is a lot of carrier versus carrier action, and we're being constantly abducted on this side. Could you stop, sir? I understand that your ability is overpowered and costs 25 energy for some reason. Target the carrier. Don't lose the Nexus. There's a lot of auto turrets just chilling. Base is fine. Alright, the rock is down. Honestly, did not expect that to work. It worked really well. Like, shockingly well. We can blast all the stuff over here and grab Phoenix. We need him to help us push. We really just need anyone to help us push because we got to get that achievement and I'm not picky about who. I'll be honest, I did not expect that to work. I thought we were going to lose on both fronts and we ended up winning on both fronts. I'm going to get a shield battery for this guy though. That's why you get plus three on your carriers. So once this area is here, we get Phoenix. Nerezim are going south. I wish I was over there to help out, but I'm just not there yet. Not fast enough. Our pylon is under attack. Nope. Nope. Uh, mostly okay. Got a carrier to deal with the rest. Hey, boys. Uh, we don't need any armor upgrades because we have all this repair stuff going on, right? That seems like a complete waste. Because every single carrier has two repair drones. Like, what is that gonna... Why would we ever get armor? Alright, Phoenix. Join the clan. 
We follow you, the war hierarchy. Okay, this area is dealt with. Let's uh, have you head on over here. Grab a couple of these gas geysers. Auto gas is amazing for that reason. And we got 16 carriers, so let's just go on the warpath. Keep the destroying going. I don't have a forge. I definitely should be getting some cannons and stuff at this point. So this is a bit awkward because what I want to actually do is target down the objective during time stop. But what I should be doing is killing units for the achievement progress. It's a little bit of a... It's weird. So I built Void Race. I'm just going to shield right here. I guess time stop. Keep getting those 100 kills. Carriers are very good at their job. Because the thing is, it's just going to keep warping in guys, right? But at this point, we have so much DPS, I guess it's fine. Okay, we just do that. Alright, we gotta work with Alarak then. Someone has to work with me to kill one of these shards, I swear. It's not that hard. So 24 minutes, we have 5 minutes and 40 seconds to finish this mission, huh? It's not actually that much. I'm a little bit concerned. Not even like maxed out. I think we're gonna be okay. Let's see. Let's keep building. Gotta rescue Alrak. I think that those guys just got a little bit distracted by Vorzoon, but we gotta... One, two, three. Not bad, that was a good swipe. Swiping right on your death, loser. Let's try to get, like, three of these guys killed. Oh, we have Guardian Shell. No. <laughs> I was going to try to free up supply. Okay, Alarak. You got to help me, bro. We got to work together for this one. Amon's downfall is at hand. Calderim, your high lord demands the dark god's blood. Actually, I don't really want to fight yet. I need time stop for the last one, right? Uh, okay, this is a little bit weird. But we have to make sure that Alarak is fighting with a... Uh, uh, maybe it'll be fine. They'll all be fighting on the last one. This is going to be a bit weird. Because I'm not sure exactly how it counts this objective at all. Kind of just feels like it makes it up. I mean, he's fighting right now. What if we just click on it? And then before all of his friends die. Do I have the achievement? Am I an idiot? With the assistance of Protoss forces. I thought that Alarak was helping. Uh. Okay. Who's helping, guys? Because we have to kill this in two minutes. 150 seconds. 150 seconds. So we just gotta wait for them to get there, I guess. Clear out the area for them. This is not the type of achievement that I want to have issues with. This is, it seems very simple. Uh, I guess Alrak just got cleaned up at the very last moment, right? Why are you attacking this way? I am, I am cleaning everything up for you, making it very easy for you to get over here. Oh my gosh. Game, please. We have until 23.30, right? Because... 23.30, please send an attack, allies. Uh, uh, send an attack! No! 
You're not going to get there in 30 seconds. Um, we're going to have to figure something out. But we had to do it before the time limit. I don't know why my allies were so bad. Okay, we can... We can figure that out in a bit. It's not my issue right now. Uh, this looks like the type of thing that we can very easily figure out on casual. So we're just going to make a bunch of stuff and A move it, grab Vorazun really, really quickly, and then attack with her and blast through a thing. That was very frustrating. I uh, just wanted my friends to attack. Okay, we don't need ascendants. Uh, void rays, we're fine. We got everything here. We just need to go down to Purifier Beam. And that is everything. Yes. Let's go. My bread. <clears throat> what is my... Time stop, auto gas, blah, 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 blah. I got Matrix Overcharge already, so that's fine. Grab this and that. Oh, I'm on. Am I on carriers? I meant to go on Mothership, but this is fine. Mothership is just as good. Or a carrier is just as good as Mothership. Alright. I mean, it's just salvation. It's not bad. We can win this. Carrier plus Void Ray is just a very good composition anyway. I am absolutely running out of momentum, though. We still have, like, four more hours worth of stuff that I have to do after this mission. Maybe we can drop it to three and a half if I play really well, which would be a first for today. <laughs> the enemy approaches. Oh, this going. Is the bot tired? Uh, yeah, the bot is tired. Let me restart the bot. There we go. Bot should work now. Sorry about that. He works most of the time. He's just, he's a little bit tired. He's been working all day. Killed by Narud. <laughs> Unjustly destroyed. <sighs> so we're gonna do the uh so the big boy strategy. From all Are you ready to be the big boy? Dark one and face Alarak, High Lord of the Taldarim. So the first thing of the big boy strategy is to not flip and lose Alarak at the beginning. So this mission is just like win, right? We have to damage or disable all oh. I forgot, uh, I forgot the time thing. The time thing is, we have to do the time thing. We have, there's literally no other mission that we can do the time thing on. Temporal field. Uh, while I'm here, I might as well grab the mothership. The shadow moves against That's fine. We, we were like two minutes into that mission, so. Whatever. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's going. Many destroying. Yes, yeah, so because we have to damage and disable 100 Spear of Adun ships, and then we have to use this to, like, freeze 100 people. Uh, we There's a couple things we gotta do here. For those achievements, yeah. So, is it really 100 Spear of Adun ships? It's a lot of Spear of Adun ships that have to be damaged or disabled with the Temporal beam Field and the Purifier Beam and all this kind of stuff. Then this one's a lot too. It says twenty. Okay, so it's one hundred guys on temporal field. It's twenty guys. Uh, damn, twenty tall, 
not Taldorim ships, 20 Golden Armada ships disabled. Very easy to do. Then there's a Brutalisk that we have to kill, which is just right over here. He's not even that hard. He's just like hiding. And besides that, we have to make sure that none of our allies' Nexuses die. Which is pretty simple. As long as you play good, make a bunch of Void Rays, make a Mothership, all that kind of stuff, you're fine. Gotta grab these, though. I really want Alarak to survive here. We do not have the money to build Alarak in a box yet. You can usually do it by the second time around. So we're gonna put a lot of effort into keeping our favorite little Tall Durham guy alive. Because he's very stupid. And he loves charging. If he takes too much damage, we're going to use Temporal Field to stun the enemies to keep them safe. Yeah, actually, it probably just is the right thing to do. Lots of stuns. Okay. I am... Um, I'm losing my focus right now. I can very much so feel the fact that, like, keeping my eyes straight is starting to become very difficult. And this is actually good because both the epilogue and Nova Covert Ops only have to be played on hard difficulty. So it is, it's a good time for this to happen. This is the final brutal mission in this run. Even though some of the Nova Covert Ops stuff is actually pretty hard. Like it's brutal level difficulty. And my lip is, like, really itchy, which is... <laughs> Alright, I guess that's how the body's gonna work. Where's my probe? Did I send him back home? It's not time to go back home, it's time to go over here. I build that. Perfect. And then you can go build a box. Yeah, build a box workshop. Uh, we need... This. Boom. Boom. Keep getting credit for this 100 disables. And try not to lose Vorazun in the process. Because she's incredibly powerful. It's not the right building. So we're probably going to pop this way next. Here they come. I would like to make this batteries on the back. I'm not sure that I'm going to have time. Oh, we're going to have time. This is going to be the luxury Alarak Hotel. Uh, we have to damage or destroy. And this is a good button to damage or destroy Taldorim ships. I keep calling them Taldorim. I really just don't know the lore today. There is the mothership. She's very strong. I'm going to get a couple Corsairs just to chill at each of these bases. Having some Corsairs is really nice. Because they just dropped Disruption Web, and the value of one Disruption Web is really high. Oh, I was hoping to get the Zerglings for the achievement progress, because we have to hit 100 of them, but <laughs> I'll take what I can get. Segmenting it is fine, too. So what we're doing right now is we're utilizing the fact that Karax has that really fast build rate passage, or er, passive, in order to just instantly create an army. It's really it. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just a lot of stuff. Oh, guys, we're going to lose deploy Pylon. How are we ever going to live without Pylo? He's our boy. Boom, boom. Coming from the mid. 
torrent of forces, guys. I can't believe that he's torrenting right now. It's gonna kill our internet speed. How many seeds and peers do you think that Amon has? Not that I have ever torrented anything in my life, because why would I? There's no need for any law-abiding citizen to ever use such a technology. <laughs> And I am a law-abiding citizen. I love the law. Another fleet of ships set a course for the Keystone. Oh, here they, they come. Okay, give me that hundred stunner. Okay. I mean, you just do your thing. I don't even care about you. We're just gonna shield overcharge everyone right here. Mothership blink and then put him in the sink. Perfect. As it should be. We're low on mothership energy, which is a bit of a pain. Oh, there's even more guys over here. So we have to stun those 20 ships. I'm just going to hold it open right here. One, two, three. Pull these guys back so you can pull into it. Because it's not really about, like, saving the world. It's just making sure that we get the stupid achievement. It's not that bad of an achievement. I just don't like this ability. It's so much worse than Solar Lance, and I wish I had Solar Lance every time that I have to do it. This ability is so broken, though. <laughs> it's just... It stuns everything. It's insane. You can put an Adept inside of it, and everyone gets their minus five R... Did Karak's die? Ah, crap. Oh, uh, that is fine. It's not part of the achievement. It is part of my macro... strategy, though. So, building stuff. How did he die? He very rarely actually gets himself killed. Okay, these guys here. He's over here. Alrak is doing well. Let's just make sure that we have defenses up here as well for our friend. Warriors, a stream of enemies will be upon us shortly. Stand firm, and we shall stand firm. All right, so we actually have to build production like rubes, like losers. Oh, this is probably the way to get this stun achievement. <laughs> Instantly works. All right. Uh, I see you, game. I see what you want me to do. Cool. It was just throwing Zerglings aggressively into the stun. <laughs> These Void Rays are doing great. This is some Golden Armada ships, but not too many. Vanguards are still doing well. All right, looks like Golden Armada. Destroyer, you gotta come back. No. Oh. It's not destroying time anymore. Go home, take a nap. Oh, uh, Daylums of the Slaughter. Oh, there we go. We're getting our achievements. Why did that Ascendant just charge to his own death? Ah, <sighs> Alrak. What are you doing, bud? I gotta keep your friends alive, man. Can't just let him die like that. Okay, we're gonna... A lot of shield batteries for Vorzoon. Vorzoon's mostly fine on her own. Just a little bit of support is pretty darn good for her. We'll give her a mothership later. My will is iron. Yeah, she only really needs one unit, so I think that this is probably a good time to grab the Brutalisk. Not mu oh, a lot is going on right now. I was going to say not much is going on, and then everyone was under attack from every side. 
lost that open. Okay, let's go. I think it's like right over here. I don't even really remember. It's not something you deal with much. Good thing I got that achievement. We didn't have a whole lot of time for it. Okay, bring it over. I don't know if we can do the whirlpool on this guy. Yeah, we absolutely can. Sick. Bye, sir. Bring the void rays back over. Ease these and we got some like vanguards, right? Yeah. Let's come on over. I'm lucky this mission's not that hard. It's not like all in. Actually, all in went so well today that I can't even claim that it was hard. It was super easy. We just annihilated everything. Uh, Karax is at the point where he's building Fire Colossus, so he's almost self-sufficient. As long as we just keep a couple laser beams nearby and a couple shield batteries, he will be pretty fine for the rest of time. My will is iron. Okay. There we go. So we're split into two pieces. We probably need to split into three. I am detecting a much larger force from the Golden Armada inbound on the Keystone. Be prepared. Be prepared. More like three, three air. Impress me. Low key, I think that's uh, Tempo's best song. Three, three air masterpiece. It doesn't get as much attention as stuff like when I'm Grandmaster, but they're uh, pretty good. What's your guys' favorite tempo song? Oh, Alarak got his mothership out too? Oh, I'll see it. I think it's my mothership. He eventually gets a mothership. He tries. He's just very slow. He's trying to give orders from beyond the grave, after all. It's just... Hit the control alt delete button on this guy. There's a lot of Protoss coming up this way. We're going to hit the shield overcharge button so that our allies don't take much. I love shield overcharge on this mission simply because it works on your allies. It's so nice. Make this universe as it should have been. Perfect. Stop the Reavers. This okay. by the cleansing flame. Man, Amon has the worst one-liners. Like, come on, dude. Who thought that was good writing? You don't even do, like, flame-based stuff. It's not, like, part of your motif or something, bro. This way. There's thankfully a cutscene after this mission, so I'll be good. Oh man, English. There is a cutscene after this mission, and that will give me a moment to, like, stand up for a bit. Because I really need that. Alarak in a box is incredible. I bet he has 87 kills. 90! That's even more than 87. My goodness. He's overperforming. Our boy. I don't know, cannons, batterins, cool, seems good. Alright, I think this is where it can get like kind of iffy, so let's just make sure everything's going okay. The mothership should be okay on her own. I think that this area is looking pretty swell. Oh, there he goes! <laughs> He's a running! 
And we just have to make sure that no one can detect Vorazoon. Like these guys. Wait, do they just send their overseers on an attack move command like to this? That's not a very good strategy at all. Is Alarak free? No, he's not. He's still in jail, as he should be. It's coming next. Am I missing anything? What am I missing? I think I'm not missing anything. I think things are just going really well once again. We're kind of back to that normalcy. After, after some troubles. So after this, what do we have to do? We have to go and figure out how to do the host thing. Which I'm hoping we can just do with a reloaded save. And then we have to go and do Sky Shield. And then the epilogue. That's not bad. Goodbye. This is the wacky fun laser of death. You will die, but it's going to be a very exciting time as you get spun in a circle and shot by a giant laser. They have no detection. Vorazoon's going to be fine. I have $5,000 in the bank, so let's just keep building defenses here. Can't really get too exquisite. Oh, I think this is going to break Alarak open. Which is going to be annoying. This man was not built for freedom. That. It was really close. Okay, let's uh fortify the walls. Oh, they want him. They want to free him. This is what this is. The entire A1 plot is a <laughs> epic maneuver on their part in order to free Alarak from the confines of his box. But we will not let it happen, for we know that he can only survive within his box. It's like an alligator if you just, like, try to set it free in Oklahoma. It's not gonna work. Right, these are down. That's good. This is good. I don't know, just keep building cannons, whatever. We just have to not lose those nexuses. We have about 14% more. Okay. I'm not attacking from this side. Oh no, it exploded. Gods, their ships are diving headlong into the Spear of a Dune. The core of Spear incredible. of a Dune. Hierarch, we can no longer support you. you have done enough. Why don't you just ram the Overmind with the Spear of a Dune, lady? Come on, learn from Tassadar. <laughs> the Overmind isn't exactly an important threat right now, but like, it'd be a it'd be a fun activity. energy. I do have to be careful. I guess I'm allowed to lose my nexus. My allies just aren't allowed to lose theirs. It's a lot of guys. Unending tide pod of Protoss signatures. What will we do? Alright guys, you ready to hold Karax? Finally. We're getting our dating sim. StarCraft dating sim. You have to present him with gifts of Solarite. So you can finally hold Karax. Let's see. This is going well. This area is looking a little bit sketch. But we have so many buildings it should be okay. 
Victory is nearly upon us. Do not this is, uh, yeah, the vaporizing zone. And then we just kind of pull back and make sure we're in the range of shield batteries with the mothership. That's going to be the mission. Nice. So once again, not quite going to the epilogue yet. A couple things first, and before all of that, a cutscene. They really are trying, but you can't beat 11 Void Race. Not with Immortals and Zealots, at least. 1% more. Get him, DTs. 14 kills, 15 kills, 6 kills, not bad. I really hope someone figures out what the mystery of that vanguard on Unsealing the Past was, because that was the weirdest thing I've, like, ever seen. Alright, guys. Cutscene time. Ready, I will see you lovely folk in just a moment. Fall back to the Keystone. Let them come to us. Dark One has been banished back into the void. For now, we are free. All of this because of you. I will bring our great dream of a unified Protoss to bear. We will gather the survivors. Rebuild our cities. We will reject our old divisions and forge a new society. Together, we will shape our destiny amongst the stars. Why is everyone saying Among Us now? <laughs> what? How did I miss an Among Us? What's happening? 
<sighs> what, we got so many achievements. This is brute. I love, I love achievements. Okay, we got some, we got some maintenance to do. Let's do this. Uh, continue to the credits. What is happening? <laughs> I missed something in chat. I was gone for a minute. And everyone is going pure Amogus now. Oh, this is unskippable. We are receiving an unauthorized transmission. It is from Alnar. It is Kerrigan. Okay. Let's, uh, finish... Let's finish the legacy of the Void Mastery thing. So first of all, let's go... Legacy of the Void, load save game. I don't know, this this host, let's just figure out how to fight with Alarak or something. We need him to not die. All right, th that's been sitting out for about eight hours. It is very dry. Perfect. Oh, uh, you don't need to set this to the. Oh, you already did. Your legend. Well done, Templar. All right, so we're just gonna work with Vorazun here to make sure that we get this achievement properly. I don't care where she goes. We're just following her. We are going to be her little stalker. Oh, she doesn't know where she's going. I think she's going down. What are you doing, Vorazun? <sighs> okay. Well, this is fine. This is going to be a really easy achievement to get. It's going to be a minute or two. And then we can... Uh, we can continue on. We have to do Sky Shield, and I think that that is it. I think we got everything else really nice and cleanly, right? Overall, very few redos throughout this run. Which, redos are truly the time killer. What are you doing, Vorz? Ah... <sighs> She's just bad at her job. She's also bad at my job. I wish she was better. Okay, so we have to blast through this. We're gonna try to rescue Alarak. We're gonna hold up shield overcharge so that we can uh, shield overcharge, make him strong, and then we'll kill all the people. I don't know if we can fight with uh, Purifiers. They're a little bit off on the side and they're doing weird things. I think we just or we'll put our bets into Alarak right now because he has cloaked guys and cloaked guys are generally OP. They'll be able to help us. Did I get the new Phoenix name, Talandar? I really hope so. Is that an achievement? I don't even know. I really hope so. If I miss something like that, that's going to be a interesting way to lose. Keep getting progress right here. Keep it going, keep it going. Yeah, strike this way. With Alarak. We can strike as like a family. A family that strikes people. The dark god's blood. Do not disappoint me. All three forward positions right, have been secured, Artemis. Me, now, you, let us my dog Blue. We can do anything we want to do. The remaining shards are bleeding void I'm just going to save a this. I don't. There we go. He's sending his stuff. You got to be careful. Help out, please. Put the shield on him. Yeah, just slash it. There we go. Okay, and return to uh, Spear of Doom. Perfect. Okay, one more. Master Archives, Sky Shield, what we have to do is kill 
three of them within 80 seconds of each other. Very easy. So, Sky Shield, Replay. And of course, we're going to use DTs. Because anything, when I say really easy in this uh, context, it's always really easy because I have invented the Dark Templar. Let's go. The water is a lot less warm than I'd hoped it was. Okay, three guys here. Load these up, bring the friends over. So, first things first is we're just going to grab these, knock them down. Oh, we don't even have to do this on Brutal. We have to do it on Hard, because it's a mastery achievement, so make it easy. gas really really fast we're gonna have this guy who's gonna be able to run around and grab a bunch of stuff come on and shoot me baby oh you're stunned oh it must suck so bad oh what a sad life you're dead the stun ability is so good in any of these little fights at the beginning of missions it's just ridiculous so we're going to unabashedly solar lance everything nothing else really matters here we just got to get done with it quick and then i hope we have like every achievement done at this point oh uh, the achievements that we should not have done are the time stop kill count and deploy pylon and uh there's another one uh the one there's a top bar ability up here that allows you to use your your warp in stuff as as if they were warp gates right so like your robo and your stargate and we don't have that one yet because we get it in the epilogue Durability calculations I don't remember what it's called though because Commander, it's really bad your construction vehicles can begin the repairs. Thanks, it's like chance. spending a million billion solarite in order to have to produced something a little bit sooner I mean the warp ins it's cool but it's not very good warp harmonization yeah thank you guys Couple of these. And I think we are almost done with this mission. We have a lot of gas, so we're pretty much fine. Just gotta pick up the money. Remember, we do not have to do any of the bonuses, which is nice, because we are doing this as a master archives. We've already beaten the legacy of the void, and we're not doing it again. Emanating from these devices will slowly damage our shields, but their solarite reactors may be useful to us. Just All right, Dark Templar, here we go. Highly advised. So the three that I'm going to do in really quick succession, obviously, are these three up here. They're the most accessible. They're really close to each other. So we do have to blast the stuff on this other side with just regular DTs doing DT stuff. Oh, hello. We definitely need more DTs. I think we just basically make DTs for the rest of time. Which version of DT does the epilogue give you? I've like I don't think I've ever built DTs on that mission, and we're definitely not gonna do it here, even though we have to play the mission twice. But I've never really thought about it. It's probably like Blood Hunters. Because Blood Hunters are cool. And I they know that Blood Hunters are cool. But they're also really bad. Oh, it's Avengers. Avengers are pretty cool too. I knew they wouldn't give you this version. That would be too kind of them. Is there a Raven? I don't think so. So we should be ready to go soon. Just blast through this. A little dancy. And we're just holding up all of our energy abilities. 
uh, I guess we're holding up solar lands. I'm not really holding up deploy pylon. I'm just refusing to use it. It's slightly different. There we go. And we can melt through these guys. That's going to give us vision of all these areas, and we're going to be able to do some awesome solar lancing. Estimates. Nice work. Got a repair crew inbound. All right, here we it's go. So, like core starting to reinforce one, the stabilizers. Expect some heavier resistance. Two. Oh. Mobius core is mobilizing one. an attack against our nexus point. Rally we should go nexus. for the detection. I think that makes the most sense. There we go. There, all the detection is going to burn down, which is going to make it really easy for the DTs to get in there and clean everything up. And then we just have to get three of them within, within 80 seconds of each other. So the way to do that is uh, we're going to leave, like, one thing alive in each one of them. And then we're going to simultaneously take all three of them down. Oh, ow. Dude. Bro. Is the VOD going to be separated? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, the VOD is going to be available most likely on the Archives channel, Giant Crane Games Archives. And it is going to be in, uh, it's going to be per campaign, most likely is how I'll upload it. Because apparently I can't just use this VOD because it's too long, according to YouTube. YouTube is a downer. They only like 12 hour VODs. <laughs> okay, this is looking really good. Keep it going. I don't really need to build anything more. Let's just take it easy. I have something stuck in my teeth. <laughs> it's driving me a little bit nuts. Okay, that is all the detection. these. One, two. And then we're going to go to the very final area. And hopefully there's not anything too whiskey over there. We're doing well on energy, so I can continue to get this. We're going to get that warp and pylon achievement very soon. Please don't have any detectors left. These turrets should have burned down. All right, so what we're gonna do is we go one, two, and three. There we go, all three simultaneously. That is definitely within 30 seconds of each other. I think uh, we, we really need to check because I hope that we have all the things, all the achievements. Yeah, it should be warp harmonization that we don't have, deploy pylon that we don't have, and what else? I think that's it. Void campaign. G got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Epilogue we have not done. This is good, this is good. Right, perfect. And every mastery, perfect, okay. We are on the road to Viridian City, my friends. Uh, all we have to do is head into the epilogue and we only have to do the epilogue on hard. Here we go. Actually, we have to do this on, on casual as well. <laughs> Actually, we're gonna we're gonna do the casual version first, just to uh, get it done with. So this uh is silly. The objectives are just completely incompatible with each other. I 
gotta set the speed to faster. We gotta go. So what exactly are they? They are... We have to destroy all the Void Corruptions. Also, we have to win and destroy less than three Void Corruptions. We must find the corruption and do you see the do you see the issue with this mission and the fact that we have to do it twice? So uh, on the interface, it doesn't say one of them requires you to do it on hard. So the win and destroy less than three void corruptions, I believe, is the one that requires hard difficulty, and the other one does not list a difficulty, so it can be done on casual. So we're going to destroy all the void corruptions and win the mission. And we're doing it on casual, because why would we waste time on anything else? It's very... It's very kind of frustrating, you know? Where it's, like, specifically designed to force you to replay it twice, and... Okay, we're just gonna target these down. We're actually... Our composition is going to be Zealot. Like... There's not really a reason to make anything else on casual. We're just going to build as many zealots as we can. Probably get a forge to upgrade zealot. Get some damage on him. And then we are going to be using warp and pylon in order to finish this achievement because we're playing on casual, so it's not like it's going to be hard. We're just heading right over to the expansion ASAP so we can get zealot. More zealot. Theoretically, on the carrier mission, we didn't have to do the repair thing because we would get the achievement here. That's fine. Uh, the reason that I'm doing this on casual too is that it allows me to grab the warp harmonization achievement. So, one of the reasons that we're making zealot is because zealot is very cheap. And warp harmonization, the achievement for it says... You just have to warp in a hundred things while you have warp harmonization. It doesn't actually require you to warp in like Robo and Stargate units for achievement progress. It's just like, oh yeah, you warped in, uh, warped in some zealots, that counts. I'm like, all right, all right. <laughs> a little bit weird, because that's not what this is for, but I'll take it. We're basically not going to lose units here. And we might actually need to do a save load spam thing. Because obviously we're never using warp harmonization again, given this is the last Protoss mission that we'll be playing today. Alright, corruption is down. Free me. So stupid, I hate this mission. The story on this mission is just the worst. Oros is dumb. That's not my opinion, that's my fact opinion. Fact opinion, oh my gosh. I might be bad at word, but I'm good at staying up late. Spear of Adun, this is Hyperion Actual. There are several strategic positions sure. up ahead. We should make a point of securing them. Take this down. So we have to kill 100 units during time stop. We're still working on that achievement. I have no idea how many we have, but I'm just going to find a nice little open field of enemies and start blasting them during a time stop. That yeah, seems fine. This is some good people to slaughter. Hey, we got it. We're probably at 98 again, huh? Because that has been the central theme of this day. Is every achievement we get as close to possible without actually getting it. The area is secure, and these defenses should keep it that way. Boom, get plus two attacks so we clear faster. And I'm actually going to start banking up a lot of money in a really silly way. Oh my goodness, what a massive attack wave. Truly the pinnacle of StarCraft. Actually, I have like no warpins. We're probably fine. You guys hotkeyed. Yeah, so we're going to get like $2,600 in the bank with 26 warpin charges or something like that. And then we're going to save. 
We're gonna reload, and we're just gonna warp those in over and over until we have the 100 warp-in charges from warp harmonization. We only need to do it, like, twice. I'm not sure it's actually necessary. But it's just guaranteed that we get the warp harmonization thing. Fortunately, because we are playing on normal or lower right now for this specific achievement, it means that we will uh, have three charges in all of our warp gates instead of one, like you do on Brutal. So we don't need that many gateways to get all the charges. Just eight. Eight and a third, because I think I said 25. So yeah, what we're doing here is we're just killing all of these corruptions, then we're going to have to complete the mission so that we actually get credit for the achievement. Slaughter that creature! A creature. Nice work. We're securing the location now. Oh, hello. Jim, yeah, that creature is uh, right soon. there. He's creaturing. Alright, what do we got? 13. We're just gonna hold our warp ins, as I said. It's nice and easy. The problem is, I'm actually afraid that we have to get 100 warp ins, which is. 200 supply, but I'm afraid that we're not going to lose enough units otherwise, so we have to do a little gimmick thing. Let's see, that's 8, let's see, 24. We will accrue the charges. We're almost there. Here, Jim, you can have a shield. Aren't you fancy? I don't really need that. Okay, 24, so now I'm gonna quick save. Oh, supply blocked. What a loser. Um, I'll try it again in a bit. When I have more. I didn't pay attention to that part of the warp in process. It's okay, I'll figure out how to play this game at some point. I miss playing Zerg when we could go. <laughs> what was it that I did? I think it was on, like, Awaking the Ancient. I just, like, kind of idly made 200 supply of workers when I was at 40 supply or something. It was fine. It's, uh, definitely not the way you're supposed to play, but it was all right. I don't even remember. Everything's bleeding together. Okay, this is 22. Tackle this, and 24, there we go. Give it a quick save, and let the warp in finish. I don't care, Matthew Horner. And we're just going to do it again, and then we're probably going to reload and do it again, and then we should be good forever. Oh, deploy pylon, yeah, good idea. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that was a good remembery, guys. Additional personnel inbound. Thank you. Our production centers are getting prepared to supply Thor's to the front line. Okay, let's see how many of these are. Do we need to reload it one more time? No. We just need four more units, and we will be done with that. Let's keep it up. Wait, what other achievement do I need? Spear of a Dune. This is it. That's it. So we just have to kill these void constructions. Constrictions. Which is easy enough. Let's start popping guys over on this side so they can work on that. Art of Warp, there we go. Spear of a Dune. Defense is going down now. We're almost there, man. That's a lot. Uh, Shield overcharge, just make sure we can bust our way through properly. This is a lot of spawned guys. I mean, I don't have any anti-air here, so there are carriers just doing their own thing. Oh, 
I've said this before on stream, but I find this line actually very interesting in that uh, it's basically a tacit admission that Narud does think that Artanis and Kerrigan, who are also here, do deserve to stand among the gods. As the, uh, you know, basically like the scion of essence and the scion of form. Scion might be the wrong word. I think it's an interesting piece of writing. I think that there's some very interesting pieces of writing inside of the very fundamentally flawed epilogue. They had some very interesting ideas. Okay. Oh, the thrasher. What are we gonna do? Oh, we gotta... Set up defenses here. We need to yeah, kill this forward. so the carrier can get her your stupid base. Defense is down. This is it, Narud. This Make sure we blast through. So we have all the pylon stuff. Their forces push forward. This bastard dies. That's free. Uh, bu -bu -bu We gotta free this for our friend. That's another forward base, because we have to do all the bonus objectives. Because there's a there's achievement for that. There's an achievement for everything. Alright, so the last dude is up here, I believe. Or maybe this one as well. Avoid corruption. Just target it. I don't actually know if there's a corruption up here. I'm just gonna attack. Oh, here's one. It was missing Looks something. Like those are all the locations we should need. We owe you, Hierarch. I'll take it down. You guys, come on over. Take this down. Uh, I am accidentally killing the root. Nope. Oh, no. Uh, sirs, we have void corruptions to destroy. Please, please stop. Can we shield the root? Oh, no. That doesn't stun our... Oh, gosh. Uh, open it up. Jim, your DPS is too high. There we go. <laughs> that would have been bad. Jim. Oh, your boy. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to play it again, and this time, instead of destroying all the void corruptions, we have to uh, destroy none of them. Which is... Silly. Or rather, we have to destroy a few of them. But we can do that. I have a strat. Things are going sideways. Yeah, we're going Phoenixes. Absolutely going Phoenixes. This is a great Phoenix mission. You warriors are close now, Artanis. I can sense it. We want to try to not lose our guys during this segment. The shadows are because we have to just run around like confused people for a bit, grabbing all the money we can. Perfect. Put down. Purge the corruption. I wonder if I can do the DT thing. I'm gonna try it. Why not? We're doing so well on time that I'm gonna try what might be a much faster strat by like five minutes. But it might not be. I like its idea though. Alright, so we're gonna grab like these, maybe three, and have them head on up here. Narud's forces are heading towards Jim's position. My swarm will be there to help. Oh, there's some money just chilling right over there. In the name of Tassadar, we shall be victorious. Then one, two, a little bit of gas in my shoe. need to get the minerals, I guess. It's fine, though. I actually don't need this gas at all right now. I gotta get the Dark Shrine. I think there's some gas up here. I'm not actually sure. 
I'm kind of just going to get this guy killed and hope that it's for a good cause. I'll take it. Close enough. Just for a medium cause. That thrasher is tearing into my base. Hit it with everything you've got. It's so weird that Stukov is chilling with Jim in this one. It's not like Stukov and Jim knew each other. Besides, you know, like... I mean, tangentially. In Brood War. But Stukov is just like, yeah, I'm with him. I don't care about Kerrigan anymore. She's... She's weird. She smells. I wish you'd help me a little bit more, sir. This whole mission is just very odd. Okay, so we get you guys here. Here. We should use this time to advance. Thirty, forty, fifty. And we just have to hope this works. It's a fun strat. I don't know if it's a good one. I am eager to strike. Uh, yeah, okay, that's enough gas. We just need another gateway, and then we need some money. I kind of feel like this is not going to work. How much is a DT? So it's uh, 500, 500 for four of them? I mean, yeah, I guess we're going to afford it. Spear of Adun. This is Hyperion Actual. There are several strategic Let's positions set up. up ahead. We should make a point of securing them. And it is basically time. Oh, we need uh, 125 energy before we can go. 125. I shouldn't have spent my energy. I mean, if we need 125 energy, then we might as well just grab some. Grab some more gas. This is a really cool strat. As I said, I have no idea if it's going to work. I, I give it like a 97%. How strong is Naruto? I have no idea. It kind of sucks, though. He's like super weak. I don't know why. I mean, he dies to Jim, right? Jim's marines are too powerful for him. Given an emergency save... Open. The sword will fall this day. Then we're gonna follow this right up here. For honor. Understood. On the wings of justice. As soon as we get hit, we're gonna put our shields up. What do you say, Artanis? You feel like joining in? Oh, siege tank shot. I needed to uh Okay. I need to time stop and then drop the pylon. Whoops. <laughs> the siege tank just one shot the pylon. Well, this is why you save before you do this. <laughs> uh, it happens. It happens. For honor. At least everything else worked perfectly. There were no issues. Yeah, this guy comes up. The sword will fall this and then day. just roll this way. I will comply. Understood. As soon as we get hit by that Thor I shot, we activate our shields. Thor. Dropping some troops at your front line, Sarah. What do you say, Artanis? You feel like joining in? What? What? How did those tanks do that? Okay, uh, they did it like mid... Okay, I gotta wait for time stop to, like, fully activate. I, uh... I was too quick. I was too nimble. I... <laughs> sure. The siege tanks... The siege tanks don't follow the rules of time. Let's be honest. We already know that they don't follow the rules of space because they have the ability to, like, block anything. But they also don't follow the rules of time. 
That makes sense to me. The siege tank is truly an extra dimensional unit. <laughs> so we're gonna wait like three seconds before we drop the pylon. Make sure everything is stunned. Well, this was supposed to be faster, and uh, it's taking about the same amount of time as the other strat, so it's fine. There we go. DTs. Oh, he's got a lot of HP. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wow, he's got a lot more HP on this difficulty. Well, we just do it again. Nope, it doesn't work on this difficulty. I mean, it does. It will work. It's just not... So, the way that the first strat works is that we gotta use, what is it, three time stops? It's a long time that we gotta spend building up phoenixes, so I think that we're still actually netting a lot of time. It's just not as beautiful as it could have been, but it requires a lot to kill him with phoenixes. You go like, time stop, time stop, bank everything up, and then go. So it's like, 15 minutes. Uh, we got the gas over here. I gotta make sure that... Uh, Kerrigan's just gonna die. Okay. This is falling apart. In a bad way. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm trying my best, Kerrigan. Maybe if you sucked less. You're literally Queen of Blade. I gotta take care of these guys. A lot of lightning. I could use your help, Kerrigan. See how it feels? It's really annoying, isn't it? Okay, you're fine. Get back home. Take that down. We're saving energy. We have 130 on time stop. Then Durian will die. This is the worst mission I think so far honestly like and that's not too bad right like <laughs> some random epilogue mission that I didn't try that much is going to work successfully it's just going to be a little bit slower uh, pylons yeah so we don't supply block the time warp that would be really embarrassing thank you This is probably about 20 seconds to get over there, so we can start moving in a minute. I actually think that I would have gotten the kill on him if I had built the pylon, like, right here, so I could have warped in and had everyone attacking him at once. It was definitely partially a placement issue, not necessarily a strategic one. So, this time, we are going to have 175, which means that we can Solar Lance as well. I really hope that he doesn't, like, have really rapid HP regeneration that we're about to learn about. Because if you told me he did, I would kind of believe you. But also, if you told me that he, for some reason, has, like, Zerg HP regeneration and is, like, 26 per minute or something, that'd be funny. Takes him, like, a year and a half to fully heal. I believe that as well. For the epilogue is a confusing mistress. Oh, yeah. Ah. I'm so inept. Why do I keep doing this? I just, I really want to do it quickly, and I need to just wait for the ability. But as soon as I fire time stop, I'm like so excited. So he has a little bit of healing. It's basically nothing. Okay. I just want to be done with the epilogue. And I'm taking way too long with the epilogue because I want to be done with it, you know? There we go. 
click him. First try. It's never been that easy. Cool. <laughs> Let's pretend that never happened. This is a uh, this is a secret between you and me. Okay. Essence of Eternity. Go in Planetary Fortresses in the early stage. We can only get, uh, was it 15 kills with Kerrigan? It's very few. So what I'm going to do is I have very specific things that I have to kill with it. And then we're going to sit for the most part. But then there's another achievement because the epilogue is the epilogue. So there is an achievement where you can only get, uh, like... 15 kills with the drill, or the Kerrigan. And then there's one where you gotta get 60. But unlike last one, we don't actually have to do it twice. What we're going to do is instead, because when you use the drill, Kerrigan gets interrupted, her charging stops. So, the way that we're gonna approach it is we are going to get to 99.9%, .9%, fire off the laser to get 60 kills, or save, fire off the laser to get 60 kills, reload, and then just let it tick over to 100. It's pretty easy. You have come to see this mission sucks, though. Death. I don't want to do it. What the hell was it's like that? really easy to die. Avon is sending his minions against us, but I can use this power to stop them. I don't even think the mission is hard, but like, Roger that. the AI allies kind of suck. Let's get into the fight. By kind, I mean they're like really bad. Fight or fight. Oh, yeah, apparently we can fight. walk through that crystal. Vito Who knew? Engaged. Guys, you're supposed to be helping. Oh, we don't have multi-build. Well, that's awkward. Let's uh, grab this money. Get on out of here. And then grab another one. Because double planetary fortress is really good on this mission. Oh, I forgot to use the drill. Well, that's not good. You ready for At all? Here, you My keep stimming. It's okay. It's just one tank. We have a lot of money already. Get a tech reactor. Get a tech reactor. Actually, cancel. Lift land. Lift land. You're gonna get this. You're going to planetaryify. Yes, indeed. What are my notes? Target my Thor, Artanis two battle cruisers, and then only Thrashers. So Artanis is gonna fight some battle cruisers, and I have to target those with the laser. And I was supposed to target that Thor, and I just forgot. I got very distracted. Okay, we got all the money here. Tank production is a go. We're gonna have to make sure that we kill an ally's gas geyser. Because we're bad people. Oh, jeez. Planetary? There we go. Uh, are you going to be fine on this first one, Zagara? I sure hope so. Well, actually, okay, so I didn't do my guy, so instead I can do this Thor. Just flip the script right there. That is fine. Now that means Zagara is going to be able to take all this stuff down. She's probably going to die, but that's fine because she respawns. And we have an economy. Oh, goodness. There's a lot of guys. I'm just not ready for this. I don't like this mission. Um, There's so much stuff in the air. Are you serious? Oh, my goodness. I killed my guys. It means our Tannis is going to die right here. There's no battle cruisers on this side, so that's not for this one. Oh, uh, this is not a hour 19 mission. This is like an hour 4 mission. I think I need to restart. I think just the intro here was so bad. Yeah. We're going to restart. Like, everything just fell apart. Because I didn't laser the Thor. You have my 
It happens. Clear the area, Sarah. Then we'll be able to come down and reinforce you. Alright, yeah, this mission's really easy once we get to the mid stages, but the early stages of it are very aggressively hard sometimes. There's a lot of stuff and we cannot be using the drill because of the achievement. We'll want heavy defenses to give Sarah the time she needs. You just keep going over here. Let's see if we can do this correctly this time. For as long as they can. One here. Our queen must not be harmed. You want to charge, we are... Yes, we're getting that. We need tanks more early. Like, that was another problem. I don't know why my tanks were so late. They're, like, my best unit by far. And I just decided that it was going to be a long time before I had any of them. You have come to seek your death. Okay, and then Kerrigan is going to be hotkeyed. The Thor gets lasered, nothing else does. And we head over here. What is it already? Very well. Yes, indeed. Boom, boom, boom. A bit of money over here. Do we have instant depots? Oh yeah, we got instant depots. We are living the bougie life. That is amazing. I never get this upgrade because it's bad, but it's really nice when you have it. Makes you feel like a rich person. Okay, siege tanks. Do your actual job this time. Good job. Alright, let's protect our allies. Don't let them get blasted. Look at how different this is. I'm not dead. Which is a pretty big difference. What is it already? Tanks are coming around the mountain. Go see the wire. Thank you for the uh, super. Put this up. I don't know where my marine is. Oh, he's just idling. Get an armory. You guys come on back. Got it. Uh, we don't need this. Or rather, we need it in a better position. So somewhere like right here. Oh, are we about to get attacked again? Uh, bring in the tanks. Make it quick. Oh, this is not good. Good thing I salvaged this bunker the moment that I was getting attacked. Yeah, I just don't have situational awareness anymore. It's so... It's so late that just looking at the minimap has become really hard. Are you serious? Wow, oh, they attack with both. I guess I'm just supposed to have basic units over here to defend, so it's not that hard. That's pretty tough. We're gonna build a defensive line here. Keep it alive. Thors are gonna go down, that means the Gar is gonna be safe. If she can deal with her own problems. It's an ultra, whatever. Gosh. Why is the aggression in this mission so insane at the beginning? Like, they have no chill. Which is weird because the next mission's like super easy. And this mission is really, really aggressive. Just heal, make sure that this area is controlled. Get our friends on the steps. Of war. Grab one of these. And Zagara can eventually just get away with only siege breakers, I'm pretty sure. Was the same in my notes. Oh, four breakers, four tanks, okay. I just walked over and killed this tank. But Artanis is alive, so that's basically the best that I can ask for. Why, why would you walk down that cliff, sir? That's not the correct place to go. Okay, repair. Get, uh, that, and now we need to blast that guy. 
Oh my goodness, she is under attack again. I feel bad for her. Because her allies are just awful. They're not helping her in the slightest. But she's so strong. Luckily, Zagara is a very, very good girl. It's because tenacity is advantageous in war. She taught me that. Are there battle cruisers? So I'm supposed to destroy yeah, battle. Yep, two battle cruisers. That's what my notes say. Yeah, I see why. Because then it's all ground. It's pretty good. We'll grab these angels because we will eventually be going around with them. Keep the tanks coming. Uh, I'm not sure about this tank positioning. We're gonna have to get some turrets over here. Turrets. These bastards don't let up, do they? This is a good setup. So we're basically not using Kerrigan anymore. We just have to hold with what we got. So we got four tanks, and it's just siege breakers on that side then, and Jim is gonna be okay, and our Tannis is gonna need a lot of babysitting. Yeah, the double planetary here is really good. Makes it so much easier to deal with things. And we can just keep making workers. Okay. Everyone loves that voice line. I do too. Dassey is advantageous in war. It's so, it's like cute. I know she is like an eight foot tall, eight legged monster that could rip my head in half, but you know what? It's a very cute line. <laughs> So we're doing good here. A couple of those. Come on over. A couple guys to repair on this side. And hopefully this is it. I'm feeling much better this time. Like, I think that holding is going to be not a problem. Hmm, I'm not really positioned well on this ramp, actually. I have to watch that. Save me, Zagara. Thank you. It is nice how quick this mission is. Like, of all the uh, time defense missions, this one is just, what, 22 minutes long? That's very short compared to, like, All In. Which is 30. Better take care of it before it causes it's like zero trouble. hour length if you don't use the drill. I just get these sieged, these sieged. I don't know, get a couple turrets here. This area's looking good. And I think that we are basically at a point where tanks are fine on that side. We need a lot of our Tannis tanks. That's the big thing. This man has a terrible, terrible life, and without tanks, he is going to be without thanks. Let's save. Doing okay. Without tanks, he's going to be without thanks. I wonder what that means. Because it didn't really make sense. But I'm sure that the author had some very interesting meaning when they said those words. Dusquings? Alright, dude, like, an overwhelming force against you is three Zerglings and a Zealot. You're really bad, Artanis. <laughs> I mean this with the utmost offense. You just keep building these tanks for him. Got a couple repair guys. And just keep sieging.
This is working out well. Alright, now I'm going to start making a mobile force that goes around and helps defend with banshees Speak. and Take angels. Amon is sending a massive force to you. We have you on visual. And uh, science vessels. Science vessels are an important part of it too. To heal everything up. And we got all these turrets to help everything out. We have a lot of repair guys. Uh, it's seeming pretty good. We gotta get the the dusk merchants. That's dusk merchants. Siege breakers. That's what that's what dusk merchants is. Siege breakers. Hmm. That's a cool name. Not really for like a sci-fi RTS, but it's a cool name. Take this guy down. Any Dusk Merchants in the chat? We're Duskin. We're losing a couple repair guys over here. I am pretty strapped for cash. However, I also just feel very safe with what's going on right here. I don't think that I'm gonna get busted. Make it quick. Yeah, we don't really need anything else. My notes say that we just uh, need this many tank. And I'm sure that I tried this before I just made up numbers. That's true most of the time. At least 25%. Screaming. Okay. I think we are... We basically won the mission. I, fe I feel wonderful. We got Duskwings. Uh, we do not need Vultures. Vikings. Yeah. Zagara and Artanis will come under attack soon. How do you Defend know? Them, Jim. I guess maybe she just has good vision. Like 2020. She just see the enemies coming from a really long ways away. That makes sense. Your queen so, as I said, at the end of this mission, what we have to do is save right before the mission ends and then get 60 kills with care. Oh my goodness. Oh my. No, 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 no. Thor's hurt. Yeah, that was a little bit too much. I don't like it when that happens. Oh, they sure do like the Thor, don't they? Oh, I'm just hoping that we have enough right here. Alright, this is a lot of air units, and these tanks are pretty vulnerable. Cook those. Irradiate the brute lords. And we definitely need more Vikings. It's a Viking game. The Banshee is not nearly as useful. But I guess we're okay. We can actually just go out here with these guys and take them down. We don't even need to use Kerrigan. They'll save a little bit of time. Because these guys only have 1,800 HP. They're actually quite weak. They look like they should have a lot more because they're these, you know, big, scary men, but... Nope. They're pretty bad. And they're... They're kind of like Colossus, where you can hit them with ground and air. So they're just really easy to deal with. What's going on? under attack. Yep, yep, that's fine. Set this over here. Choose to believe. Ooh. Going through the SCVs. Please don't. Okay, we're getting there. Save Ziggy Zags. Oh, Ziggy Zags. Oh. She's egging. 
60 whole seconds of egg. A fate worse than death. I put you on patrol. We'll do good. He's on patrol to help deal with broodlords. And hopefully... Hopefully we got this. Because the problem with this mission is that if you don't got it, you just don't got it. There's not really any room for specialness. Alright, so what we're going to do is now we're going to save and we got to start using the Kerrigan laser to get 60 kills. It's a pain in the butt. And it's honestly going to look pretty sketch as we do so because they're just going to constantly attack with stuff. And then after we do that, we reload the save and we just win without having gotten those kills and that'll give us the other achievement. And it'll look a lot cleaner. Uh, yeah, you guys need to come repair as Kerrigan just kills stuff. This is actually a lot of kills we have to get. Any kill is fine. I think that this area is not being overrun. The area in the south is... Zagara is just insane. She has no issues in life. It's really Artanis who is at the most... ...potential overrunnable. Okay, 42. Going... Maybe a few over here. This is a silly achievement. I've come One, two, three, four, five. A couple more. I am the swarm. Fifty seven. Fifty eight. Fifty nine and sixty. Wait, how much is this achievement? Wait, this is an achievement, right? Am I going insane? Did we get it? Oh. It just didn't pop up yet. Alright. I mean, it says I have it, so I don't care about the pop-up. I don't know why it didn't pop up. Uh, this happened uh, another time today. So, a couple times we've had it just, it just doesn't pop up for whatever reason. It's okay. So now we just sit AFK for 2%. Yay, we did it. Alright, 10 more missions. That is it. We're getting towards the end game, literally and figuratively. Okay, Amon's Fall. Four drones north ASAP. One extractor, or three extractors, one hatch. Got it. One, two, three, four. You guys right on over there. Solarite Kerrigan is going to do her own thing. She's going to farm everything that she can. We have to get... How many kills with Kerrigan is it? 375 kills with Kerrigan. Which honestly is pretty easy. You can get unlucky there. So 375 kills with Kerrigan is basically just farm stuff constantly for the entire duration of the mission. We are going to... At 1545 is when we have to make our big move. We're going to kill the first four crystals that we can. And then we're going to hold on to a bunch of them for a while. And we'll get three at a time at 15.45 until 16.30-ish. Because we have to kill three of them within a minute for the achievement. And this is one of those ones that's a little bit technically complex, so I hope that it goes okay. I am stealing Jim Rayner's gas. Lickin', listen, Lickin'. He play... Guy Lickin', he play uh, infantry and he don't need gas. It's okay. This mission is so weird. 
What an ending. To the greatest... <laughs> to the greatest epilogue in the history of epilogues. We have a lot of gas, though. So we gotta max out on mutas. So we don't actually want to necessarily close these chasms. It doesn't really matter that much. We just want to make sure that we are getting a lot of kills. Easy. But I guess killing the chasms is fine because I'm firing lasers at it. Oh man, I need to finish this run. <laughs> I'm feeling the breakdown. But we still have another campaign. But it is a short one. The casual nine missions. At least I'm not letting Kerrigan die yet. That's for later. Oh, we should have worked with Artanis. I just completely blanked on the fact that he was going on an adventure over here. And he got the crystal down to half HP and I just didn't help him. That's really bad on my part. I should not have allowed that to happen. Uh, well, whatever. It's not like it matters too much. Oh yeah, we can take this one. I think that Jim's gonna help me with this one. He's a big boy after all. He's a good dude. Mr. Rayner. Probably get a game named after him. See if we can pull some strings of Blizzard for that. Laser. Let's see how these void crystals fare against my new power. Laser. Looks like we've got a crystal servicing over here. Oh, you figured it out, Jim. Are heading to it. I will not fail. All right, so we can just celestial mend this entire thing away. So I believe that we need for these like ten gases, we only need two bases of income. So what we're gonna do here. Actually, we need to use Eruption. Just on cooldown. There we go. That only got us to 104 kills. That wasn't actually that good. But we're just going to constantly heal our dudes. Because they do really high damage. Kerrigan's damage is actually, like, really bad. It's kind of embarrassingly bad. But because she can heal her allies, the allies then do everything. So basically, we have become Jim's medic. Which is kind of funny as the last thing. The ultimate Zelnaga is just like a medic. We're going to follow him around and we're going to do Jim Rayner things. Very important Jim Rayner things. Uh, we're going to creep teleport. Very important creep teleport things. What is it okay, we gotta save Jim. Get over here! If only you were made of creep! This is my cool. We're fine. And I needed more minerals. Uh, my gas is going up really high. My minerals are not. Remember, 375 kills. Easy peasy. Stuff like the Zerglings just really help it go up, because a kill is a kill, right? Damn. This can't be good. Ground shaking under our boots here. We're almost halfway there. No, we're not. We're a third of the way there. We're like literally exactly a third of the way there. It's not even close to almost half. It's only a matter of time before he comes for the rest of us. Let him come. The swarm is well prepared. Gonna get a couple of these just to lay. Look at Jim, he's doing so well. I'm so proud of our boy. He grows up so fast. There we go. So if we can combine Jim with Artanis, we should be cooking with a stew. Jim with Artanis? Okay. I mean, everyone has to consent to this. <laughs> And Jim seems to be lost and confused. Go, go, go. Oh, no. 
save these guys if we can. We don't want them to die. They're actually quite good tanks. Obviously, the damage output, not the greatest against these rocks, but their ability to soak, pretty darn good. Ooh, that's a lot of guys. This might be time to bring in the mutas. About 40 of them. Target this down. They're right on over here. Just do good mending. Put this guy back. And if we can kill this, then we can eruption. Oh, no. Nah, it's fine. It's like nobody. This healing is really annoying. Laser face. Oh, Jim, I'm not ready for this. You cannot hide behind your crystals, Amon. Ba -ba Extinction. And then we need to teleport over here to help out our boy. Kill this rock. Man, I've not played this mission in a long time. What is it you require? We're doing okay. 200 kills on Kerrigan. Ugh. That's not good. I oh, wow. I cannot. These rocks are absolutely devastating to us right now. Having a hard time. Uh, Seed Breaker's doing alright. What was that? Sorry, he he does a little ground explode thing, and you're not allowed to lose anything to the ground explode thing for an achievement, and it scared me. But I don't think he was doing it right there. He was just, like, making weird people sounds. Whatever. We're gonna go back to farming. Once again, if he just doesn't drop the rocks, we're fine. So 1545 is what my notes say, which is not where we are right now. I'm not sure which crystal I'm supposed to destroy besides this. Maybe we'll just hold off for a little while. There's no time-based achievement, right? It's just kills, don't be hit by the bop. Yeah, get the kills, don't be hit by the bop, and kill three within 30 seconds. So I don't have to be scared about leaving one up. That just means it'll be easier to get the kills in case something messes up. Oh, we gotta get out of here. Artanis is on a epic Sunday adventure. I'm a little bit concerned that things are not quite going how I need them to here. I don't think I'm going to get 375 kills. I cannot delay. Okay, I think that's one of them that gets killed. So we're going to have to bring Kerrigan over. This is my to and... The hive cluster is under attack. I, strike I don't remember. I cannot delay. Yeah. I sense Amon's focus has turned to my swarm. We must evacuate so we get before mutas. I forgot to get the upgrades on them. But we have 85 Amon mutas, which is a pretty decent number. Game. We're going to start working on I this crystal, home. and then... 1545. Uh, there's one crystal bought, one crystal center at 1630. Okay. I just gotta trust. It spawns at 1630, the one in the middle, so I have to be very careful. Put all the damage we can onto this. I'm gonna hit an extinction. Okay, take this down. 
Actually, we take that one down. There we go. 445 kills. I put up all our, all of our damage here. Uh, one. So we have one minute to kill three of these now. And I think it's gonna work. That's number two. Number three. Alright, so now all these mutas just have to regenerate, and then they can take down this final Void Crystal, and we'll be done with the epilogue, and we can head into Nova Covert Ops, which is just nine missions long, and most of those missions are not that long. Oh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Please be all the things. It's not over till I say it's over, Kerrigan. Not over till the 100% check mark at the thing sings. I'm not watching credits. Okay. What do we got? Oh, why? Whoa, crap. Um, what did we miss? What did we miss in the epilogue? I'm gonna cry. Achievements. I lost two supply at my base. Where? Oh, I thought... Around the 16 minute mark. See, people were just saying you lost two supply and that wasn't helpful. I thought people were just memeing. Because they weren't being specific about it. Okay. Um. Yeah, don't lose any supply to train destruction. At the 16 minute mark. Okay, we can load. Oh. Was it after this? Hmm. I guess we just have to go from here. That's, uh... That really sucks. So, what happened? Who died? Was it just, like, two workers or something? Or, no, it must have been, like, one of those roaches that was from the starting roaches that were just chilling out. Alright, this is fine. We can just A-move over stuff. It's not too bad. Yeah, I think it was the roaches. That makes the most sense to me. So, we don't have to do anything fancy here. All we have to do is just target down a bunch of rocks over and over, and we can do that in real quick succession. We are professional rock slappers. Just don't lose anything in the process. Bye, Rainer. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. Yeah, this is going to be way faster than before. What is it you, require? you know what? No. I will lose nothing to terrain destruction. What is it I will not allow it to happen. These guys should be able to just blast this one, move over here, blast that one. That'll bring us to five. We're going to be done with this before, like, the 14-minute mark, assuming that the rocks spawn fast enough. Easy. This is why you go mute us on this mission, by the way. Always. That's another one of those voice lines that I think is very interesting, where Amon very obviously admits right there that he's like, yeah, I can't do anything to you, bro. <laughs> your 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 allies are gonna suffer for this. Cause I I can't <laughs> can't stop you. I don't know. It's weird. Okay. So that's going to be number five. The number six is going to be very casually right over here. You know what? We're just going to move all of these. Because why would we keep them? We don't need money right now. We just need rocks. Oh, they're going to kill the guys. Oh. 
That's a little bit sad. Probably hurts. Okay, come on over. Yeah, there's the last rock. I don't even think he's going to be able to smash my base this time. He's just not going to have the amount of time to do it. Because we just hit this. And then we go over here. We click on Void Crystal, and then we'll be done. And I won't lose anything to the to the ground this time. So do you think it was the Roach or it was the Queen? It was definitely one of the two. We must evacuate before he attacks. Finally, the barrier has done. Fallen. Let's go. Please give it to me. This is my there we go. Alright, Nova Covert Ops. Uh, I have to see the 100%. Oh, it was eggs. I hate eggs. I used to be neutral on eggs, but they just make me angry. Okay, Nova. 